Hello, you're very welcome to the Overlap Rugby Podcast. I'm Shane, that's Dara. Hello. Two brothers discussing all things rugby through the lens of Leinster and Ireland. Uh, this is Orp 112, the 112th time we've been doing this, and it is another stacked show. Again, we don't know how long it's going to be down at the bottom as we start this thing, but I'd imagine quite long, given that uh, <laughs> it is a massive, massive weekend of international rugby, and that is what we're going to focus on this week. We're going to start by looking back on, on last week's uh, international games, Briefly enough, we're not going to go into too much detail with the review segment, but then we are going to preview each and every one of this weekend's games, and some of them are absolute doozies. Oh yeah, and the preview is definitely the bulk of the show. We've got some big, big games. Saturday, what a stacked card you have in store. (laughs) Um, It opens with Scotland against South Africa in Murrayfield. Great, great game. World champions against the lineal world champions. (laughs) Um, That's going to be a fun game. Obviously, the main event for for, for us, and I think for the rugby world on this occasion, Ireland and the All Blacks, that's going to be an absolute treat. Um, Ireland looking very promising coming off week one. And then to wrap it all up, England and the Wallabies, uh, a very fine game in its own right, repeat of that quarter final from 2019. That's going to be a lot of fun too. And it's not done there. There's more matches to come. There's a couple of tier two games. Japan against Portugal, guaranteed fireworks there. Uh, And then on Sunday, France hosting the Georgians and Wales hosting the Fijians as Tier 2's two most promising sides look to claim a Six Nations scalp. And that that, will be an interesting one to look to as well. Absolutely. Um, And there's also Rugby Europe Championship, speaking of Tier 2 as well. We have two games in that coming up this weekend. Romania take on the Netherlands uh, in Bucharest and Spain face Russia. Uh, in Madrid which is, is bound to be a good one lots of, uh, lots of money of on that one money on that one a lot of the race for the World Cup spot uh, is very much alive in that one so we'll preview both of those games we'll also be looking at the Stellenbosch Quadrangular Series which is going on in Stellenbosch this weekend too um, and then we'll turn our attention to the women's rugby which has a fair had a fair few games last weekend and a fair few good ones as well this weekend it's really heating up the Autumn Series for the women too um, we're going to briefly touch on the Toka Tours and the Premiership which both had rounds last weekend but they then go on nice there's nothing to preview there they've got they've both finished for the november window and we'll look at them before we look at the rugby news of the week where we wrap up the show uh, each and every time absolutely yeah. yeah and um don't forget now if you do enjoy the show to please do like the video that that helps us out a lot subscribe if you haven't already leave comments down below we love you engaging um with the with, with, with the conversation that we're trying to have here on the game any thoughts you have pop them down below and uh, remember to share as well with all your rugby loving friends absolutely um, yeah we're going to do our best to, 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 to be a little more punchy in this one. I don't think we quite can treat you to the four-hour show this week, so it'll be a little more... You'll have to forgive us for not going as, as crazy in-depth as we always do, but we'll yeah. try and, and touch on the main points from all of the games going on this weekend as the Festival of Rugby truly does... Uh, is It's in a full swing now Absolutely. in mid-November. Yeah, 100%. Um, but, uh, but to start the show off, we're going to uh, take a look back on last weekend's action in the uh, the autumn autumn international series or the spring tours if you're in the southern hemisphere but uh, yeah there were a few a few interesting games last weekend and a few blowouts as well we'll just run through them chronologically it opened up with uh, with Italy hosting the All Blacks in Rome um 47-9 was the victory uh, recorded by the All Blacks a little more stuttery than than you might have expected a fair few drop balls to begin the game only three clean line breaks um, Italy caused them some problems with their kicking game, which was good. Varney, Varney's kicking from nine was, was doing some good damage. And yeah, the, the All Blacks with their changed side just looked a little a little yeah, bit disjointed. Bit lateral as they have yeah. done in moments this year, you know, despite yeah. all the, the record breaking try scoring, some of the some of the multi phase stuff hasn't quite come off. I mean they're trying the right things, but in moments it's 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 looked a little a little unslick and it definitely it was it was a frustrating game for them. It was yeah. nil all after twenty seven minutes. Um, in the third quarter, the Italians won that quarter at three yeah. nil. And really, it was the it was the last couple of minutes before half time, classic All Black fashion, and the last twenty when yeah. they blew up the score. Yeah. Um, outside of that, it was it was very very not not vintage All Blacks, very unslick, and yeah. and good hustling from the Italians. They have a decent looking team at they the do. moment. Lamar, on the Lamar at uh, seven had an awesome game as well. Yes, was awarded yeah. with the captaincy this week, which is probably good good from him as well, or good good deck. Uh, kind of thought from the coach because he's definitely one of their good ones but yeah Italy much improved it amounted to what is is typically the spread in, in an Italy game in the Six Nations as well so you kind of pinch of salt with it even if the All Blacks are stuttering they still 
put a lot a big yeah. enough score in. But. Uh, they, they, I mean, I, it, yes, yes, and no. I mean, I thought just to compete with this All Black team, regardless of changes or anything like that, very very promising. Yeah. To to see that level of def- of defensive tenacity from an Italian side is new. That is true. Um, yeah. One thing that isn't new is your criticism of them taking threes. Yes. Um, they took a three on on thirty seven minutes to make the score fourteen three, huh. and sure enough, on tw- on thirty eight minutes it was. 21-3 a minute always later. the way it works um, yes. yeah exactly. um, especially against the All Blacks it's yeah, unforgivable it if is. there's three minutes to half time keep it down as yeah. far away Even from your you try line score, as possible it's better than <laughs> three to three ultimately is negative four yeah. <laughs> for them in that circumstance so but, yeah if you, but a great game but a, great, yeah. a great game played by them winning the third quarter wow yeah, um, unheard and, of and they actually had a try chalked off for Monte Ioanni that looked really really harsh for a knock on on a yeah. high ball yeah, a yeah. kind of a Safa style try and uh, they, they called it a knock on and Looked a bit harsh, but um, they definitely yeah, caused they were the tough. All Blacks some problems. They certainly caused poor Brad Weber some some problems. I think his tour is over now with a with a busted up nose, um, yeah. courtesy of just yeah. They were tough. They were tough in the contact, and um, then there was also actually a simultaneous kickoff. That was where technically the weekend began, but for us it began in Dublin, where uh, Ireland put a record score sixty points to five against an admittedly seemingly jet lagged Japan. But uh, still a very, very impressive showing for from our own charge. It's very encouraging to see the way they were moving the ball, the way the forwards were getting involved, the line picking off Sexton, the passing of Sexton, Sexton grabbing that try in the corner. That was the best moment of the match as well. Um, yeah, it was it was a grand old day to be an Ireland fan, that one. Yeah, it was fabulous. Yeah. It was really, really, really impressive. Um, yeah, Japan were blown away. They were a little shocked. Um, yeah. Even hearing them talk after the game, they just they kind of prepared for Ireland circa 2019 yeah. from a defensive standpoint yeah. and were just presented with something so totally completely different yeah. um it was a, it was a little glimpse as to what this team can be the forward pack are so dynamic all with good footballing skills yeah. you saw Tyg Furlong throwing no look passes in but lovely. just the, the yeah. footballing ability combined with the physicality of the likes of Furlong the likes of Kelleher the likes of Josh yeah. Doris and uh, Conan that whole yeah, back Conan row. had a field day out there actually ring rows again he is, he's kept up his uh, strike rate against Japan he has never failed to score yeah. against Japan including that game that they lost in the World Cup he always grabs a try sure. but he kind of deserved one because it was a kind of a defensive game that he was playing for the most part he grabbed that try late enough but his read was good and his uh, put in a few good smashes including one on Lafayette the poor two, both of the Japanese centres Lafayette and uh, Nakamura both suffered HIAs in it because it was just they didn't really have the ball and no, Matsushima I mean, got his first glimpse of the ball somewhere in the second half and got smushed by Ty Furlong yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ireland were all over it they, yeah. but the, the movement was very slick the offence was very very slick um, it 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 looked it looked new it was similar enough in pattern but there was the, the way they were running off one another the way they were getting the, the footballing forwards involved in the multi-phase it was just very very promising it was yeah. a brand new looking offense and it's not like the indications have been good at really ever since you know when we were talking about them in the early year as a team with a big forward pack and no offense and no defense they've slowly been building really from that the, the low lows of, of that autumn nations yeah. cup and then the start of this six nations sure. against wales and france where they didn't get a thing off um, and yeah. this is this is just night and day better they had gibson park in there just providing clean service to sexton yes, and it became excellent. Ireland have always play, uh, attacked better when it's when it's about ten and not nine. Yeah, that's and, true. And when Sex, Se- Sexton now at, at his veteran age, just running a very sharp offense, sees the game so well. It was great actually. We were at the game and we could see, we were sitting in the upper tier, so we had the sort of bird's eye view yes, of the game. Yeah, yeah. The sort of I, I, not not the not the on the ground atmosphere is amazing part of the game, but but just to sort of oversee it from that angle was it just. It, it allows you to appreciate what Sexton does. Yeah. That you loads of stuff you wouldn't even see on TV, but just guiding the team around the field, and then just the, the quality of those forwards. It was exceptional to watch, and the yeah. amount of tries they scored. Some of the lovely touches as well. Yeah. Conway, like they, they just, Conway with a hat trick, and then and a lovely little link play. Yeah. For, I think it was Bundy Aki's try That's where he managed to gather and, and give, and then found Bundy on the touchline. It was through Conan set of hands, which were as sure as anything. Yeah, there was there was some some lovely movement. I actually think. Yeah, who's try? It was Conway's. Uh, was it first or second one? The one that ended with the Gibson Park delicious yeah, grubber, yeah, but actually first. began with from their own twenty two with Sexton deciding to go and break out and had lovely sequences. They yeah, went a hot point. potato on the touchline, yeah. and then it was a no look pass from Tig. Sexton cut a hard line off Tig. Yeah. Gets it away to Josh. Gets it away to uh, Burn. Gets it away to Conan. Just yeah. constant, the forwards constant, constant. moving it. That was that was yeah. kind of the ultimate kind of example of what this Irish team can be about if yeah. they stick to this particular path. So yeah, it was very very encouraging. And Johnny got his his samurai sword, which <laughs> yeah. was great. Um, um, poor, from poor old Japan's point of view, they just they like 
it looks very ugly for them. They were a little leggy and a little they jet were. lagged. They were coming coming from across the world on, on, on relatively short notice. They're also just not a wise team. They're not they don't really un- know how to park the bus in, no, in whatever the rugby yeah, version yeah, of like doing that is. We've never they, like we, Scotland have be, have rocked up to Dublin and been as off the pace as Japan sometimes against us, but we never put sixty on them and they no. always manage to scrap it out of it and they have a little dog in them that Japan really don't. They're so technical and so clean in everything that do they do that when they're a little bit off, they get blown yeah, away. But they they, they, they um, don't re, even, like when things aren't going their way. It doesn't consider them to slow things down. No, no, to no, just sort put of, a hand in a rope yeah, when take, they know take, it's not off. Yeah, yeah, yeah take yeah. the tempo out of a game. Yeah. Be a little rougher in the edges. I mean, they missed a couple of kicks to touch as well. They did. But I mean, yeah. it was like they started tapping and going towards the end. <laughs> yeah, and crazy. They, get the pace up. Like, oh no! If we want to win the game, we have to score forty points in the next ten minutes. Let's go, go, go! Yeah. Oh no! Yeah. Now we need to score fifty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it was that, just they're 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 earnest and honest as the day is long. But when it doesn't go well for them, they are counts. liable to be blown out. That's and, true. And yeah. yeah although they did week. credit to uh, well, uh, Fafita grabbed the try, but actually Jimeno with a lovely pass and a lovely pass yeah. to put him into the space. Lovely, they took that try angle. It was as well. It was great. Yeah, they, they they pounced on one error that happened around 60 minutes, which is a concern for Ireland. The bench impact currently is to take all the tempo out of the game and have it go into a lull period for 10 minutes as opposed to coming on and kind of putting the foot in the accelerator. It's the opposite of what you kind of want, and it happened again here. But uh, but even still, that's only a, a slight, slight kind of thing to gloss, gloss on. Otherwise, a very, very glossy, shiny performance that we were all very happy with. And it started out the Saturday on such a good ebb that we just enjoyed the rest of the rugby that came. How and, could you uh, not? How could you not as well? And um, we were watching a bit afterwards. Uh, uh, Fiji were well, kind of. They were asked a few questions by Spain in the first half before ultimately running in five tries in the second half to run out forty three to thirteen winners in Madrid. And yeah. encouraging from Spain to yeah. be a bit disciplined and to be able to defend Fiji for a while, frustrate them for a while. Yeah, they 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 have they worked on their physicality last year and then and they lost their temperament seemingly as a compromise. Mm. But they they do seem like they're not liable to be physically blown away certainly at a tier 2 level mm. anymore and yeah. in the early goings they kind of caught a, a pretty sluggish Fiji yeah. really put them on their heels it was not it was not the Fiji that rocked up to play the All Blacks in July no. they were like very lethargic on the defensive line yeah. not really committing overly to, overly to rooks or to line speed yeah. and Spain managed to get some really pretty patterns off took a 10-0 lead before yeah. Fiji could breathe and then they, they did dial some good play in Tui Sova was on pretty early yeah. and pulling some nice strings oh, he but even so like it, the Spain kept grinding it out true. won a couple of penalties took the lead into half time and it was only towards the tail end that they managed to, to, to sneak well, off yeah, and, the, and that was it. it was after around 60 um, minutes which is a kind of a threshold because Fiji are tier two side in name but like geez if they if they play Italy tomorrow I don't know who's if they're not winning that game you know yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah the, the physicality and just the fitness kind of actually told then Fiji warmed into the game which is not something that you're, you're quite used to seeing but it, it ended with a Tui Sova steamrollering a Spaniard for the final try as well and in classic fashion and to be honest for the last 10 minutes there was a lot of breaks in play where just there were three or four Spaniards yeah. down receiving attention and it was it was just it was starting to wear on them the fact that they had put in a very very good performance one of the better ones I've seen from them all year which is encouraging and it takes a bit of momentum into an important game that they have this week so a good hit out for them from Fiji's point of view it was yes yeah, sluggish as you say to start encouraging that they were able to put the foot in the throttle and, and kind of ease away from them towards yeah. the end it just shows a little bit of a golf in class that is there but Fiji know that they're heading to Cardiff this week it's going to be a bigger test and they'll have to be sharper they'll to have begin to play with. a lot better yeah. than that if they want to give Wales a game there's no yeah. doubt about it and um, there was also another tier 2 encounter Portugal hosting Canada Yeah. Um, this one made a few headlines but not for the reason I thought people are talking you know the Os Lobos make history they secure a first ever win against Canada 20 points to 17 mm. Um. And there was much celebrations from Portuguese fans and, and desperation from Canada's fans, despite the fact that, as far as we're oh, yes. concerned, Canada beat the spread they by did. something else. Yeah, you yeah, know, I, would I, really... thought, I would have thought that <laughs> when Portugal were on song, they were missing Marquesh at nine, yeah. and they were missing him. They didn't uh, play well. No, like, they, they didn't. They, they, yeah. were, they were lucky to get away with it. I mean, they did have a 15-5 to five lead towards the tail end, and then all of a sudden... Um, they gave they gave up uh, they gave up uh, two tries yeah. and Canada looked like they were going to steal the game and then at the very death Storty gets the ball on the edge clock in the red and tries a brave chip and chase gasses his man and just gets the ball on the ingle and I tell you what there was no TMO mm. there was no good camera of it and it's like very 50-50 yeah, as to whether yeah. he even got the score yeah. um, but 
as it was it was given it was old school rugby rules yes. what, what the ref's what instinct the ref was it was yeah. he's like ah it looks like a great try <laughs> give him the try it was ballsy yeah. of Storty to put it on the toe with the clock in the red but he backed his gas yeah, if, you make, if, you, and, if you make it happen you make it happen and to be fair both of those wingers Storty and Marty do have a, an audacity that serves them well and they grab tries when they're when they're there a lot of the time but yeah I thought it was actually an underperformance from, from Portugal and quite yeah. a decent showing from Canada away from home although I'm sure Canadian fans won't be thinking that they'll be well, just, if, you're, if, you're you're casu- if you're a casual Canadian mm. fan and you're just watching the team sink from lower to lower and then you're watching all of these other nations who you used to be not even consider like Chile yeah. and Portugal are now just beating your side it's yeah. just it yeah, is hard to tough, take tough, tough, tough to swallow, slip but further and further down it's true it's um, true but it was a competitive game it was it was one of the ones that is a good one it's, it's kind of they need to get more of these kind of Cross continental tier two clashes, just they, they they dish up good games and stylistic matchups, and it's it's better for all these teams. Um, in in other not that uh, news with tier two, there was also the Twickenham show where Tonga rocked up to score three points to England's sixty nine points. Yeah. Um, despite they did get a pick, and it was just it was only Courtney Laws's t- ridiculous amount of effort to to stymie a Tonga try that I would have loved to have seen. Yeah. But uh, but beyond that, yeah, England picked. We were looking at it last week. They picked an absolutely mean ruthless team, team. and uh, sure enough yes they were pretty ruthless they uh, dished out some punishment to, to Tonga from pretty much the off the physicality was was night and day um, yeah hey, was, you look bloody brilliant again as Jamie George yeah um, again they, they, a lot of them had a field day there was time and space sure they didn't even pick a 10 at 10 and yet they had all the time it didn't yeah matter. And Marcus um, Smith came on then he yeah. had some pretty highlight real moments to try and assist yeah. broken breaking the line very yeah. like Tonga very obliging to play when they're completely gassed. I know, but I'm yeah. really, really excited about seeing what Marcus Smith does behind this English True. pack. Um yes yeah. he's like this England team could be about to go on a run. They they've been they simmered away, they had a rough six nations. They did. It was very impressive and I just think the makeup of their squad is very impressive. Yeah. Very, and, uh, very much so. They have we'll a, talk a about oodles, them later on. We'll watch out Australia. Yeah. Um, but uh, again, we are just going to cut a bit of <coughs> to Tonga, as we've said before. It has been. It's just rough enough for them to fulfil these fixtures, and they are all mismatches. Um, and it's it is just what it is. But uh, that was only a curtain raiser to what ended up being the game of the weekend. Uh, Wales eighteen, South Africa. 23 Ooh. in the rain in Cardiff um, what a game it was it had a little bit of everything um, Wales couldn't for the just couldn't break them down despite some good encouraging attacking uh, attacking forays the addition of Bigger's boot at 10 just changes them from a team with no kicking game it's to a team, team with a very very good kicking yeah. game instantly and that changed things um, so they had South Africa they had the lead for, for quite a long time South Africa were stuttering but eventually in the second half they managed to uh to kind of just get themselves drag themselves back yeah. over the line and it was it was marred by a pretty controversial horrendous moment that you don't like to see mm-hmm. where a pitch invader who was Welsh by the looks of it and I think he's oh, been no, out as a Welsh but he just looked very member, Welsh member of um, Welsh rugby club so he was terrible um, terrible thing yeah. um, to be doing invaded the pitch invaded the pitch at the right moment in the little pocket of space that Liam Williams had to operate in that they couldn't find all day the one <laughs> like for all the great South African defensive reads the best defensive play they made all day was made by a drunk Welshman uh, yeah cut out that outside and they had to spin to take the pass and it was, um, it was out yeah. Then, then, yeah. I must say I think I, I think the South African cover deal the cover um, was probably there already. A bit but, like the yeah. the Reece Samet one earlier on yeah. when Khaleesi nailed him into touch just as 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 uh, Zamet looked like he was going to score. Yeah. yeah, it was it was good and bad from Wales. I mean, they hustled really really hard. They did. Um, Basham didn't quite back up his no. uh, his his performance last week. He, he was, was he was targeted and had one or two errors, but in his stead rose Ellis Jenkins, who made right. all kinds of plays. Massive turnover, stripped Dale Indy at one point, he did, had yeah. a couple of big jackal steals, a, a, an interception. He yeah. was all over the place, and the, just the hustling of the back of the Welsh back row deprived the box of clean ball in in large parts. But yeah. uh, I must say, like even though they had the lead, I, it, like it always they felt never like, had the scrum. It always, it always felt always like tough. they were clinging yeah. on, yeah. like they were they were going to break at at some point. They yeah. were physically outmatched. Yeah. Um, by a really and tough box. You know they were they were epitomized by the performance of Tom Tompkins, who threw some yeah. nice uh, passes and made like they kept running at him, they kept targeting yeah. him all day, and he kept losing the contacts but making the tackle. Yeah. And he kept getting him, and he eventually went off for a HIA at like seventy odd minutes, and he was complaining about it, but it was just he'd been in so he'd many, including up. I think yeah. Lou Diager gave him a fend that was like as close to a punch as you'll ever see because it was it was an open hand pet fend, but he just caught the bone right yeah. in there in the chin and and skittled him, and it was Tompkins again. 
saying on the end of it, I was, it was a very brave show. But uh, but yeah, once again, South Africa just able to dig it out. The Mapimpi try that was was uh, crossed off or was etched off was a little dubious, I thought, in terms of the offside. Yeah, and there's much um, has been made about it. Like it's, apparently, it's technically right. Like yeah, it's a funny one. It is a I funny mean, one. Within I think the like 10 meters. for a moment, for like a a real moment, mm. um, marks advances before instantly retreating. Yeah. Um, meanwhile, nobody else does who's offside because Am is uh, cleverer than anybody and is busy dragging guys back. But I mean, more or less instantly after he kicks it, Mapimpi, who's onside, is playing everyone onside. Etzebeth, who's onside, is playing everyone onside. Yeah. And yeah, the, the three most advanced players were Mapimpi, Etzebeth, and uh, um, I think it was Reina who put yeah, the box who, kick up. Yeah. Um, all of them. All of, the, all of them onside. And yeah. then the ball bounced for Etzebeth. He slipped it to Mapimpi, and it probably should have stood. Yeah. It was a break for Wales, but it didn't matter. The box got to the other end, found them all, yeah. which won them the game. And, and then Wales got to have a rumble in a two point game, and the box are literally the best team in the world to have a lead with a team needing to attack in the dying phase every time. It's, it's the most like depressing watch if you're if you're rooting for the team trying to get the dub they just cannot break them down yeah, and yeah. will inevitably concede the jacko penalty yeah and yeah the Bok defense the Bok forward pack was Very mighty good. Franz Stein Franz Stein off what the bench a, what, what a man of the match performance yeah. off the bench from the old veteran kicking a, a massive kick as he is wont to do in yeah. the rain um, I, yeah. I, I loved Quagga Smith's performance yeah. as always I loved Lacanio Am's performance thought he was brilliant thought Delindy was a little shaky but like, the critique of the box again is that they were all over the scrum they had the dominant uh, forward pack the mall was working the mall was working and yet they still just yeah, couldn't only, really score and they were, they were making yeah. enough mistakes on the other end that like they were make, they were like going in going in when they didn't have the jackal they were giving up enough penalties to chalk off their positive plays it was ding dong ding dong and it, again, it was probably a closer game than it should have been. And I think, truthfully, I think Herschel Yankees as well, trying to step in and do that Faf de Klerk role, struggled. Didn't, yeah. didn't make good reads. Didn't uh, didn't really get that offense yeah, taken at all. It wasn't quite right um, in the rain. It, it is tougher in the rain to kind of sure, put fizzers on your passes. But uh, but yeah, you no, can just pick the right, right ones. I yeah. mean, it was just it was a bit. They were a bit one dimensional. They were a bit back to sort of we are we are like where where they were prototypically going into the Lions tour. You know, it's all about the defense. The forward pack will score tries through kick chase and malls which again Worked. simple simple enough formula did yeah. work in this game but they're good enough to be expanding their game now and, sure. and, and when they're when they're as as positively matched up against a, a forward pack especially in the tight five as they were in this game they should probably be looking to kick on and, and, and win it by a bit more it was it was dodgy enough but a good win and nonetheless yeah, for the box another, another, another good game these two do just dish up kind they of dramatic do. fixtures yeah. don't they the pair of them um, yeah and then later that night as well for the Saturday festivities weren't done entirely despite our, us having our fill after that one <laughs> yeah. but uh, France 29 Argentina 20 um, yeah it was it looks on paper like it was a great old game between two two old, old school rivals and good rugby nations but really what Watching it, it was France were dominant and yet coughed up fourteen very cheap points that the Pumas yeah. scare, scarcely earned. Like if you told me it was twenty nine six, that would probably be a reflection of what we kind of saw in the difference of the sides. Yeah. Um, it, it was it was same old same old from the Ledesma's Pumas. I like I almost refused to compliment them on what was a brilliant defensive performance. It was it's again like, yeah mm. again they are great at defending. I mean I don't know yeah. what to say. They they really do hustle hard. Yeah. But I mean it went about as well as it could have gone for them. They held a French attack. They repelled attack after attack after attack. But on a couple of occasions, a little pass slipped in um, to um, uh, the de- uh, the man on debut in the uh, in the in the second row. What was his name again? Um, Flamont de Toulouse. Flamont, that's right. Um, yeah. He yeah, was great actually. He, he was yeah, hustling. Had a big game. Deserved yeah. to deserve to take that try. And then the other one um, for Movaca late on was just a little offload, and they were caught on their heels twice in yeah. a in a game where they spent much of it defending. Yeah. But like as you say, they were kind of gifted fourteen points, certainly seven. Yes. With the with the Jalibert, um twenty two well, twenty two dropout um, was was remarkably dialed yeah, out so, from Jam. So, from, from, yeah, the the the, the 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 two distributors, you know, the two tens on the pitch did. Very little between them. The only notable yeah. moment was that one where they coughed up seven points, but Entomac got subbed off at sixty minutes, having not really contributed that much. No, Fiku J- was trying had the out odd there, but his touch. But yeah, Jaminé had a good first half at fullback, and then he kind of, yeah, yeah, of faded he was, a little. He was, he was uh, exercising more control on the game than either of the two tens they'd selected. It's true. Um, yeah, France are a bit of a frustration as well, but nowhere near as much as the Pumas, who, yes. who, as you say, like they got the break with the with the kick chase try. That was seven points. That was. Mm. 
a bit lucky but fair play to them they took it they got the complete break of the charge down 22 complete sort of brain fart moment yeah. from, from Class- uh, uh, Jalibert classic France um, and, and yet they put up 20 points in total despite those those cheap 14 yeah. lost the game by 9 and people are saying you know they had a great game they defended gamely but when they had the ball again there was nothing to it and again like the guys like De La Fuente you know it, what was tragic about it was like he was catching the ball putting a bit of footwork on getting through the contact getting a hand free no one near him yeah. spinning back and tucking down and they were all doing that yeah. they were all, like, all it was like Carreras yes. and then he's going to put yeah. a bit of footwork and try and step three flankers and yeah. that's not going to work either yeah. maybe Sanchez off the bench can try to do the same thing yeah. there's, and no there's, shape. No, there's no evidence that there's an attack coach at all and like, yeah. it keeps cutting to Ledesma up there On I'm just own. like what? Yeah. They, they're all season with this there hasn't yeah. been a moment where they've looked threatening with the ball it's just crazy to yeah. watch for me they're a frustration um, and France are as frustrating in well, a different f- way they, they deserve to win because they, they did course, try to attack yeah. and yeah they, yeah, they had a, just a DuPont try DuPont was, right, was that, excellent that, that DuPont try being chalked off was yeah, such it, was a, yeah. it was just it bummed me out because it was the best bit of rugby in the match it's true uh, <laughs> yeah yeah no, and they, uh, they do endeavour for that and they are a joy to watch when they string it together but yeah no they can be calamitous when it comes to just controlling a game or, or, or taking, easy, moments, taking off, moments off yeah, yeah. giving up tries here and giving there up 14 points <laughs> is very very cheap against a tier 1 side they will need to put these pieces together in terms of game management they found in Jaminé a very useful asset at 15 and it helps their kicking game and their kicking game has improved already on what it was in the Six Nations yeah. but they do need to just develop the top levels of clutch and concentration that will see them there they still got the win and they are still in, in decent shape in this campaign as well so early days yeah, and comfortably and clear yeah. of, of, of the Pumas and it yeah. was a, a deserved win for them um, then we move on we had a couple of games on Sunday 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 um, Romania against Uruguay in a Tier 2 matchup a 29 to 14 win for the Oaks yeah big win um, big win for a physical looking Romania side yeah. shocking a, a, a high flying Uruguayan side that uh, yeah just met the contact area and didn't like it at all here yeah um, I mean it, it was it was definitely uh, it was it was it was, a, it was a dynamic game but by the end like Uruguay had in the first half they conceded to start with after 40 seconds yeah. which was crazy um, and then they, they dialed in a very good first half performance yeah. from there including a gorgeous try down the left hand side that included like an audacious little out the back flick yeah. um, they do they, have that lovely yeah, footballing they, every, instinct every, every yeah, now yeah. and again they just put all the pieces together and score a beautiful try took a lead 14-13 to 13 into half time after conceding that early try and then Romania just took over in the yeah. second half they were physical, you're right. They did stop them behind the game line. They, they got a couple of big jackal steals. Yeah. The, the Uruguayans kind of ran out of steam. They were definitely a bit flat. Um, but on the other side of things, like Romania, we talk about you know their forward pack, the sort of Andy Robinson factor, how big and strong they are. They have a good maul. They're yeah. getting, they're, they're stymie, and they're stymieing. They're, they're, uh, not, they don't concede points easily. But the other thing that has to be noted is that they have a pretty good looking back line, yeah, they which they haven't sure. always they, had. They racked up, um, it's as good a, like a 29 points yeah, against yeah. that Uruguay side is a very, very Va- good haul. Vao Vas- uh, Vasa, the guy who's playing at 13, mm. South Sea Island guy, I don't know where they picked him up, class player, yeah. class player playing at outside centre. Two really good wingers in Onutu and Dumitru who will take scores and Malinte at 15 yeah, looks useful an absolute in terms vintage player well. but yeah, he yeah. runs the ball well he passes yeah. well he kicks well in open play he kicks from the tee like they, yeah. are, they actually have a really good looking team yeah. and you Andy know, Robinson doing great things behind yeah. closed doors there it's kind of a positive note for Canada because it just goes yeah. to show that the trajectory doesn't go one way because Romania you know four years ago were really on a slump and then they true. have bounced back and for my money they're, they're kind of favourites to take that Europe 2 spot yeah. As, as into stands, season, yeah, yeah, just looking at where Portugal are and around Russia are the other contenders yeah. in that. But uh, yeah, very very impressive win for the Oaks. Um, bit of a bit of a kind of a kick in the nuts for Uruguay. Kind yeah, of they gave away a few penalties here and there. I think they get six of those points that that uh, that yeah, Romania got were for ahead of the kicker penalties. Yeah, and just so silly just things like, like that. Just going to yeah. shoot yourself in the foot. Yeah. And they can probably do a better game against Romania. They're not too far apart these teams, but definitely yeah. on that day, Romania deserved that. Yeah, and win. Yeah. Uruguay can kind of relax now. They're qualified. They are they qualified. Have time to get it right. It's yeah. not a panic. It's probably not a bad game. lesson to be having for them this time. No. Out. And they have learned a fair few lessons as well. So but both of these teams are in decent in decent shape. They do need to write their uh, their record in Europe though because the World Cup is in France. That's and true. They have just a terrible record in Europe. They yeah. gotta they gotta get better at that. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Um. Yeah. In uh, in other like that was a little bit of a 
kind of curtain raiser, I guess, for what was we were billing as the the game of the tw- game of the weekend, and it it kind of was. It, it was a good game for sure, but Scotland fifteen. Australia 13, a very tight, tense test match between these two. A lot of collateral damage went into it as well, particularly from a Wallaby point of view, considering they didn't even get the win in this. But yes. uh, yeah, very, very good win for Scotland. It's there. It's a very good habit they've developed now in recent times of, of edging these tight ones if you go back to Paris yeah. and beyond. That's, they're, uh, they're, like, they're tough buggers, you know. Yeah. They, they play a tough game. I mean, <laughs> what was funny was, you know, we had, I think you predicted, what was it, 31, 30, I predicted 34, 33. Yeah. Like, the offences really, really struggled in they this did. game. Um, both sides were caught being a bit lateral. Yeah. Um, I Finn Russell was trying, but the link play, the sort of telepathy between him and Hogg, the set piece strike moves, they weren't quite there. Yeah, and, didn't help um, that yeah, Ikitao was defending very well. Yeah, as well. no, indeed, um, Ikitao and Chris Harris kind of nullifying each other, yeah, and yeah. and for the most part, the game took place inside them ultimately, and it became a forward slugfest. Yeah. And you got to credit Scotland with just a huge show. I mean, it was for like from the from the off. I think Schoeman was was giving Alatoa a really tough time. I mean, Australia did uh, manage to edge a couple of penalties, um, but um, it was it was slowly being edged by Scotland, and it started to wear on the on the Aussie props, yeah. and then. Um, I think it was Alatoa went to the bin and on comes Tupo and Tupo gets dropped like, yeah. like, like a heavyweight fighter gets yeah. dropped Sam by Sam just, Johnson on a yeah. carry and um, just kind of Johnson just comes in at such pace and Tupo's actually just out of a scrum he's a little yeah. disoriented and so he's just upright and, gets and actually he can't the make jaw. the tackle even yeah. in, at that angle but he just doesn't see it coming it yeah. happens too quick and down he goes and he's and he's rocked and unfortunately obviously I, he he's can't, week can't play this week and, and perhaps not even for the rest of the tour yeah, it's, it's um, a big big loss for them and yeah. then out of the toe as well yeah no, that was decisive in this game the tight head situation for them because Slipper was slipping in there to uh, to tight head once or twice so wasn't he and it, yeah, yeah. Well, Xander started the game by giving Slipper a tough time of it and so he was moaning to the ref but I mean the picture he was presenting was just he like he was Xander was kind of on top of his shoulder and he was instead of kind of pushing up and in he was just going down every yeah. time and it was his body angling in cutting down easy call yeah. easy call for the ref in that scenario yeah, and it's true so um, sometimes they can get caught out there's a lot yeah. of aggressive scrummaging goes on in Europe where a lot of the time in the super rugby's it, it doesn't uh, yeah. as often unless you're a tubo or a springbok indeed yeah um, so they were it's been a strength of theirs this year and all of a sudden it wasn't but you got to credit Scotland you got to credit them with some smarts I loved Definitely. the I loved the set piece try the yeah, Gilchrist work the work from 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 Gilchrist at the line out it was technical it was good yeah. they, they, he did wait for the uh, for the Aussies to yeah. engage him before transferring yeah, no the ball there at all. Um, and uh, despite Yonkers uh, Marius Yonkers, yes, Marius attempt Yonkers to many attempts to intervene um, <laughs> but it was a, it was quite a chill Roman Poit with the with his final international game uh, who was busy high fiving everybody, high five and, everybody and, and overruling Yonker which was fine in that <laughs> instance because uh, it was yeah. a perfectly good try the, the Alatoa yeah. card that, that Aussie fans are up in arms about very soft I yeah. think like it probably shouldn't have been a card the only thing is that like there's a lot of Aussie fans saying like we're robbed of a clear try I mean he goes hurtling in off his feet I mean whether or not he makes contact yeah. with anyone is incidental you can't do that yes indeed he completely, I thought it was a penalty. he completely I it was a seals off you can, yeah. so you can't give the try as yeah. good a finish as it was from the ever present Hooper yes um, he it, still had his teleporter you can't, there you can't give it and speaking of good finishes you and Ashman oh, off on what debut a beauty. yeah oh. what a beauty the man and, and the, little, were... the little slip ball to him from Schoeman as well on the left good. side they, yeah, they, the was, fatties playing, was, fo- playing some ball yeah, yeah. In, in a tight game it was definitely a try worthy of winning it Yeah, and credit Finn Russell as well because you know his goal kicking has been questioned in the past and he nailed a clutch yeah. winner uh, yeah. in this a one. two point game and it was a, it was a touchline kind of job very very much so yeah no Scotland developing good habits uh, the Wallabies looking disjointed um, between the pack the changes in the lock that I know you weren't hugely enamored I'm little, with yeah I'm a little just annoyed that, that Swain and Philip can't get a look in anymore because of these new guys it's good like Arnold and Rodda are good players but what the hell? Like Philip yeah. and Swain are your new shiny tools who've been playing really well, yeah. and by the way, played against the box in those games. Yeah. So I mean, give me a break. These guys should be involved. They I, should. I just it's weird. And the other me. thing is yeah. the back line, which is completely different. Shorn of a yeah. Quaid and Karevi and Currandrani. Currandrani. <laughs> well, like oh, it's just no, not Currandrani. Sorry, Corey Benny. Corey Benny. Um, yeah. No. They, that that's the the life either. But, yeah, uh, yeah. That, that's the lifeblood of that of that offense. Yeah. Was, was Quaid Karevi was just very lateral because between White being a little slow um on for most. Most of it, he had Slow a few little moments. Passes. Yeah, and yeah. O'Connor very lateral, um, and then yeah. Paisami and uh, Nikita played pretty well, but Paisami was 
kind of lateral as well and it just it got gobbled up uh, yeah. very easily they weren't as they weren't sitting them down they weren't very themselves well. you didn't yeah. see you didn't see um the the, uh, the wingers at all no, either. You just in the defensive capacity yeah, yeah it was it was very non-Aussie Callaway even frozen out in large parts mostly yeah. mostly returning kicks but it goes to show what a smart effective game the Scots played and uh, they'd be no, under no illusions they're a top side they're very well coached they know what they're good at they know how to drag games into the mire and they're figuring out how to win games yeah. and they are also lineal champions of the world yes the Ray <laughs> what is it the Rayburn or the Ray I, the, yes it has a name yes, it's still <laughs> ridiculous yeah well you can build that I suppose for this week now that they face the actual world champions but yeah, uh, but yeah they, they managed to claim that title off the wall he's in that one and there was one other game at the weekend in rugby Europe as well uh, the Netherlands hosted Russia and it finished 35-8 to the visitors yeah. uh, Russia grabbing a bonus point win and, and getting yeah putting distance between themselves and Netherlands and putting themselves in a ground position yeah, going yeah. Into next the Dutch season. looking a bit tier 3 yeah, to the Tier 2 like the, it, it wasn't just the fact that they lost this game it was the fact that they lost this game to a Russian team that were just flinging the ball around yeah. ridiculous like yeah. the, the Russian wingers were gassing them I, there was like all of the optimism was 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 quickly, uh, chalked quickly off. gone. The other yeah. thing that was funny was the opening try was yeah. scored off a charge down yeah. in that massive in goal, that farcically big in goal. Yeah. So they, <laughs> like classically with teams who use those massive in goals, you think of England against Ireland in twenty eighteen. They yeah. came back to bite them. Yeah. They, their own kick charged down and the ball going far beyond where the dead where ball should have been. Dead, but, but, but coming to a halt, still in play. Yeah, yeah, bang, bang, yeah. try Russia. And it didn't get much better from there. I mean, the ru- the fact that the Russians were just able to th- fling the ball and around. Gas them. Yeah, the Russians are not a quick team <laughs> no, at tier yeah, two yeah. level at all. But the, so, some yeah. of the some of the tackling was just, yeah, just non-existent. Like it, there was one where it just it floated out to the Russian outside center, put a put a bit of a hip swivel on, and then two Dutch defenders engage him, and then through he goes. Yeah. You know, the two yeah. Dutch defenders just fall away, yeah, and they as well yeah. not have engaged at all. Yeah, 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 yeah so, no, I mean, the tier three is kind of an apt enough summary. <laughs> yeah. They are going to struggle. And uh, they're going to struggle to, to kind of do anything to catch Spain, who are who are just ahead of them, and avoid a yeah, playoff Sp- spot. Spain this week. look a much better side they than the Netherlands. They do. So I think I think if I, they I, end up in the playoff, I, it's probably I, I, right. A date with Belgium beckons once more. Yes, uh, for, um, but for all the theoretical thoughts of Rugby World Cup twenty twenty three for Put Netherlands to bed. very much. But a good win for the Rus- Ruskies. Yeah, the and, Russians and, are still um, hunt. They got a bonus point, which yeah, very important for, for them. Not 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 always the easiest thing. True. Um, well in the hunt, and that's just. To get juicier and juicier starting this week um, with the game against Spain um, but we are going to park last week's affair um, just now and we're going to look ahead to the games from this week we're going to go in chronological order and we're going to start with the opening game of the weekend which is Italy against Argentina this yeah. is in Treviso, interestingly enough. I love yeah. this. I love that they're they're going to going their north to the spiritual to, yeah, homeland. Exactly, yeah, to, yeah. to where rugby is. They they had their game in the Stadio Olimpico against the All Blacks. That's great. But there's no sense, you know, not filling that stadium in a place where rugby isn't even that big to begin with. Bring it to its homeland and you're gonna get like a packed atmosphere full of people who are really appreciative of finally being able yeah. to host their national team. And a, a, um, a venue that uh, treats Italian teams a little better than the Stadio Flaminio for the most part as true. well. They yeah, they tend to it's a tough place to go up in Treviso yeah, and win. Ask the bulls about it. Yeah, yeah. Indeed. No indeed. Um there's def there's definitely promise for Italy in this game. The the referee is gonna be James Dolman of New Zealand with uh, Paul Williams and Ben Blaine on the sidelines and Brendan Pickerel in as the TMO. Yeah. Um the first this is the the, the, the first time these two sides ever met was 1978 Italy ran out winger, winners um, both of these sides sort of late bloomers into tier 1 True. Italy obviously had that great side in the 90s um, overall I think us Argentina have a 25-16 to 16 record over, over the Italians um, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, um, oh, it's actually, oh sorry, sorry, it's sixteen and five, record. sixteen five <laughs> and one, because they played twenty two times in total, which is not not too many. Uh, like uh, yeah, the first time was nineteen seventy eight, the second time they met was nineteen eighty seven, so they're like a big old gap. And yeah. then more more recently, they have played a bit more time, uh, times. Um, the longest win streak though is seven in a row, and that is still active. Yeah. The Pumas have won the last seven meetings between them, and there has been a gulf in in recent years in the professional era as well. Um, Italy's last uh, win came uh, over Argentina came in 08 by a scoreline of th- scoreline of 13 to 12. Um, but the last time these two faced each other was in November 2017, and uh, Argentina won that one 31 to 15. So the 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 more recent form would suggest that the Pumas are are the superior side, and certainly the world rankings would would suggest that too. 
However, as you have made no, no <laughs> secret about, Argentina aren't attacking particularly well, and Italy showed encouraging signs against the All Blacks. Well. They're um, not attacking at, at, all, at all. They're not um, even attacking at no. all, whatever about well or otherwise. No, I but, mean, it, um, it's, it's, it's got some promise, looking it at does. it from Italy's point of view. Yeah. It, they have named their side. They've got um, some, some promising players. Riccioni, a tight head, is going to have a big job against that, that Puma scrum. Yeah. Um, and he, they were struggling in the scrum yeah. against the All Blacks last yeah, week, well, so they'll need to tidy that up. Because well, the Pumas do that well. And, um, and did against France with yeah. Gomez Cadea back. Um, yeah, and uh, they've got Negri, Negri and Lamaro in the back row. Very good, very tenacious. They showed some great defensive chops last week. Lamaro's and they've got a captain this week as well. That's right, yeah. Rewarded and, for good form. Yeah, he's a fine player. And um, they've got a, um, a pretty razzle-dazzle looking back line. Varney and Garbisi, the young halfbacks, excellent. Minazzi back in there, great to see. Still got all of the all of the flair, yeah. along with Monte Ioanni, who's just a world-class finisher. The centres, Luca Marisi and... Uh, Brex, one Ignacio Brex yeah. like can play well certainly yeah. and uh, 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 Padovani on the other wing as well it's a solid team and last week they showed what they haven't showed in a long while which is good defensive acumen yeah. which I and believe. good kicking acumen from yeah. nine as well Varney's boot has much improved and he was actually causing some problems to D-Mac and the, the All Black uh, back three and they should persist with that this time because we know of Argentina that if you kick to them the, the kind of risk is not, certainly compared when compared to the All Blacks which they managed to do very well they can kick even half as accurately to this Puma side the, the risk is relatively low of them uh, penetrating you off it so try and play territory play, try and be sensible but uh, yeah they, they definitely want to kick on because like they don't need to be too reverential or too respectful of this Puma side they can kind of go after this they are the home side they will be in, in up in, in Treviso I would like to see them kind of take it to them because Garbisi runs a nice off light, offense as you were citing in the back three there's danger yeah. if they can be the team with a bit more shape and a bit more hustle in the middle third and yeah. couple that with a good kicking game they could really start applying some scoreboard pressure you know the kicking game matters enormously because yep. as much as I love to deride this Pumas team they are very good defensively and we just watched them the other day yeah. really frustrate and harry a very good French offence this is not as good an offence as all. that not at all um, no, so I, I think as you say just be patient go to the boot um, a, a bit like Romania did just like kind of force the Pumas to play they yeah. don't want to play at all yeah. they want to be the side forcing you to play but when they're actually the bigger dog you can kind of flip that script on them and all of a sudden leave them blunt so I think as bizarre as it seems, Italy need to make this about their defense, and let's yeah. see what let's see like let's see what this Pumas team can do. Yeah. Um. I think crucial crucial is going to be set piece. I mean, we watched, um, at, we we watched them get creased at the mall. The mall was the in that the All Blacks found that worked best yeah. for them. Um. But their, the scrum was also yeah, reversing their, too. Their, like their, it was, their line their tidy was, everywhere was, was not great, and the yeah. Pumas with their Montoya tries, it's one thing that they can do very yeah, well. And the and the scrum um, penalties that yeah. amount to to three pointers as well. That's the, they are very rudimentary in that regard but if you can't stop them or if you can't be solid there then they won't be able to get anything off here and unfortunately even if they yeah. are managing to kick well and, and force the Pumas to try and run the ball back at them and tackling well all through that none of that will amount to anything if they can't at least secure their own ball and if not try and be competitive in the set piece area as well yeah exactly um, just, just, frust- just frustrate them but pl- the main thing from, from a Garbisi point of view Garbisi again is a young man he wants to play ball yeah. that, that I appreciate that but he needs to show, a bit, show a bit of maturity and guide his team down the field yeah. and if they can frustrate the Pumas to the point where you're just exchanging kicks with them then all of a sudden the Pumas might be forced to try and do something that's when your or defense goes be, to work or you might um, find in those kick cha- tennis exchanges that the defense is less structured and then there's a chance yeah, to run and it, it, potentially, selective. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. potentially gives a chance for, for Monte Ioanni or, or yeah. Matteo Minazzi to get a ball in a bit of space much more than your multi-phase does yeah. against a defense that will likely have you outmatched yeah particularly um, with the centers they picked in terms of pace I mean, yeah. they'll be gobbled up once it goes outside of 10 pretty quickly I'd imagine just even judging by yeah. what they were doing in the Six Nations and last week against the all Blacks. The passing isn't quite accurate enough to pick it, unpick the best defenses, and the Pumas are a tier one side with a very, very good defense. Yeah, like very, very good. No, no uh, question. But this, like, Italy want to make it dirty. They need yeah. a big show from Riccioni. They need a big show from those two locks, Canone and CC, who often find themselves outmatched. They need to show up. They need to make it physical. They need to make it awkward. They need to turn this into a Benetton game. Yes. This needs to be three all at half time. Yeah. 
and the Pumas ideally. not knowing what they're going up yeah. to. And it takes it takes the Italians fronting up physically, but we watched them. We watched them cause the All Blacks problems. You yes. can cause the All Black offense problems. You should have no issues swallowing up this Pumas it's, attack. It's true. Um, it's just whether they can back up a big emotionally charged performance yeah, with another one, yeah. whether they can kind of believe that they have it in them to win the game, which is often an impasse for Tier 2 sides if they play with a little too much respect for their opponents then yeah, the Argentinians, yeah. even with a stuttering offence, might be able to grab a cheap try or two from a missed tackle and then it might be a bridge too far. So yeah, it does need to kind of be very accurate from the, from the Italians and they need to be patient. Very young halfbacks to try and implement such a patient game, but they, they do have to try and do and that. We, and we, um, like Benetton is definitely the template for this team. Yeah. We've seen that promise. Yeah, We've so seen if they play a Benetton teams. game, they have a much um, better chance than if they play a Zebra game. Yeah, that's um, right. Um, but yeah, no, it's on. It's on. It's on the forward pack really to step up and and be physical and not be not be shocked by the likes of Lavanini and Kramer and Matera in the contact. Yeah. Um, and on the flip side, from a Puma's point of view, as much as I want to see them develop an offense, I'm nearly given up. I think what Lede- I think what Ledesma wants to do is to own the physical contact area yes, in this true. game, to bully them, mm-hmm. to be dominant at scrum, dominant at line out mall, and just to win the collision yeah. zone. It's a fun game for them. Listen, they have they're up against a side they're better than which is a yes, rare the, enough yeah, thing it's, it's only the second time this year there's that Romania game which is not a great form guide in terms of that but this is the, the second time this year they're playing a team that they outrank um, yeah. which is just as a little the pinch of salt that you do have to throw on Puma's showings each year is that they do play the best sides in the world and if they're a little bit off they, they look awful and this yeah. season they have looked awful but potentially you might see a, a gulf in class here somewhat if, if they can string a few things together but the main like well I, I it was the game against wales in, yeah. in in july when they played that sort of second string welsh team yeah um that uh they like they just the way the way they worked around not having an offense was just to own the physicality yeah. with that sort of back five of the scrum and your Montoges and your Gomez Cadeas but like it just Lavanini in the contact battering folks Matera battering folks Fernando yeah. Isa just just winning those contact yeah. areas then all of a sudden your rudimentary offense can be effective because it's just about the, the quality yeah, just, of those so collisions just sit down the first tra- attempted tackle yeah. every time and then you automatically have numbers <laughs> yeah. you just created them by sitting a guy down you know they, they, they will look to boss the physical, physical side of it but mind the discipline um, which is obviously a note that should be written on their notice board or, or tattooed to some of these boys' yeah. foreheads. I think like Kramer cr- spent another ten minutes in the bin yeah, last they're week. They're just collecting yellow cards for the crack. Like they, they should feel no need to be pushing the edge so much against an Italy side that they will likely be outmatching anyway physically. So just. Just like, there's no need to jump offside there's no need to give away reckless off the ball hits try and mind the P's and Q's and they should have too much the other thing that I, I like as much as we're talking about their offence improving realistically their their kicking game should be better than it is um, well should they have a wing or a 10 yeah no I know but yeah. like between their between their half back and their Buffelli at full back and yeah. all of this they, they just aren't kicking proactively enough they aren't dominating they aren't dominating they aren't even getting territory at all like they're not getting involved in the territory or possession game Mm. because their kicking is so loose and for a team built on the mould that they are Mm. where they're tidying up their scrum getting their line out mall drive going they should be looking for 50-22s they should be slotting Big Boot Buffelli in on first receiver when they're in their own half to try and dial in a 50 like yeah. clever well, things I, I, like that as you point um, out they've been playing sides they're better than and their yeah. solution to the problem has been to soak and defend yeah. um, only without a counter punch yeah. but um, they, they, now they're in a position where they're, they're the onus is on them yeah. they're playing a team that's worse than them and, and it's it's a it's a potential backfire of a game plan if they want to go spring box on this launch the ball launch the ball deep and just hope that your defence wins the game and that, yeah. that Mon- Monazzi or Garbisi no, I think are I, foolish enough to run it back at you and then you get your jackal steal and then you get your three no, points I think it's more likely that if you if you can dictate a kick tennis game against young Italian halfbacks that occasionally can be loose in the kicking game if you can get them kicking back and forth and then you get have Buffelli be able to gather dial in that 50-22 because that'll result in a Montoya try if you're accurate from yeah, there yeah. like that'll be the recipe for them rather than like uh, ideally yes you'd like to see them with a bit more shape on the multi-phase that's kind of a on the first phase, on, man. on, like on any yeah, phase, any phase, I know. Like, love, just no, one good a, phase. There's a little bit of shape <laughs> when they do phase one, but it's it's. The, what it's, is the shape when they do phase? It, I haven't it, seen it. No, like, I've, usually seen them, I've seen them line up with a with a pullback on, yeah. and and whether they hit it or not, they take it up. But then from then on, it is just pure improv. Yeah. Like it's crazy to watch at a tier one level because like I, I we were frustrated watching Ireland with our rudimentary shape and our poor passing last season, but we were nothing compared to what the Argentinians are doing there. There's no plan. Refusing to 
attack. Yeah, like there's just <laughs> none at all after one or two phases. It's all off nine. It's all hit ups because there's nothing else on. Yeah. Like if you spin it out to ten, he's got nothing. And that's on. where, like, that's um, where you could find they could find themselves in, in in a hole. Is if they do go to that, if they get if they manage manage the field such that they're generating these attacking situations where they have the ball in and around the twenty two, you can't realistically kick it away from there. Yeah. And all of a sudden, and if, if, just if, drop if, a if bomb it, in the end zone, well, all of a sudden you're gonna get you know. A Lamaro steal after after a few after a few more carries. If yeah. Italy can sort of manage the manage the gain line, yeah, such they that don't fall off a away. tackle or something, yeah, let yeah. them in. Yes, for sure. Well, that like it may end up just sit them down with a ferocious kind of Kramer carry, for and then he's or, in. Or yeah, for just Kondo to play because just, yeah. the other thing is like as critical as I am of this um, Pumas team. Like I think their players are still quality. I like, do. Yeah, that's, I really that's do. where the that's criticism what, yeah, comes that's from. That's depressing me. Like I was saying earlier on, you had like there was a mo- couple of moments in that game against France where like De La Fuente got the ball and he did like there's nothing to his left, there's nothing to his right, but he puts a bit of footwork on, gets a hand free to no one because yeah. there's no one running off him. God yeah. no. Yeah. And then down he goes, just resigned to the fact that he plays in this terrible offense. I just yeah. don't understand yeah. the the lack of shape. I think it's really it's a it's a Ledesma criticism more yeah, than yeah. it's a, an actual in, in player any of these players because they've rotated players in and out and it's still no shape yeah. so it makes but no they, they, they do have enough quality that if they can just win a few contacts and sit down the Italians the they should be a, they should be able to put one or two plays yeah. together to, to score a few tries but I don't think I don't think they'll have it all their own way I don't think it's going to be a perfect show no, I'm, I think I'm convinced as well that Italy seem to be a little tougher this year Yeah. so I, like I would I are Argentina going to score 30 That's a, it's a brave call you know like, we haven't seen it all season yeah. maybe, like maybe if Italy are that poor but I, I don't know if they will I yeah. like I'd, pre- I'd predict maybe Argentina by, by 8 or 9 in a yeah. scuttery one. Um, that 22 th- points to 10. Some, well, <laughs> 22 points to 15 or, Ooh, six or, two, or 14, something. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to see 14, but it might be... 12 or, yeah. or 15 but in kicks yeah that would yeah. be it will be disappointing again when when, when well the, are the Italians going to be able to score against this defence because the, the flip side is that the Pumas defence is, is, is very good yeah, yeah no I, I do think it'll be a Pumas win slightly but an ugly one because yeah. uh, I think yeah both both sides will get some stuff off and Argentina will be frustrating despite dominating things and hopefully you know the ball breaks to Monte Ioanni once or twice and we get to see, we get to see a game of it I mean yeah, yeah I'd love to see the Italians dig one out and, and in Treviso yeah, it's high time that they got a win against the tier one side for a while. Yeah, I think the, la- the um, last one was uh, Scotland in twenty ten or something. Twenty ten? No, 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 no. Sure, they beat us since then and France oh, twice. Right. No, sorry, um, yes, yes, it was Springboks. I looked it up last week. It oh yeah, the Springboks. The, Spring the <laughs> Alistair, November. the yeah. Alistair could see that a Springboks right. that, that was, was right. just the handing same. out wins to everybody. Yes, that was it. <laughs> I'm trying to remember that one. That was very, very much it. That was the same time that we put a ridiculous score on them in that in that yeah, uh, yeah. November. Yeah, I think the last throws of that particular tenure, it's a completely different spring box <laughs> that anyone will be facing now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, as far as this game is concerned, I think Argentina will edge it, but not yeah. be totally convincing. I'll say, it. yeah, 20 points to six, Argentina. <laughs> no yeah. faith in them. No faith in this to be a good 16, game. 16-12 Argentina. There you go. There's that's one. a good, that's a better game. Yeah, I like mine. I like a good game. That, that, that is four kicks really for the Italians. Yes, an yeah. annoying four kicks yeah, for the yeah. Italians. Um, but yeah, with that we will uh, move on to another game this Saturday. We have Scotland hosting the world champion Springboks in Murrayfield. Uh, this is going to be a, a pretty intense contest, judging by both sides showings last week. Both sides coming off a good win, a good tight win last week in a very competitive match. Um, it's going to be kicking off on Saturday at 1pm. Angus Gardner uh, is going to be the man in the middle with the whistle. We have an Aussie there. Wayne Barnes and Craig Evans on either touchline with Brett Cronin uh, of Australia also in the TMO. And this, uh, this is going to be shown on Amazon Prime in the UK and, uh, and Ireland, I believe. Same as most of the games this weekend. Um, yay Amazon yay Amazon getting involved <laughs> um, but yeah just as far as colour for this game uh, Scotland's last win against the Springboks was in 2010 um, when Dan Parks kicked, Dan Parks remember great Dan Parks kicked them to a 21-17 victory 2010 was definitely Dan Parks opus year it was um, it definitely was um, but overall Scotland had played South Africa uh, on 27 occasions uh, their first meeting was in 1906, so quite a quite a history. But uh, the Springboks have won 22 matches 
and Scotland have managed to win five, which it's is not the worst record you've no, seen. No, no, spring box, it's pretty decent, reasonably respectable. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it's going to be a, a, this is a matchup. I think you'll find between the lineal champions of the world and the actual world champions. Yes, the Springboks lost their lineal title against Australia. Scotland have won it back, and now the Springboks have a chance to claim it's it back. A, it's a title it's, unification bout. Is it, that what you're that's saying? That's exactly right. That's exactly right. I mean, yeah, this is a. It's definitely a fun game on paper. I mean, mm. looking at last week and the tight forward oriented battle that the Scots had with the Wallabies where they gave just as good as they got and then some yeah. and, and took and out two tight heads if they could do that again this <laughs> week they'll be laughing they'll be doing very yeah. well to take out those buck tight yeah. heads but they, they hustled really hard up front they showed awesome defensive hustle as well and they were stymieing as far as as far as points conceded throw into the mix a Finn Russell led offence with Stuart Hogg with some quality players like uh, Rufus McLean now and Duhan van der Merve on the two wings yeah. I mean this this is definitely a matchup that is it, at the very least intriguing um, yeah. it has that Lions backdrop of Finn Russell and well, yeah, everybody suggesting it, that you know if Finn had, okay. had played things might have been things, different yeah, we yeah. might get to see that you know we might I get would, to see I would hope so what well, he's also, it's, off, it's off the back of Scotland with their, their greatest representation in the Lions in a long time in terms of just player for player and a very good season last year despite losing a few tight ones they won away from home twice they won a tight one last week they'll be coming in on a pretty good ebb here despite it's near enough the best tour. Scotland team of the pro era Pretty, I would say it is yeah, maybe best. the late nineties, but it's it's maybe but it's pretty yeah. it's pretty close. Yeah. They're a very good team. Yeah, um, it's like a, the, the quality of the Six Nations sides has has all gone up, and Scotland have been spearheading that as well. The the, the, the five top teams and Italy have improved a lot as well. Like any time you see yeah. Italy take on a tier two side, you kind of realize, oh yeah, they're in the Six Nations. Juice. They're yeah, they're yeah. doing a bit better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly, no question. Um, just to look at it from, from, from each side's point of view, we're going to start with the hosts, which is Scotland. And we do have the Scottish team. Yep. It is not without its surprises. Um, not, not to say that there are too many up front. Um, unfortunately for um, Ewan Ashman, he's still a bench warmer. He's not been rewarded with uh, with a starting berth for his class try. Yeah. Stuart McAnally comes back into the team after bringing the water boy last week. Yeah. Um, and they have stuck with uh, Sam Skinner and Grant Gilchrist, who went great they in the second really row last they week. Really good. Yeah. Um, they've also brought Nick Haining in. Uh, and moved Hamish Watson to the bench, which is interesting. So That'd Jamie interesting. Ritchie moves to seven, and Matt Fagerson is at eight. Mm. Um, presumably, the Mish is being kept in reserve to, to combat to that bomb squad. Bombs, I'm sure. Um, yeah, that has to be a factor into your thinking when yeah. you're when you're picking your forwards to take on this this Springbok packet. You, you'd have to keep something in reserve, and the Mish is a good bit of impact. He he does do the bench roll well. He did yeah. it for the Lions. Well, some of them don't. Sometimes players are talisman and talisman who have to start because they're more effective from minute one. But the Mish is pretty pretty versatile. He's so bombastic and, and in the carry that when he comes on against slightly tired defenses, he can, he can do really da- yeah, good yeah. damage. And he can um, if he's if he's alert enough, he can get a good jackal steal, and they'll need yeah. everything they can get they in, in, towards will. the tail end of this game. Um, in the back line, Ali Price and Finn Russell, no surprises there. Yeah. Um, but in the centres, um, <laughs> another harsh cut. Um, for Sam Johnson it's crazy um, the, man, they, the man plays well every time he gets the jersey and then gets summarily booted Gregor out Gregor Townsend just can't wait to get rid of him it's crazy um, yeah like, no he's a, from the outside looking in he's easily the best 12 Scotland have to offer with the potential yep. exception of your man Rad uh, or Redpath who did Cameron very, Redpath who did very yeah, well in his man. one showing yeah. and then disappeared forever it's but, true, uh, it's but, true. That's, I mean, we'll see Redpath again yeah. The only thing I will say to that end is that Matt Scott is as close to a like for like as you can get with Sam Johnson, yeah. and his form for Leicester is pretty undeniable. Yeah, like he's, he's looking very very sharp at twelve, yeah. um, along with uh, with Kelly in that centre partnership for Leicester. He's been he's been kind of lighting it up, and him and Chris Saris is a tough mean centre yeah. partnership with, with some offensive instincts as well. Both of them can cut a line, which, which is, is kind of all you need with Hogg and Russell in your yeah. team as well. You just need guys who can cut lines. And allow those guys to, to put you into space. True. Um. Then they've also um gotten rid of Darcy Graham from last week. Brought Luke Rufus McLean in to partner Duhan with the two make, It makes sense given the aerial uh, yeah. stuff that they're going to have to deal with in this particular matchup. And like Hoggy is not the most tall fullback you'll see anyway, but you don't want to take Hogg out of the team. And if you're putting him and Darcy Graham on, then suddenly you're at quite a disadvantage height wise in terms of the bombs they're going to have to be diffusing. So yeah, McLean rewarded for good form as well. Um. Yeah, they still have. They have loads of weapons that they can deploy in the back three. To be honest, it's it's yeah, horses no, they, for they, courses and, kind of kind they, of headache. They all they all know how to take a try. Those Scottish outside backs, and yeah. um, their bench pretty strong. You know, in terms of impact, Ewan Ashman, Jamie Batty, good good impact. Ollie Kebble, definitely good impact. Yeah. Jamie Hodgson didn't see too much from last good impact, week, but, but those those props will be up against 
Yeah. They will, but I'm, they, they'll be as game as they can be against yeah. the, against the the best front row unit in the world, which yeah. is the the Springbok replacement front row. Yeah. Obviously, the Mish, as we mentioned, George Horn, Adam Hastings, and Blair Kinghorn make up all the rest of their reserves. Very good, all potential um, uh, impact there in the back line as well, which is very encouraging to see. Yeah, no, the, Sc- the Scots will be buoyed by by. To be honest, this whole year has gone pretty well with a few things going against them, but there's definite improvements all over it, and it's reflected in how many of them went on tour with the Lions, and it's reflected in the more recent results. The Paris win, that uh, that big win, or that like narrow win against a very good resurgent five-in-a-row kind of wallaby side coming to town did very, very well to, to edge that one too. So yeah, they, they they it's likely that they're in a very physical, very tight contest because South Africa, even if they're dominant, mm. if if Scotland are game themselves, it it could be a one score game in the, in the final moments, which is kind of what they need because this team can grab tries if they're there. It can and yeah. it will need to. It um, definitely will. Like, like, there's, no, there's no way. And we saw the fight with with Wales last week. That's like eighteen points they kicked from the tee and they didn't grab a try. The box grabbed yeah. a try, and that's what decides games and, like that. And the box are so good at games like that. Yeah, and um, I would agree. I I would also think like. Um, as as impressive as last week was in moments, they weren't quite a hundred percent last week themselves. They probably rode their luck at times. I'm yeah. not sure how the game goes if Tupo stays on. Sure. And I think if they play a similar game this week and then that Bok bomb squad comes on, they will find themselves on yeah, the wrong the end of the result. Um, like they're go- needless to say, they're going to have to front up up front. They're going to have hope to make hope to make yeah. an absolute game of this. But they are going to have to get some offense off. I mean, that is that. that well, is we finally the, we finally the, see that Finn versus the Box in the blue the jersey. Key point yeah, of intrigue. Yeah. I mean, this Scottish team, their bread and butter has been striking off set piece. Yeah. And we. Have have that dream matchup of the offensive vision of Finn Russell versus the defensive vision of Lacanio yeah. Am, yeah. and that is and to be fair to Gregor, the offensive vision of Gregor because some of those yeah. strike moves off off scrum particularly yeah, yeah. Are, are things of beauty. The way they fold to one side entirely, multiple pullbacks, very good options. Yeah, yeah if they can dial something like that in, it's a really good test for Am or and the like. Yeah, exactly. It's still your best chance. Like the box are freakish at getting around the corner, but like it's so much easier to defend on multi phase than it is to defend um on on. On first phase, on first phase, you're guaranteed, you know, at least ten meters of space between the two back lines. It's always going to be a six on six or seven on seven kind of matchup. Yeah. In in, in at least half a field of space, there's 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 only so much um defensive acumen that that can that can that can help you out in in, yeah. in that in that context. It's true. And um, just looking at just looking at the the Scots and the Welsh and the Six Nations going to work off those mids of those midfield set pieces. That is the element of this game that intrigues me most yeah. will the Scots be bullish and brave the first thing they have to do obviously is secure their line out ball secure their scrum ball, scrum ball so so one. so Six important like, I've, I've um, loved Schoeman's showings uh, so far in the Scottish jersey yeah. but between Tonga and uh, and this uh, last week against uh, the Aussies it's always tough for an expatriated Safa to face the Springboks, I think, particularly if that one is a prop. Yeah. Um, so that it's going to be a huge test, the biggest test of his inter- his fledgling international career so far. Yeah. And Likewise, it could be make or break. On the other side, Ollie Zand- Kebble off the bench. Well, Ollie Kebble off the bench, but, uh, but Xander as well, who, like, he, he is a lion and he can scrummage very well. Don't turf the first scrum, which he is wont to do yeah. very often. That will be a penalty, and he, it will be. He had be a good an game in. last week, Xander. He did. He, he 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 did some damage to James Slipper. And the one thing I'd say from from a Scottish point of view is, as good as that bomb squad scrum is, and it's going to be very very tough to keep up with them and lock it down. That's the job of Ollie Ollie Kebble, the other expat sure. Safa, um, to to lock that down from tight head. And Kebble, to be fair to him, has some heft. So it I does. think he, I think he's a chance to lock it down. But that oh that starting Bok front row of of Ox and Che, Bongi and Banambi and Trevor and Yikanye scrumming kinda out of position at tight head. Yeah. He's just not the same scrummager at tight head and Yikanye. It's not as explosive as as a, as box scrums can one. be. Yeah. Certainly not as the second half one and not as as, as other box starting front rows have yeah. been. It's been kinda of hot and cold. True. They've had moments, but generally they're not as as explosive as all that. And all the Scots want, for the record, is, is clean ball. Yeah. They want their own ball clean and no penalties conceded yeah. from either set piece. That is exactly um, the mission. Um, that's what they want. Like yeah. Exactly that. Ball I mean, for Finn. Yes. Um, so ball for Finn and then a, a, a chance to attack that block line on yeah. first and second phase. First, second and, and third then, phase. Then, and, and then, then you're yeah. probably going to kick it. And, and sometimes um, you're kicking from first as well, let's be clear as well. If you yeah. can find a bit of room for Hogg or for Russell to put in one of those deep probing kicks. Yeah. The Scots, as we said last week, have the, the long touch finders dialed in like no other yeah. team and that, that predates the 50-22. Yeah, the but long they do spiral of both, yeah. of them, both of them have a nice spiral yeah, yeah. kick on them. So you, they'll need to bring all of that acumen to, to this con- contest as well because they know 
the back three will be given a job in the aerial game. There's no two ways about it. They will have to be dialed in. Hog will will likely have to go back to retrieve a bouncing ball and, and kick it away, and it'll have to be tidied up pro- uh, kind of proficiently because they, they will have to have to deal with it all day. That's just what the box bring. And uh, similarly, the uh, the back row who have been hustle monsters, there's no Mish to start, but the guys who are starting they're going to have a hell of a job just yeah. containing containing these guys and making the collision zone competitive because yeah. it's the second you start soaking against them the, the tails go up for the box yeah. and they love love and running around the corner when they're when their opposition e- are soaking e- meters. even on the offensive side of the ball the yeah. forward pack's job is, is huge I mean this Scotland team as much as they love to strike off first phase one of the things that they've done so well pretty consistently this year is develop a lovely little rhythm of phase play yeah. where they're moving the ball really quickly. It's getting through Finn's hands. It's going from edge to edge. They're probing through the midfield. There's little lines here and there and they can all of a sudden put 10 or 11 dynamic phases together. It is so, so tough to put any number of phases together against this Springbok team. It's true. They're just so aggressive at the defensive breakdown and it is on their forward pack to be alert and to... And their halfbacks. Yeah, too. Like and, Ali Price needs to clear oh, those yeah, rooks actually. Right like, yeah. like it's going to be tough because like, actually it's, saw it's not on Ali as much as it's on guys to guys to get in yeah. to, to prevent the Springbok guys from competing. True. But if you, if you are game enough and if you are alert enough to the offensive breakdown, you can turn that into a weakness. And we saw yeah. that in moments from Wales last week because the box they just want to contest everything. And, and that means a decent few, there percentage are fewer of the numbers time. out there. If you I mean, can clear that rook yeah. and get Finn on the ball, he knows he yeah. has numbers because there's one or two men in yeah. that rook. And a decent um, percentage of the time they give up penalties as well from true. from those attempts at jackal steals. Now plenty. Of the time they rob the ball as well yeah. but if the Scots can be there knock a guy off his feet then all of a sudden you're winning penalties you're putting points on the board yeah. so if they can work that offence that uh, that that wonderful Finn Russell led offence and kind of own that kicking game as well territory is going to be hugely important in this Elk the two Yankees playing for the Springboks Villy LaRue yeah, you know Villy LaRue has the odd drop especially in, in Northern Hemisphere conditions if they can edge the, edge the territory battle with their class territorial kicking and be as as defensively uh, robust as you say in terms of managing those those physical contacts on the sure. inside. Yeah. Like you'd trust Chris Harris against the Springbok wide offense on the evidence of what you're seeing this year to not give up too much there. All of a sudden you're seeing a picture where Scotland could maybe edge this make game. it a scrap yeah. and then edge it it's yeah. definitely like it, it'll involve emulating similar things to what, what Cardiff were able to emulate last last week but crucially Wales it, <laughs> or Wales sorry <laughs> Wales, with Cardiff yeah but Wales were able to, to kind of muster last week against a stuttering at times uh, Springbok side as well they, they just need to be a few degrees hotter than that as well they do, will need to find a try they will need to find something against this easier said than done obviously but it, if they're going to come out on the right side of the result in a tight one it'll involve that too um, but as you say pressure pressure guys like Yankees who's getting the nod at 10 try and force loose kicks out of him because those are great ins for Hogg into the game and like you don't want to be multi-phase throwing him to the to, and skip pass out to Hogg with Anne lining him up never yeah. a good matchup catching a kick and running back at them Bit better of a, yeah, a bit or better. kicking back at them more is the yeah, point. All of this, they need to kind of control control the territory, control uh, their discipline, and try and try and force a, a, a kind of combative niggly game that the box end up on the wrong side of the whistle as opposed to them. These are key little things that could swing it in favor of the Scots. Um, from from the box point of view, then. It's, it's a very simple recipe for them. It, it always has been. They're going to look to smash them first in contact. They're going to look to kick most of the stuff from the middle third with a mind towards chasing cohesively and smashing the Scots. They're going to look to bully them in the rook, bully them in the set piece, yeah. uh, bully them at maul, at, uh, at, at try and be as combative and physical as they, they often are, to be honest. They just need to bring themselves at the pitch. Uh, yeah. That's what they, what they will be thinking. No question, no question. We have the Bok team as well. Ox, as, I, as I mentioned, the Ox, uh, Ox and Che, Bongi and Manambi, Trevor and Nikanye front row. Etzebeth Mostert rotates Mostert back in comes on Bok. Um, Diager to come in. Exactly right. Yeah, Khaleesi so Kaga. Managing playing. minutes. Um, they've gone with Herschel and Nelton at, at 9 and 10, which is definitely the most interesting element of the selection. Yeah. Um, Herschel did not have a good game last week. Can't remember the last time Elton's had a good game for the Springboks, yeah. um, especially starting at ten. It's potentially an area of, vul- of vulnerability for them. Yeah. Um. The real question from from the point of view of selection there, is that going to have a dramatic effect on their offense? Are they going to look to move the ball deliberately a bit more against a tough enough Scottish defense? 
maybe I, like I would still imagine they're going to be kicking a lot of the ball I think Elton will be in the pocket a lot of the time kicking you know, yeah. because they're going to try and play off Herschel which is kind of what, what Faf does for them anyway and yeah. try and run their forwards around the corner and if they're winning contacts great they'll keep going but uh, the second they lose one or two they'll probably just sit deep and kick it and reset Back with the defence defense, yeah. that's, that's just the MO for them it's right. smash them is they stay disciplined don't get on the wrong side of the ref which is easy done the Scots are annoying they are definitely annoying to play in, in a combative one and like Safa they're no saints those Safa forwards they aren't above being tilted in moment and having the red mist descend and giving away a silly card or something they need to curtail all of that just be disciplined and be physical uh, and yeah back your defence to smash them it's the kick and smash it's simplistic very much so but very much effective when they arrive to the pitch of the battle They there are no no yeah. packs that we've seen um, so far that can live with them when they are in the mood to, yeah. to smash it I, I agree yeah. especially when just the, the level of player they bring on off the bench in, yeah. in that but that class uh, buck, uh, that, but that bond squad front row uh, Lou Diager and Jasper Visa to come on as well and they've yeah. also got Cobus Ryan Andre Pollard and Francois Stein yeah, which, is, which is good a back supply in terms as of they, uh, as they've had in a had, couple yeah, of years yeah. during during <laughs> yeah. this era perhaps because it's a 5-3 split not a 6-2-1 but uh, three very very capable subs and did, given Fran Stein's man of the match showing from the bench yeah. last week they have all kinds of cover yeah, there. It's it'll it's, be... it's impactful and it'll wear on them. I think the the most important matchup is what happens on defense. Yeah. Um. It starts obviously with winning contacts on the inside, but the box will be aware that Finn Russell is going to look yeah, to bring out I the would, box I, of I would imagine um, it'll be Quagga who will be tasked with applying the first up pressure on yeah. the inside, which is what his normal role is anyway. But he's on on Finn pressure, and then outside it's on Am to make yeah. that read. He will be trying to watch him and make the read the whole time. Yeah. But between Am and Larue watching for the kick behind. Uh, they all need to be. Yeah, you have to, to be it. dialed in, and yeah. so does Del Indy because Finn is the kind of man to, to, to no look past, to ang- ang- angle to throw a wide one, and then slip it inside. And if yeah. you if you follow his eyes, you're 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 not you're you're falling away. Like he, he definitely tricks you, and, and the the Bok, it's a good challenge for the Bok defense. It's a team that will look to attack them out wide, yeah. but they will make it much more difficult for the Scots if they can slow the ball down this at rough is, time. Collision yeah, will be the first port. Exactly. Of the first line of defense against Finn Russell is smashes forwards backwards mm. and then it becomes a little bit more chaotic yeah, I'm expecting when, a big game from the likes of Franco Mostert who hasn't yeah. been in he's been in, kind of in and out of the side this year Him, he's probably possibly a bit fresher than, than a lot of these guys sure. he's back in the second row where he belongs yes and doesn't get, have to do that, yeah, that crazy yeah. shift that and he doesn't have the yeah, cardio but before, for before he switched to the back row he was putting in monstrous showings yeah, particularly from, from on, 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 on defence line well, defensive yeah. line out he was yeah. all over it and resourcing the offence one day they all yeah. know how to, how to lock I, down a mole I, I mean I've been very I've been uh, pra- I've very much praised this, the Scottish team for being incredibly well rounded they are they have a very game forward pack who are underestimated but at the very very top levels of the game we have seen them struggle sometimes. I mean, we watched them against Ireland. Yeah. Really struggle to, to just get any kind of um, traction in the game. Mm-hmm. Be just kind of. Fit. It's a similar. It's a similar task here because they like what they like to do and they still like to do is soak and, and jackal in yeah. the breakdown and it's it's just a risk when you're you're dealing with a forward like the Ireland team they faced for the last few years had so many latchers attached it's it's illegal now to do multiple latchers but they were soaking and jackling and attempting to jackle a three man pod yeah, it's, it's not illegal to do multiple latchers after the contact after the contact yeah, sure yeah, yeah. yeah no but you're not allowed to line up as they were but yeah, yeah but yeah. they were trying to trying to do that soak and uh, soak them into a jackal when there's already three or four men resourcing that rupture it was only a metre wider than the rook like there's no sense in that you have yeah. to kind of front up and stop them there because otherwise it's cheap and the box will be the same equation like if they're giving them and in around the rook they will just take that over and over yeah. and over and over again they'll pick and jam it, it may be boring they'd have no they'll be in no, no rush to spread it wide if they're winning those soft collisions yeah. around the breakdown and Scotland yeah sometimes are want to give those up so yeah trying to generate that rhythm which they weren't quite able to do in Cardiff admittedly in a wet weather game last week but uh, Herschel's passing will have to be a little crisper bring those forwards onto those collisions uh, on their own terms so that they can get that moving and then it will be on Elton to kind of decide when to pull the trigger uh, himself and Vili who who does make reads from the outside as well and will probably be he makes reads from the them. inside sometimes yeah. he comes in at 10 I expect we'll see a bit of that with Herschel with Elton in the team a bit of sort of uh, holding hands making sure everything's 
Ian's got good and he's yeah. he's definitely he's another he's a different dynamic uh, Villarreal when he's in the team as good as Fran Stein was at fullback yeah. he's his, a little bit more his speed coming into his, his coming yeah. into the team with the wide passing game that he has just allows your back row forwards so, your likes of Quag on offense to get a little wider yeah. from the break and they can find tries a little more readily with exactly. him there. so that's why why he has such faith in him and they will need to convert their pressure into scores that it is the caveat it is the little work on for them is that even if they're dominant in this game sometimes they're only three or four or five yeah, points and up they're, and they're um, up against a tough defence it's, it's yeah, definitely they're also a up challenge. against a team yeah. that can grab a break like if a ball bounces as much as they like to generate chaos opportunities Scotland do thrive in chaos opportunities themselves as soon as they, they get a, a two on one and a breaking ball yeah. they will pretty much to a man execute that so they have to kind of yeah. limit those control those but when they're on top try and convert that that's into points it, yeah, if, yeah. If, if I'm to pick likely outcomes for Springbok tries that said I'm thinking probably most likely is your mall yeah. second most likely is your defensive try your pick your yeah. your, 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 your uh, tackle forced fumble recovery yeah. t- uh, uh, score down the other end that kind of score and then maybe your 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 bomb kick that's gathered by Mapimpi, um, yeah. or turfed by one of the, the Scots back three under a bit of pressure, and then bouncing and then up. Yeah, off, yeah, yeah, exactly right. Yeah. Those those are their bread and butter. We do want to see them expand it a bit more. But as you rightly point out, they have a ferocious forward pack. They have a ferocious bench forward pack, and they will look to just put the absolute squeeze on. This is the highest yeah. level of physicality that that rugby gets, and they're gonna bank on that being too much for the Scots. Yeah. Try and try and yeah. nullify the crowd early doors by winning some dominant oof kind of yeah. kind of contacts and slowly but surely edge the contest that way that that is the springbok way yeah. and uh, how do you see it going then with all that said yeah i don't know um it's it's call, isn't it? early afternoon kickoff as well yeah it's which is a, a factor yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Just, it's, it's, it's just a slightly different one yeah i think i think the box probably um, yeah, on paper the slightly champions. better team and um, the world the the actual world champions who have the trophy yes, and all to, to prove to it. reclaim yeah. their lineal crown yeah i i do rate the scots i do rate finn russell i think if finn russell is to unpick this springbok defenses it will it be, be it'll beauty, be beauty of probably game. the rugby moment of the year to yeah. see it happen and there'll be um, another fresh fresh yeah. row of buses for warren gatland to be thrown under them <laughs> after as well long after <laughs> the fact. question any yeah. more ex-players want to stick the knife in yeah. um, but um i mean i do think that I like personally. I think that Anne is still just an incredible form. Like yeah. the, the the factor last week against Wales, Wales again failed to score, but every time it got out as far as that thirteen oh, yeah, channel, no, he just ate it up. Yeah, deli- and, he had uh, yeah, was it Al- uh, Davis in his back pocket yeah. most, most of the game. I mean, because yeah, like, he, he's freaky fast as well. Like it just yeah. he's, he's getting he's fast. getting better. He's yeah. getting Anne's getting better, and that's a scary thing. Yeah. Like he's, I he's, think he's, he's, there, there will be a fair bit yeah. of cancelling out just given he's lining up against Harris this week. Yeah, I think it's just two defensive minded centers chances are a bit like the Aussie game it'll be decided inside them only the Aussie forward pack especially when Tupo went down yeah. was not a patch on this Springbok forward pack and so I think you're 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 probably forwards win matches yeah, and the box are and I do expect the Scots to play better than last week I think it'll be a tough game I don't think the Scots will give them anything easy but as it usually goes with this Springbok team towards the tail end of the game when that bomb squad comes on the probably just become prob- penalties. Yeah, become, they'll probably have yeah. too much. Yeah. Get that, get that try. Perhaps it'll play out quite similarly to, to last week's game. Yeah. Another twenty three to fifteen kind of job, probably for the box. But you know, it could go knows? either way. Could yeah. go either. I, I'll, I'll probably agree with that. I, yeah. I think, I think the box have slightly too much for Scotland, but, uh, but it'll still be a really good contest and a really good watch to, to get us going on Saturday. Who do you got in that one? Let us know in the comments down below. Absolutely. Um, but in the meantime, I think we are going to move on. Ireland versus New Zealand. Uh, yeah, what a game this has been over the last few years. One of the great uh, great recent rivalries in, in international footy. They're going to clash again at the Aviva Stadium in Dublin this weekend, this Saturday. Kickoff 3.15. And uh, yeah, going to be a cracker. We have Luke Pierce in the middle, a man with the whistle. Uh, Matthew Carley and Christoph Ridley on either touchline with Tom Foley in and the TMO. Um, TV coverage this is going to be live on RTE in Ireland and actually Channel 4 have the rights in the UK on the, the yep. Ireland team Ireland, the only one not on, on Prime for some reason but uh, yeah good good enough uh, Channel 4 do good fair coverage and 4. actually fair play to Channel 4 they chucked out uh, 20 minute highlights of, of last week's game as well They're, Channel 4 do great stuff so yeah, I'm glad to see them have the game Miles Harrison back on comms yeah. as well yeah um, yeah I mean obviously this is a uh, <laughs> This has been a, a, a something of a something of a big clash in recent years. Really, since really. that twenty thirteen game, that the that Ryan Crotty stole at the death, 
Um, I think when was the next time they met after that was was Chicago. Yeah, Chicago. But even prior to that, with with Brian O'Driscoll's tail end of his career, there were there were some good showings on that tour in Austra- in in New Zealand. There was that yeah, was that second test years. that was there was that too. But there were there were competitive fixtures in that era too. We never quite got it. Like it's only a recent rivalry because to be honest, Ireland yeah. only really joined the echelons of good rugby teams at international level. Around about the yeah. time Brian O'Driscoll was scoring a hat-trick in Paris in 2000, that yeah. signalled our arrival. And prior to that, they were just routine shellackings from the All Blacks. And, um, and they were for a period after, that's been real. Um, um, yeah, Dan Carter winning, kicking the winning drop goal in 2012 to, to, to break Irish hearts. Yeah. Um, that was that was a big moment. Then Ryan Crotty in 2013, and you yeah. feel like it's never going to happen. Um, then we don't meet for, for three years the World Cup we pass each other by yeah. um, and uh, in 2016 Chicago one of the great test matches of, of recent years as well 40 points to 29 in favour of Ireland they broke their, their, their duck against the All Blacks then the All Blacks come back in, in a couple of weeks later and, and show, flex their muscles yeah. and win in Dublin convincingly um, and then in 2018 on the tail end of Ireland's great year Ireland win that game and, and claim the number one spot in the world for a brief time all building up to the quarter final at the last World Cup where uh, an Irish team on a very low ebb got blown out by the All Blacks yeah. but in this in, in Dublin in, in recent years it has been a, a very good game this Truly. and yeah. I think it's set to be on the evidence of last week it is set to be again obviously the overall stats hugely favoured by the All Blacks I think we faced each other 32 times overall 29 wins for the All Blacks 2 for Ireland 1 draw yeah. Um. But crucially, those two games have come in the last few games since they've come in. Since they've come in the last five years, yeah. And um, Ireland definitely a step above where they ever has been, as, where they ever have been, as you rightly point out. Um, yeah, it's gonna be like it's gonna be a, a brutal forward oriented physical test match. I think it's gonna be great stuff. Yeah, in I mean, Dublin, the, the crowd is gonna be a packed out crowd as well. Uh, of the like whatever about price and tickets, you can price whatever you want when the All Blacks are in town. Um, so it's going to get bums on seats regardless. And uh, yeah, no, it's gonna be a packed of Eva, and, and we're looking forward to a great atmosphere from the opening bell. Really, from from the time we see the hacker, the whole crowd will be bullish in in response to that, and hopefully yeah. the team are too. Yeah, it's it's a massive task. This it's a high flying New Zealand side. The last time out was was forty six fourteen in that World Cup game. Let us let us just forget, like uh, when we were off the pace at all. The all if you're off the pace at all, in, in as in any capacity, as Wales demonstrated a few weeks ago. This New Zealand side can put you to the sword. So. Oh, they're absolutely brilliant. Yeah. They've come. They've they've turned over a new leaf this year. They have a fabulous. Uh, they have a fabulous offense. They have a fabulous approach. They have just um, so many great me- players. A mean forward yeah. pack and a ruthless new defense and are a tough task for absolutely anybody. And they've picked a, an awesome team for this game. And um, they're also chasing down the hundred tries. And if they did break the record last week. They they do four. I think I can't remember what the exact uh, total of points was. Um, I think it was was it over a thousand in one season or something. N- not like quite, that? but yeah. um, they 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 did break the record anyway. I yeah. don't have the the stat in front of me. Um, but they're, they're seeking they, the prettier they, stat yeah, of a hundred tries in a season. Hundred tries in a season, which yeah. will likely never be done again. Yeah. Um, you just think of the amount of games you usually play in a season. Yeah. Um, not not enough to con- <laughs> constitute that many, unless you're scoring a hundred twice, which yeah. they've done. Um, um, yeah. No, they're mighty impressive, and they will be hunting tries out there, and it'll be on Ireland to try and stymie that and try and be combative and make it not all their own way and I suppose we are going to do what we usually do and look at the winning conditions for both teams and we're going to start with the hosts which are our own charges Ireland and uh, how we're going to look to go about uh, winning this game we do have the team named it is much the same team as the one that took the field against Japan with one change in the second row Biggie and Henderson comes in and uh, Ty Byrne drops pretty pretty straight rotation just where, like for like he drops yeah. to the bench and uh, um, Dan Sheehan drops from the bench uh, Rob Herring comes in to replace him as hooker cover as well yeah. um, but outside of that the same team Andrew Porter Ronan Kelleher and Ty Furlong make up a explosive front row unit really, yeah. very good players Ian, Big Ian Henderson and James Ryan huge task for them but they're very fine second row partnership and that uh, all skills all uh, singing all dancing back row of Caelan Darris Josh van der Fleer and Jack Conan pace and football pace yeah. and football they yeah. have been absolutely brilliant this year and the task gets only tougher in this game truly um, the back line Jameson Gibson Park gets the nod at nine yes. so approve of that yes. call yeah. So I just think it, uh, he's a facilitator of, of, of Sexton's play and he makes the and game forwards he makes well, the game yeah. not about the scrum half and yeah. not about ev- everything that happens at the base of the rook and more about what happens around it. He just yeah. clears rooks and feeds Sexton yeah. and feeds the ball the ball carriers. Plays a simple game. He he has layers to his game as well. Yeah. Um 
Um, as in, like he's a, he's a, he's a decent all rounder um, on top of that, but his role in this team to just facilitate the Sexton run, yeah, rooks, fa- fa- facilitate yeah, yeah. the Sexton run offense. Yeah. Um, while you know picking a guy like Murray, who's just he's a still, little he's, still on the bench for this one. Yeah, um, which like he, he did okay off the bench against a broken Japanese side, but I, I'm I'm not sure what the impact is because like. Yeah, you, you, like you need to be clearing rooks quickly to, to ask questions of this all black defense because very often you forget how good they are on defense. You're gonna yeah. if you want to stress them, you need to play with tempo. Yeah, no question. Uh, Sexton obviously at ten. Um, Bundiaki and Gary Ringrose in the center. Yeah, James Lowe, <coughs> Andrew Conway, and Hugo Keenan make up the back three. Yeah, um, real Kiwi flair, <laughs> flair to this Ireland team. Three uh, um, former teammates of many of these all black players. It's true. It's true. Uh, James Lowe and Bundiaki. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd be lying um, if I said it wasn't a slight concern in that you know it's it's tough to not get starstruck when you're facing the All Blacks who those guys did grow yeah, up dreaming Mc, to play Mc, with Mc Nichol, Mc Nichol hustled hard the he other did. week yeah. Um, yeah. Aki Ak- and Lowe of the Chiefs fraternity and Gibson Bark former Hurricane um, would have yeah they would know these guys I think James Lowe as well was saying like he would have been very close with some of these guys at an underage level yeah. um, who are now starters for the All Blacks um, the Irish bench Robert, uh, some, some decent uh, stocks in it but I'd be lying if I said I wasn't I was I wasn't a little bit worried about it. Yeah. Um. Heron covering Hooker, Keen Healy covering Loosehead, Finley Beelum covering Tighthead, Ty Byrne, Peter Mahoney, Connor Murray, Joey Carberry, and Keith Earls. Um. Yeah. I, I yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm not convinced by that bench to be honest. I think we have better. Like there are a few things about it. Like Peter Mahoney for one is great when he starts. Was great the last time the All Blacks were in town. I haven't yet seen him do well off the bench. Like, yeah. like he's just less used to it when in his role with Munster. Whereas all of the Leinster players do, the back row players are used to back row by committee. And like Josh van der Fleer will come off the bench and do a twenty minute shift. Whereas Omani, like when he came in last week, the first thing he get, did was give away a penalty because they're just too keen to get into the game. And so that's a concern. The main one, the big glaring one that we keep making note of is is Finley Beale at tight head. I have no understanding what that's about. He loses yeah. games, loses scrums fairly convincingly. At URC level, these are the All Blacks. Like it's yeah. it's wild to me that uh, that of of the two Connacht players featuring in the match day twenty three, one of them's a tight head prop yeah. as opposed to like a scrum half yeah. or something that they they are better at uh, than the forwards. That is a concern. the The main macro concern, whatever about the players individually, is that unlike a lot of other teams, Ireland at the sixty minute mark when the subs come in get disjointed more mm. so than being bolstered by what's coming on by the reinforcements it, it, there's like a lull of 10 minutes a very often when the bench comes in it, I don't think we've unlocked how to use the bench properly we're still, uh, still yeah, we're somewhat, somewhat arcane playing a bit of a 15 man game sometimes yeah. and not really giving, well, in, giving in, the, uh, in, in, the bench the, in due Healy, diligence in Healy Herring and um, Ty Byrne there are three there's good impact de- yeah. three certain playmakers out there mm-hmm. Um, and yeah I still think that Peter Mahoney and, and Keith Earls if needed could slot in yeah. um, like I, I ultimately I'm not sure if, if Carberry is going to be used at all I, I, I well, that's the, that's the yeah. issue I have no I know I agree. It's, a 20, it's a 23 man game it's not a 15 but, man yeah, game I know, but, like, but what do you do then do yeah. you have no 10 cover yeah. Or do you or do you pick a ten you intend to take Sexton off for, which is dubious. Yeah. But listen, moving on even from the squad, um, just looking at this game from 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 a, a tactical point of view from the off, um, obviously this is going to be decided first and foremost by the guys up front. Yeah. This is a heck of a matchup for this okay. Ireland team. True. Um, I think it's 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 intri- equal parts intriguing and concerning. The All Blacks have picked a mighty forward pack. Yeah. Ireland themselves have a mighty forward pack. The it, it 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 begins at set piece in terms of what happens. Paul O'Connell has come in and done a remarkable job with the line out. Brody Rutalik and Sam Whitelock will be attacking everything they will. in the air. They will. They're really, really even Blackadder's slippery yeah. in the air too. Um, yeah, no, they have they have good uh, defensive chop or chops on the defensive line out. I think that fancying uh, scrummaging aggressively with Porter and Tyg Furlong, they have been doing that this season. I would like to see them go after the All Black scrum. Yeah. I know the All Black scrum is very very competent and was making Italy look very silly last week. Yeah, was got, making it, Wales look silly it, the week before. It just before. looks really really but good whenever Rutalik and Whitelock are in the yeah, engine room. Very, it, just very good. it rarely goes backwards when that's the scenario. That's true. But this Irish pack are doing doing very very good things and new things yeah and then the the untold story and the great unknown is what does this new high-powered irish attack look like against this new high-powered all-black defense yeah 
and it's a really it's, it's definitely a fun question. it's a fun picture because it it, there's more questions than there are answers as far as what this looks like given Ireland's uh, performance against Japan you saw the All Blacks with that out to win blitz torture Wales on the outside but Ireland have been a very different team to that yeah. I mean one thing that's for sure is that the All Blacks are going to be coming after Sexton Sexton's the linchpin of the Irish attack he's the guy who calls the plays he's the guy who's usually put in position to make the killer pass yeah. either on the inside or the outside unless it's little Hugo and sometimes usually he's the second second yeah. distributor Sexton's yeah. the guy who's going to make that first uh, uh, first distribution pass um, but I think one of the one of the things that Japan did on a couple of occasions one, when they started to dial in what we were doing was shoot up on Sexton on the outside screen and I expect the All Blacks to be doing that early and often yeah. what Ireland need to do the, the only way that they can break this game up on the offensive side of the ball you know, first of all you have to keep the pace of the game high but it's the interplay from the forwards it is. it's Sexton yeah. running Sexton's going to play dummy a lot in this game and it's going to be a lot of inside balls yeah. balls from Se- Tai yeah. Furlong Kelleher these kinds of ball playing yeah. forwards Doris on the inside even Van der Fleer getting the hands free and then out wider Conan trying to yeah. trying to use it yeah they, it's going to be about the interplay of the forwards to create the space Sexton's going to be the one deciding when to pull the trigger but there's no sense pulling the trigger before they've created that no, space I mean, and in fact with the speed different like Rico Ioanni like Gary Ringrose is no slouch at 13 but Rico Ioanni is pretty much the fastest 13 in world rugby I'm yeah. pretty sure I'm, I'm right in saying but uh, yes yeah, so there's a speed difference there that's going to be tough to, to uh, get outside particularly when you think the passing acumen of our backs hasn't been as good as the interplay of our forwards really in recent in recent times there's no sense certainly if you go off like if you have a midfield line out Kind of, kind of going off the top and, and going wide wide is not really likely to yield anything against this all black defence and it didn't for Wales and it very much won't for, for Ireland who are less traditionally that side I think it'd be more more about things like the Aki hard line the forwards running all like three or four forwards flooding narrow channels with yep. options on either it, it, side it starts like we saw we saw the Irish attack in full flow and it was there was a lot off Sexton he was running those little screen lines in behind uh, in behind the forward pods with runners off and with low with James low with a forward a, a loose forward like Conan picking one line low picking another and yeah. also a wide option as well and Sexton taking the right one the way that you get there is by putting the all back defence on their heels because we saw against Wales when they're on their toes when they're coming out on, on the line they just shut everything down on the outside and they're going to be putting someone in, in Sexton's face early and often yeah. I think the trick is initially at least when Sexton's running that that tracking line in behind the screen you're going to want to see the forwards do a little bit of interplay use Sexton as a dummy give the little tip on pass um, get on top they put a bit of footwork on it get past the game line go again with the forwards yeah. again it, it does have to be dynamic it has to be quick it can't be old school Ireland tuck and tuck yeah, under the jumper just and keep telegraphed going. off nine is never going to work no but, exactly uh, yeah. it's just too slow and it doesn't yield anything but with the footballing ability of the Irish forwards you're going to back them to win a few matchups one on one to play off each other a little bit to get the All Blacks defence which likes to rush up on its heels a little bit going backwards on the inside that's when you get sexed on yeah. the ball and that's when you're trying exactly. to get to the outside and that's also the better opportunity to kick as well yeah. you need to sit down the All Black defence before you kick to them it opens up the field Sexton's got a huge um, box of tricks as far as the kicks yeah. that he can bring out he's developing he's that to game deal with Jordy Barrett is a, is a handful in the air so sometimes the bombs aren't entirely the option if he can proactively find grass and try and find yeah, a bit absolutely. of separation uh, yeah it all starts with sitting them down with a bit of go for which we were we, we struggled to generate the last time out against them at all we were completely at odds in that World Cup and we're like yeah. it, was con- it was telegraphed it was re- well read and they couldn't get a thing it was, off it was very much um, a different offence then this yeah. is this is this it, the attempt is to be much more dynamic much more explosive and pick lines off one another yeah, we're not running see. not running yeah. lines to, to clear out rooks but to pick lines off each other the great challenge then is to do that to do it effectively use footwork and vision and call the right plays and pick the right options and mind the football yeah. because the key thing that you can't do against the All Blacks is overplay turf lose the ball, lose the ball yeah, either through a jackal or a knock on or something yeah. and give them the chaos or turnover opportunity yeah. that they so crave that, that will will invite a score that is almost inevitable yeah. then yeah so it, it, it is a, a massive massive task for the pack which are going to decide it for it likewise the halfbacks just moving us about really well uh, guys like Keenan will have to be sharp at, at fullback as well because very often you're asked to, to make a clutch tackle when the All Blacks are attacking you even as a fullback or make field a big high bomb that they will likely put up it'll have to be as assured as we've seen from those back three to try and keep it tidy but uh, yeah proactive with the ball in hand is what we really want to see 
and uh, ask some questions, stress these uh, these all black uh, pack men, make them too focused on their defensive duties to be as sharp as they can very much be when they get the ball. It's yeah. kind of it's, it's about suffocating them with good proactive play. Yeah, and uh, doing it on the inside first, inside and then earn the right to go wide yeah. for God's sake. It's the All Blacks. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. ask Wales about it. Yeah. You know, first phase intercept as you say the speed advantage. There's yeah. just not going to be anything out there for Ireland until they sit things down on the inside, and it's also where their strength is. Yeah. They do space out their forward pods pretty well. Ireland, they have got like a a, 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 a they they well modern, they back they back the pass. Yeah, yeah. Like a, like a tight furlong if he's the central mm. figure like it doesn't need to be just off him the guys can have a bit of separation and the next pod can have some because he can hit them out yeah no yeah, it's yeah. The, the, pod, the pod doesn't need to be contained within 5 metres yeah. but it does need to like they're, they're spotted across the field but the inside pod closest to the rook has to do a bit of work to sit down the all back defence and that's how you get it to the extremities where you've got other forwards lingering yeah. and um, that's like it's definitely a dynamic and fun picture and I would trust Sexton to get some stuff off in this game um, the real winning and losing of it as well first of all I think set piece is obviously going to be massive mm. and then massive and then gain line yeah. gain line on both sides of the ball who's winning the line yeah. that, um, that has been what's decided yeah. this contest in recent years like it, it, in Chicago it was us who were the, the ones at the, at the pitch and, and we blew them away in the first half and then they came back then the two weeks after when they rocked up to Dublin they dominated the game yeah. line and that was that was a difference maker and then likewise and when the last time they met in, du- in Dublin when we won we dominated them in the game line you had Brody Retallick getting smashed backwards by yeah, a James, James Ryan James, James, James Ryan's um, best game for Ireland and probably his last best game for Ireland as far as like he's, he's still a very good player but he was exceptional that day mm. he needs a similar performance he does they the all whole four Ian Henderson needs to be massive he's got the nod this week he needs to make, him, make his presence felt yeah. both at scrum they, and in the they, loose they haven't dealt too well they, like it's 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 in in some sense it's a fledgling all black offence as, as incredible as it's been this year on the multi-phase it has been stuttered and they haven't coped that well with pressure yeah. like they're great when they have go forward they are prob- they are the best in the world when they have go forward they, they convert chances like no other team but when they haven't had go forward we saw in back to back weeks against the Springboks they don't resource their rooks that well they don't find the space that so, well so Italy we saw it last problems. week against yeah. Italy granted with a changed team they, their passes weren't as slick you know they did. They didn't do their due diligence of to earn their for or earn their right to go wide themselves, and the hence things kind of fell apart a little bit in the outside, yeah. and it became a stuttering kind of performance at least for those first three quarters. That's kind of what Ireland need to bring out in them yeah. uh, is to be so sort of um, stingy on the line, not give them any clean ball, make sure that they're going backwards, and it's just who, who wins those contacts is Caelan Darris. And uh, Josh van der Fleer, are they going to rise to the occasion, get out of the line and, and smash the likes of Ardi Savea? Yeah. Or is Savea going to get his footwork on and win those contacts? It's going to be so determinative yeah, as to whether top, the All Blacks can get things level off. level matchups yeah. in that pack across, the, across both sides but of the park. It's going to, I'd, I'd expect there will be plays, there'll be tit for tat, there'll be plays made on either side. But it is, it'll boil down to things like the contact area, things like the set piece. The simple nuts and bolts of rugby, who's edging that will likely edge this contest. Yeah, and, and, and can Ireland, if they are edging it, be as, as ruthless as an All Black team? Well, this is that's the other thing. Like, yeah. Are they going to be, if they can, if they can win that gain line battle, can they turn that into points? That's right. Because yeah. there is a more depressing scenario where Ireland win the battle of the gain line and lose the game because the odd knock on here or there. Yeah the All Blacks go and, and convert up the other end. Sure, sure. Ireland last week showed so seriously um, uh, encouraging signs of just being really, really sharp with the ball, of knowing how to take a try, of maintaining their spacing and hunting scores yeah. like I've never seen, not like I've not seen since the O'Driscoll days near enough yeah. as far as just hunting tries from everywhere. Dialing that in against yeah, a really. Tier 1 top-class opponent is is, is game changing. I mean, they've I had they've had nothing but 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 victories in the forward matchups this season. Yeah. Um. To but to be able to put points on the board is another thing for this team. And while last week was very encouraging, this week is another challenge. It's true. It, it's true. It was a good confidence builder, and the, they should be confident enough to go for it. But it, the, and yeah, jet lag Japan ain't no All Blacks. And <laughs> speaking of the All Blacks as well, their winning conditions. Yeah. They because they do have a few. Um. Yeah. It's obviously it's it's send us reeling in terms of be dynamic try and be deceptive with their with who's getting the ball, who the carrier is, try and sit down guys like Josh van der Fleer, who'll be very important to the Irish defence on the inside, overload guys like Gary Ringrose on the outside, and, you know, 
pick pick us apart by picking the right passes. No question. Um, and we do have the Allback team as well. They yeah. have um I would say they're probably maybe a little um light at prop. I always have this concern as granted Moody and, and Laulala's form is decent. It is. Um and Cody th- Taylor is Yeah, those 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 them. those are the those are the two props. Outside of those two props, the rest of the pack is mighty. Mm- not just mighty incredible and mm-hmm. they're all the form guys as well this is this is for me the A team on form this year mm-hmm. Cody Taylor at hooker Brody Retallick and Sam Whitelock in at lock Ethan Blackadder Dalton Papali and Ardy Savia making up just an awesome back what, what row. a back row battle we're in for here in this terms is, of just high this, high caliber stuff this is not the URC now no it is not I mean, yeah, from yeah. an Irish point of view it's going to be rough taking those guys on it's going to be a heck of a matchup and from both sides point of view I'm just excited to see it um, on the back line, the All Blacks have got TJ and Bowden at 9 and 10. Anton Leonard Brown, interestingly, getting the nod at 12 over Havili with Rico at 13. Yeah. Sever Reese, Will Jordan, and Jordy Barrett making up an incredible awesome, back awesome three. back three that um, they've gone with. Uh, some good impact on their bench as well. And I'm looking at those backs Finley Christie, Richie Moonga, and David Havili, all very confident. Yep. I also have a big. They have a massive Akira Yoani to chuck in at some Dane point. Coles. They have a Dane Coles to throw into the mix, too. Inukuafe and Lomax covering uh, the props. And also Tupo Vai, who is another form form guy. Like, no room for guys like Tui Pilatu, but Tupo Vai is a massive unit as well. So, yeah, really, really good stocks uh, for the All Blacks. They're coming to coming to play with, a, with serious intent here. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm just... I'm I'm nervous because I'm an Irish fan and it's the All Blacks in town, but uh, yeah, there, there's there's going to be a lot to dig into here. Familiar faces to to us uh, guys like Greg Feek and John Plumtree, um, they know they know us pretty well. Yeah. They'll be they'll be trying to dismantle Paul O'Connell's well led Irish yep. pack. John Plumtree, Plumtree, former Irish forwards coach for a short time. Greg Feek, an Irish and Leinster scrum coach for very years, years scrum decade. coach. And to be fair, um, he did great work with us. And this season, the All Black scrum has looked better than it did in previous yeah. seasons. He has good credentials. Ah, uh, listen, if the if the All Blacks can take the set piece away from Ireland they'll, and Dublin, they'll go a long way to winning be, the game. Yeah, they'll be very very close, and they have been tigerish. It's outside of that spring mock game where they struggled they have been really really they good should, to be honest line out um, is where they should prim- primarily attack they'll hope to lock down the scrum and make it not an Irish uh, yeah, point of strength except, I would except they've been pretty aggressive they this have, year they I mean, have, I'd, I'd be surprised the best form of defense don't get me is wrong. to attack the scrum yeah, for I'd, sure I'd, I'd be surprised if, if Joe Moody was to shift Tig Furlong backwards but I, I, it's not out of the realms of possibility no, given their, the strength of their engine room it's I true. think they will look to be ag- aggressive and physical yeah. as, as a forward pack I think they know that they'll have to be to, yeah. to do well in this game it's not going to be a case of, of trying to get outside the Irish pack I think they're well aware having looked at us last week that we have some strengths to us and that the best way to stop us is to get us going backwards yeah and, and to I take things like set piece away because actually yeah. one thing that they will have, have take on their, their defensive line out has been very very good all season and Ireland's line out but actually particularly annoyingly with this partnership of, of Henderson and Ryan which is one that we were billing as one for the future but that combination has not resulted in totally assured line outs on, no. on our own ball no, no it's not, better not really. with Tyburn and Peter Mann in there who are yeah. on the bench yeah. but if it, in the early goings if the All Blacks could, could uh, give, few, give Kelleher the shakes yeah. uh, and steal a few line outs that take, taking a huge platform away from Ireland yeah. that's an early sign and an early uh, point for them yeah. um, Artie Savia has gone from strength to strength this year he's been an exceptional player he's one of the certainly if he's not a, if he's not favourite he's very much on the short list for player of the year I would think yeah. um, and uh this is perhaps his biggest challenge yet is, is sort of dumb like he's been so um, explosive in and around the lines on the rooks if he can if he can replicate that kind of form away in Dublin against this explosive Irish pack geez he nearly seal player of the year for me but it's yeah. it's a it's a chance for him and to be partnered with Papali'i and, and uh, Ethan Blackadder who are just such workhorses yeah. diligent workhorses that he, he is allowed to play a little looser there's a good balance to that back row that they've got and I got Kiri Iwani to come in there's really good impact too yeah, no, those guys will have to be industrious and barnstorming because like Dublin is a tough place to play as a back rower. You can't yeah. can't arrive not at the pitch, but those guys have the quality to, to make it a proper proper scrap and to try and edge that scrap. I also think one point of advantage. Like I'm remembering now the uh, the try they scored in that game two weeks after de- after the Chicago game where Bowden Barrett just off first phase off a midfield scrum just ran outside of our scrum half yeah. and it was like scrum half covered ten, but it was Bowden Barrett at ten, so we just ran straight through yeah. and uh, it's 38 year old Sexton opposite him and Josh van der Fleer is a linchpin for setting defensive pressure 
but if you can occupy him with Bowden Barrett having like because Bowden yeah. Barrett runs at Sexton from an Irish point of view, Josh has to help be the guy to help him out. Yeah. So if you can overload him in that regard, it could result in Leonard yeah. Brown or Listen, Rico going. The, the, the All Blacks have to expect that they're not going to get it all their own way on yeah. the line. That Ireland at home in front of their fans are going to be hungry. They're going to be physical. The All Blacks aren't necessarily going to get to dominate the line in phase play. And when they haven't dominated the line in phase play this year, they have struggled to make things happen. True. They've made up for that on chaos ball and turnovers like they always do. Largely due to um, the instincts of Bowden Barrett when, when the ball gets into um, his hands on that. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. And generating turnovers, you look at line outs as one option, absolutely. But also on defence, yeah. is going to be a, like a, a huge potential in for them. And as much as Ireland looked good last week, Gibson Park and Sexton were given a bit of an armchair they were, ride. They were. The All Blacks will be looking to attack them. Yeah, if they can slow Irish rook speed, that's a big, big uh, win in their column. Similarly, target the ball in the contact because Ireland will be looking to win those contacts and get the ball free and yeah. try and get the offloading game going. Big swinging arm, punch the ball out. Yeah, NFL especially, style. especially early yeah. doors. Like one thing that's been that's been true of this Ireland team for some time is even when they they try to play a bit of rugby. It, their confidence in doing it is a little brittle it is and it was never checked uh, against Japan Not in fact it was only encouraged by our opponents in moments it's true. if the All Blacks can can get uh, get the Irish double check uh, thinking twice about trying to get the hands free because they're attacking the pill all of a sudden it's, that, they might yeah, recede the back into that old shape of kicking and chasing and defending and all of a sudden the game will it'll take a more favourable shape for the All Blacks sure. but I do think getting after Sexton putting pressure on him in Gibson Park constantly not giving up anything at the line is so important as well yeah. um, but it is a challenge it's a challenge on the defensive end to mind your tight furlongs to mind your spacings to not buy in yeah. the defence has been very aggressive thus far this year it's been out to win yeah. it suited them like a, a dream against Wales the out to win blitz because Wales just wanted to get to the edge yeah, and no, do nothing they, else probably play Ireland a are a very daft. different team yeah, no, Ireland yeah. won't play quite as yeah. daft a game against them like, like even if, if the All Blacks do win it in that regard I don't think it'll come in, in quite the same fashion in terms of picks coming on the very first play yeah, but yeah. I think the All Blacks are going to have to adjust their defence as well just yeah. accordingly they're going to have to flood a little bit of these inside channels they know that Ireland you know they're going to want they're going to get James Lowe off his wing he's going to be running off Sexton they're going to have loose forwards running off Sexton they, Most had, good, of, they had good innovations yeah. last week with TJ Piranara coming from deep and yeah, that was shooting yeah, up, yeah. and it was cutting off the outside. But you can do something similar to on the Sexton, inside, yeah, on the inside exactly, to yeah. Sexton to cut out those options for him and just give him less. Yeah, time. just for, force him to take the less favorable option, just to dump yeah. it off or to for, force for, truck for it off. Yeah, if you can yeah. force him into contact, then hit him. Yeah, um, absolutely. All of that stuff. Like the, the All Blacks, as pretty as a, t- a, t- a team as they are to watch, uh, watch them in when full flow best, and on offense. Yeah, but at their best, they do have dog. All of that stuff we were talking about, Japan not having the gamesmanship to kind of yeah. make it a bit dirty, make it a bit narky the All Blacks have that. Guys like yeah. TJ Piranara, like he's an absolute dog <laughs> and he will get involved. Like if, if, if Ireland are kind of getting isolated, get in there, po- poach that ball, yeah. be, be ready for that because guys may fall at their feet and, and be able to turn that over, play the ball, don't play the, for the penalty because the turnover will be the chance to when, when the Irish defence is discombobulated, the All Blacks have the edge. Like yeah. we, even we saw it even, even in that Japan game last week, the one try that they got was spilled ball and then suddenly the defence was... Yeah. slow to reset and if, fold if ever there's yeah. not a rook for like 10 seconds the, the Irish defence gets a bit lost it does and they it's want true. a rook to reset and the All Blacks are, are one of the great teams at, at preventing at, at that no and keeping ball. it alive yeah. Yeah. absolutely yeah so Jackal Steel's huge attacking the pill huge forcing chaos scenarios I also think they should strike off set piece it's probably their best advantage best yeah. chance to get to work that speed advantage yeah. on the multi-phase it's going to be tough R- Rico versus um, Ringrose like yeah. Ringrose has been shooting and tackling very well this season but Rico has a different kind of speed yeah. and if they can put him in a little bit of space or in even five metre channel where Ringrose has to stick the tackle yeah, yeah you like kind off, of back Rico exactly. if he has the ball in his hands off multi-phase with the pressure game Ireland might be in a position to suffocate the all-black offence but off early phase, early phase play Get just getting one on one matchups all over the park is going to be favourable to them. It's not just it's not just Rico against Ringrose, you know. Leonard Brown is quicker than Bundy Aki. Will Jordan is quicker than James Lowe. Yeah. Um. Uh. Severis much quicker than Andrew Conway. Yeah. They have that all over the pitch. They um, do. That speed advantage and certainly working it offset piece. They don't t- tend to be a strike team offset piece, but they should be trying to find the edge off scrums getting it away from the Irish forward pack yeah. and making it about your your advantages over the Irish team and really stretching that defence and asking how good they really are yeah. um, that's definitely that's definitely a, a point of focus for them um, yeah so the All Blacks definitely oh, yeah I'm Ireland scared. against the All Blacks it's a scary game I'm scared it about it I, I, I am curious as to what happens when, when Hugo 
and uh, and Jordy are up for the same high ball because they're both very good in the air. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm just curious at that particular battle. It depends on momentum. Most I think the guy with the momentum, the, guy with the angle to yeah, attack, yeah. normally wins those ones. Yeah, and yeah. Um, yeah. With all of that said, I don't know how do you, how do you see it going? Yeah, I don't know. Um, it's it's what about curious you? one. <laughs> um, Ireland need to be a bit like the box were to that all black offense, yeah. just stealing ball constantly and nuisance a on nuisance, a, a nuisance, a very on the def- very physical yeah. nuisance on the yeah. defensive end of the ball. Like we looked at the, how impotent the all blacks were left towards the tail end of that second game, where just every phase they tried, they were getting jackal stealed. Yeah, that's the kind of thing that Ireland can dial in. They do tend to be a bit more of a soak first defense or or just like a tackle first defense. Um, Ringrose huge job for him getting out of the line and, and shutting things down but if they can if they can turn over the all black ball with some degree of regularity on the multi phase that's definitely a chance for them I think I do back the forward pack to be competitive I think this is going to be a brutally physical contest I think at home in Dublin you know we're, we're definitely going to make a game of it I do trust these guys I think our forward pack is exceptional I think they have a very high ceiling Um. But the All Blacks are the All Blacks, and it's very tough to, to see them losing any game. No, oh, I don't against find the it tough. I find it um, be tough to watch them winning this week. <laughs> um, no, I'm going to say that Ireland do edge it. I think it will be a one score game. I think I hope we edge it by by a four point margin, and that's and you know a, t- a, t- a tight finish that we have. But we come out on top. That's what I'm hoping for. Right, but how how is that happening? <laughs> oh, you know, with the, with the forward pack yeah. dominating most most of the game and the defense actually being dialed into, into their task. So what's the try? What's the try situation? Who scores? Uh, I think Kelleher grabs one from a maul. Um, oh, we're gonna maul the All Blacks. Yeah, over the line. Yeah, okay. I think so. On on one instance, and then Jack Conan in the wide channels, top oh. dotting down a pretty one. Nice. Yeah, interesting. That's my that's my, my that's hope. your dream. Yeah. Yeah, I mean you always get you always get to pick Ireland. I, I definitely think we're a chance. Yes. Um but I also really do rate the All Black team. I think they've picked a scary side. It's true. And I think even as as good as the Irish offense looked last week, it is in its infancy. And I could just the reality is that tries are gonna come easier to the All Blacks than they are to us in this game. Um, I think um, mm. just on the odd moment uh, you look at just in, even in the Springbok game that they won you know they were they were beaten for the most part and they found a try out yeah. of nothing yeah. um, to, you know Villaluru knocks the ball on oh we don't even need to rock they'll try a little chip over here and that's a try yeah. their speed advantage on the edge is scary and I don't know if for 80 minutes Ireland are going to be competitive I think Ireland will certainly be competitive if not more than for 40 minutes and possibly 60 minutes um, but in those crucial moments, just before half time, around the start of the fourth quarter when the bench comes on, mm. I think the All Blacks to grab you know a try each in in, in those circumstances and, and 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 take the game that way is is probably the most likely outcome. I'll put it that way. Yeah, that's a that's a bum note to end. Who do you got? Let <laughs> us know down below. Unless it's overwhelmingly in favor of the All Blacks, in which case, probably don't. <laughs> no, no, drop it down below. But uh, that is for for our money the game of the weekend. Um, it is a massive test. It is has been. To be honest, great tests for for the most part over the last decade of, of this clash. So it's it's just great to see it again. It's gonna and, be a fun uh, game. Yeah, fun game for sure. Let's see but, this new high powered Ireland team in full swing. That's it. But we will park our own charges now and move on for there are other games to preview. We have England Wallabies, an old Ooh. Ashes, an Ashes quality kind of clash. <laughs> Um, yeah, interesting game coming right up in Twickenham on Saturday as well. Kick off 5.30, slightly later. We have Yako Piper of South Africa is the man with the whistle, the referee. Uh, AJ Jacobs and Pierre Brousset uh, are the linesmen and Stuart Berry is the TMO as well. Um, this, like like most of the others, is on Amazon Prime in the UK. That's who's covering the game as far as TV rights. But uh, yeah, very, very interesting, spicy contest. Obviously, no love lost between these two. Um, interesting points of colour. The most recent re- meeting, obviously, England beat the Wallabies in that quarter final and in a convincing fashion, 40 to 16 uh, in the World Cup in Japan. So they currently hold the Cook Cup, which is contested by both of these sides. But uh, the records are quite, quite uh, interesting. It's, it's as even as it gets. They have played 51 times. Both sides have won 25 with one draw. <laughs> so there are serious bragging rights going to the winner of this one because they will get a winning record going. Um, the other little tidbit that's interesting is that Eddie J- um, Jones obviously has yet to lose in his tenure. He is 7-0 and against the Wallabies since taking over the England job, yeah, which likes, is pretty good. He likes playing Australia. He does, yeah. Um, they match up poorly against England. That's probably why. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's it, it's it's definitely um, it, 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 a, a challenge for this Wallaby team. They're they're a little under resourced. Yeah, they tend to be 
hammered. I mean, yeah, I that's think the, the, the average the, the, score the, the, between the, the, them in the Jones era is thirty six nineteen to England. Yeah. the aggregate average, um, which is just yeah, that's a, a depressingly one sided statistic if you're a Wallaby fan, particularly ahead of a Twickenham game. Um, yeah, yeah, um, it's a, it's it's a, it's a mighty challenge for the Wallabies, and we will get into them looking ahead of it. We're going to start though with the hosts and their winning picture. That is England. Yeah. Um, we have got the England squad for this week, and it's definitely not without its question marks. True. Um, got, but it, it starts up front, and they have an absolutely mighty forward pack they themselves. Do mean forward El- pack. Ellis Genge, Jamie George, Carl Sinclair, Itoji, and Johnny Hill in the locks. Courtney Laws, Sam Underhill, and Tom Curry making up the back row. Explosive, every one of them. Three a locks and two sevens. Physical. Yeah, and, yeah, exactly right. Uh, ben Youngs and Marcus Smith gets a start yeah, at ten. Great How see. good is that? Exciting times. Um, Faz, fan. Faz back in at twelve. Henry Slade at thirteen. Question marks about the balance of that. Yeah. Um, Johnny May on the left wing, world class. Um, Manu Tulangi on the right wing, That's seen out of nowhere. Crazy. Um, well, it's not crazy. He's he's useful over in any capacity. But uh, yeah, my thought would be that if he's at twelve with fans probably out of the team and, and someone else on the wing, it's probably a little bit more balanced. So yeah, I'm not convinced by the ten twelve. Why would you drop? Why would you drop Faz? I just people people hate on. Faz. No, I, mean, I would keep Faz on the bench if you're starting Marcus. Drop, if you're gonna if you're gonna try and make it more balanced, you drop Slade. Drop Slade. Faz, Faz is world class. Like yeah, I, I would never drop Faz from yeah. this team. But anyway, that's just me. I think either um, of those are more balanced than what they go yeah. with. I think I think with Slade and Faz in the centres, it's just a little a little bit lighter. No, it does. It has it, it hasn't down. worked traditionally. If yeah. you just replace the Smith with Ford, it hasn't worked. Yeah. Um, they have Freddie Stewart, the young Leicester uh, fullback, uh, twenty years old, uh, keeping his fifteen jersey for this one. Yeah. Um, and in good form. Absolutely, yeah, and uh, they've got some some new heads on the bench. Newcastle's Jamie Blamier, um, Bevan Rod of Sale Sharks, Will Stewart obviously as Caps yeah. covering tight head, Charlie Yule's covering um, Locke, and then two back row subs, two number eights, despite that no number eights in the starting team, yeah. two on the bench, Dom Brandt and Simmons. There you go, class, good class impact, operators. good speed off the bench there. Um, and obviously as a 6-2 split, just Rafi Quirk and Max Malins yeah. to bring in. It is an England side bred for one purpose, <laughs> to physically dominate the Wallabies up front. That is, that is um, the plan, all right. Yeah. Unfortunately, this was going to be quite a matchup before Tupo and Alatoa went down. And now all of a sudden, from an English point of view, the first port of call, you're thinking... Alex Corbus Sierra, 2013 third test you're thinking Ellis Genge match up against James Slipper playing out of position at tight head yeah, they should, they be should easy money. with a Toji and Johnny Hill in the in, in, in the, the second room, in the driving room. it yeah that is money all day and that's where it's going to start England yeah. are going to try and blow this Wallaby team away physically yeah I, I would agree with that. Yeah, no, that you're like it, it was set to be so primed. If it was Alatoa and Tupo, that that might have been a different uh, contest altogether. But yeah, England they are missing. They, there was one other dr- thing about the squad was that Joe Marler was called up to the squad this week and then ruled out for this weekend with COVID. Yeah, um, which was a whole thing. So that's probably why Blamier is probably going to be in for capping, uh, getting a cap. But uh, yeah, it starts with 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 Genge because as you say, sometimes those what like you see it in Bledisloe games, the Wallabies don't tend to scrummage anywhere near as aggressively as just every team in Europe does yeah. um, like obviously with the exception of when Tupo's there it's all go and, and, and yeah. they are aggressive but like when they play the Kiwis it's very often just kind of I oh, will just do a do a shake of the hand before the game. We'll just retain our old bo- own ball and play with yeah. it. How about that? Um, <laughs> whereas when they meet the Springboks, that's very much not the recipe. And to be honest, up like they were a little bit shocked by what the Scots were taking to them in a very gung ho fashion last week. And England are gonna look to kind of go go on the nth degree of that and and apply the squeeze right at the off from set piece. The other thing that they did very well in their last game against them in that forty points to sixteen win in the quarter final was the kicking. And um, yeah. they they couldn't like the Wallabies just couldn't exit they couldn't deal with the restarts that's right the restarts were going to the in the tram lines about five or ten meters out from their own try line bottling them up with a really good chase and then normally england would score from that before the wallabies had an attacking foray at all and um, so they will try and repeat that they have a lot of kicking acumen on that pitch obviously with with the marcus smith uh farrell and slade uh, as well as your man at fullback as well you know they, there's a lot of good boots educated boots out there uh, for them, they will try and apply that uh, that pressure to this Wallaby backline. They're a little disjointed at the minute. Yeah, there's no question. Yeah. The kicking game is is a huge part of England's play yeah. under Eddie Jones. It always has been. It's always best on the front foot. Yes. Um, for the last year, they lost their way. 
Yeah. Um, they won that Autumn Nations Cup, but never was there a worse team to win a cup than that England team <laughs> because they never played an ounce of rugby with the ball. Yeah. They were like the Pumas have been all year. They yes. just kicked and defended yeah. um, in response to what happened at that World Cup. Um, I'm excited now because I think we're going to see this high-powered English offence back in full flow. Yeah. And with Marcus Smith at the helm running it, it's just a really, really exciting yeah. prospect. Well, you look at the scary way, the way Queens else. are playing the, the game. And to be honest, the way the Premiership has gone in the last few years as far as attacking yeah. footy, it makes sense that it filters up into the, yeah. the test side. I mean, we talk about the interplay between forwards. Um, Jamie George, as good as it gets, yeah. uh, in, 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 basically in, a dist- a 10. In, yeah, in a distribution yeah. position on a screen. Um, he's just he can carry explosively he can tip on um, or he can feed Marcus Smith out the back I can skip I, pass over the top yeah, and yeah, the, yeah. the other thing I like is it too Lange on the wing it is it is not he's not going to play 100% on the wing they're yeah. going to trade him and Slade out and in I think yeah. for much of the game he's going to come in picking hard lines um, playing effectively as centre yeah. I would say in, in, in moments try and test the Paisami Ikatao telepathy yeah, on and, defence and, and, and you're yeah. going to see Slade out there on the wing they're going to throw a lot of different shapes at this disjointed wallaby defense a lot of deception and i'm just very very excited to see it it does start up front i think the yeah. the, the explosive uh, combination in the back row of, of underhill and curry picking lines off the likes of uh, of off, off each other and off the likes of jamie george um along with just the sheer physicality of Otoji and johnny hill yeah. in that engine room i can just see them overloading the wallabies True. when this offense purrs at its very best it is Perhaps the prettiest in world rugby, I it's, think. It's up there, and, but definitely when they. And, when and they it's play. only going to get prettier with Marcus Smith in at yeah, 10 because I think this kid is a star. It's really, true. really, really Re- real talent. The sky's the limit as far as yeah. the ceiling's concerned. Yeah, no, the, the recipe will be simple in that regard. They want to bully it, they want to get their, their fans involved, they want to get that Twickenham factor involved by just being there for the, the rough stuff and try and rough them up on the inside, try and dominate the kicking game in the early exchanges. Don't be reckless like Marcus Smith is young, obviously. The, the Wallabies. I want to kind of grip, punish you if you're if you're going too too wide too fast. Like they could grab a pick and Callaway could be sprinted away, and that's not the part of the recipe. But those ki- I give them the edge in the kicking duel in the middle third, and I trust the amount of playmakers they have to know when when the right time to pull the trigger is. Pull the trigger. Yeah, Definitely and I just I just think this 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 side that he's picked has the balance to get the front foot. They do. Um, with yeah. the with the with the framework that they have on offense, and I think Ben Young's at nine like nobody else in this England team and the reason that Eddie Jones is stuck with them he maintains he's that the tempo, the tempo going um, for sure and um, they this they have such a rhythmic tempo and the Wallabies have never been able to deal with it as long as Eddie Jones is there because they can't really stop them at the gain line they resource the rooks really well they're deceptive where the ball is going and then when it gets to Smith he has options but he's on the front foot the defence is flat footed yeah. and he's got all the talent to pick the right pass um, yeah. and I suspect he will I think it's a it's a great matchup for England up against the defence I think they're f- physically superior and I think they're going to really have a cut now at the Wallaby defence um, they do need yeah. to be um, a little mindful of um, Michael Hooper in and the Jacko for sure um, they someone, do, do someone need to mind watching. their P's and Q's on the, on, yeah. on the, on the offensive breakdown yeah. um, but no I don't think that it needs to be leaning kick heavy necessarily I think they can move it through phases I think in, this English team is better when they try to attack from the middle third last year it was too much kicking True. when they want to kick I want to see it being like those kicks on the edge when you get the wingers to come up and yeah, attacking putting kicks, kicks for in Johnny May yeah from chase. the likes of yeah exactly yeah. right yeah. Um, to get to get him on the board yeah. um, or to get him 1v1 with, with a Kellaway retreating to gather yeah. a ball or something like he'll, he'll gobble that up exactly right yeah. just put the pressure put the pressure on them that way but there's there's such potential in this England team looking at it it just looks it looks pretty like I know there's a lot of complaints about the side but it looks reasonably well balanced to me I think Slade can move to the wing pretty easy and I expect he will yeah. um, for parts of this game and Tuolangi's going to come in there's just so much talent in it and so much yeah, danger power, from a Wallaby point of view so. Uh, yeah, from that Wallaby point of view, it's 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 about containing them. Fresh from a bit of a kick in the nuts last week in Murrayfield, they are gonna have to dust themselves off and be ready for that Twickenham factor. Which the juju isn't good. Obviously, they 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 have not beaten Eddie Jones's England at all, yeah. um, and now their their record in Twickenham isn't the best anyway. But uh, they know that they're gonna have to have to be fronting up to what is a very monstrous English pack and a very aggressive, very dynamic backline. Guys like Ikitao in a seminal defensive role in the 13. 
guys like Valentini will need to continue his big form and be, yeah. be there for the Valentin, contact if, if the Wallabies um, are to win this game Valentini is going to have to be all over yeah. Um, yeah, because true. England have so many playmakers on the other side of the ball yeah. Valentini's done a great job of dominating just about everyone he's played or at least winning collisions against just about everyone he's played but it goes up another level again this week. I think England are, are primed and ready to go, so it's, it's going to be huge from him. Yeah. Hooper, likewise. Hooper, likewise, needs to bring that teleportation device that he has in his pocket <laughs> and be everywhere, as he as we know he can be. Um, but, uh, yeah, they, they, we do have got their team, and it is like, there is some change, some of it forced. Obviously, they're down their two best tight heads, which is where, obviously, England will look to attack with Gell- Ellis Genge, but from a Wallaby point of view, it's going to be very tough. Angus Bell started to getting the start with Falao Fianga, and then it's James Slipper, as you say, out of position covering tight head and then on the bench as well actually I think they've called up uh, your man from London Irish um, yeah that's right uh, Oliver Hoskins Oliver Hoskins set to make a cap because they're they're out of tight heads courtesy of the Murrayfield game so this um, is it's it's a big old tough task to face an English scrum with shorn of your best two tight heads it's it's a tough ask they will yeah. be looking to lock it down as best they can and get clean ball out particularly on their own feed just get clean ball out and try, yeah. try and work something out wide um, yeah the whole team is Angus Bell Falao Fianga um, or Fanga, um, James Slipper, Rory Arnold, Isaac Rodda, Rob Leota, Michael Hooper, and Valentini in the back row. Nick White, um, someone maintains his jersey at nine over Tate McDermott. James O'Connor then at ten. Yeah. Uh, Hunter Paisami and Nicky Tao in the midfield. Tom Wright and Kellaway on the wing with Kurt Lee Beale back at Beale back. back in. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Tolu Latu covering Hooker. Tom Robertson co- covering Loosehead. As you say, Hoskins covering uh, Tighthead. Good Skelton and Samu is good in That is, to that be is fair. their best part um, of their bench. And Tate McDermott as well actually cut up the tempo yeah. at, at a good and, time. And uh, Perese also covering the back. Uh, he was, was very good, good last yeah. week. Um, and Noel Olaseo covering 10, obviously in the absence of Quade Cooper. I mean, it's it's tough to see them coming to Twickenham and putting them show. Like, I'm a huge, huge fan of this Dave Rennie Wallaby team that, that beat the Springboks twice, that plays dynamic, awesome footy, that's new and different and fresh from from what from what came before. And then, like, as, as much as the good juju um, might have come in from, from picking all those European-based players, I look at this team, and as a consequence of injuries and all sorts of other things, the, the whole Japan situation, the club footy situation... They're it's missing just, the spine of the it's, team. It's just not Dave Rennie's team anymore. It yeah. looks and feels like a similar outfit that the one that went to the World Cup on yeah. the Czechs. Yeah, um, a new but, team. Well, yeah. it, it looks like a brand new team, to be honest. That's, That's what a, it looked like last week. I like, in terms of like the, the locks, you have Rodda and Arnold, as you correctly pointed out. Don't know why guys like Philip Phil, and Swain, Philip and Swain, who've yeah. been brilliant all season, aren't getting a look in there. That's a little point of disjointedness. The new halfbacks, in terms of they're not the new halfbacks, they they've been there before. But James O'Connor's had no game time this this season. Yeah. Nick White has had not that not that much game time in terms of being the first the first yeah, choice. And I just think and fundamentally, if you have a guy like O'Connor at ten who, who sits a little deep, like I think you need McDermott in there to balance it. I Perhaps, think, yeah, yeah. I think Nick White works very well with Quaid. Um, yeah. But actually, the the better combination with O'Connor there is is with Tate McDermott. And but they have similarly got the massive Karevi shaped hole in their whole yeah, offense. Yeah, and Cor- Corabetti. I mean, uh, even, even before Karevi right? came in, Cor- Betty was, was everywhere. doing like, was just, doing that coming yeah, like the, someone needs to sit them down and like to be honest from their point of view it has to be Paisami Paisami yeah. just has to run that line it's it's Farrell up, up opposite him it's not like it's Tuolagi lining up at twelve although it might be from time to time but even yeah. if it is he needs to commit to hitting that line and giving James O'Connor that bailout option and then trusting Ikita to be the guy slightly wider with a bit more footballing yeah. flair. Like, if they're going to get anything off on offence, it'll need to be well-balanced. And that'll yeah, involve their set, their setup plays in. against the Springboks and when they played well against the All Blacks were off the ta- off the top of the line-out. You were seeing Valatini off short and line-outs crashing through a contact, generating a few extra yards. Then they'd get around the corner. Then it would be uh, a Karevi picking a, a sharp line, beating a man, getting through. And then all of a sudden you had that front, ball, front foot ball for Quaid and Co. to work with. Yeah. As you say, it has to be replicated. You have to do something similar. You have to get uh, Valentini into de- picking a hard line off first phase on set piece, trying to cut through the likes of an underhill, generate sure. a bit of momentum, do the same with Paisami, and then try and work around the corner. Yeah. There are potentially ins on offense for them in, in that way. It's definitely, from a defensive point of view for England, a little imbalanced. Uh, Slade is a good reader of the game from 13. Yeah, it's just the physicality but, of yeah, it. They, they, yeah, the yeah. Wallabies come back themselves to hustle. Yeah. And that, that definitely could be, that's their, their main in is to get those two sit down lines as you say that they did so well against Dale Indy yes. uh, in, in it's a similar game. recipe for and find the edge yeah, then, yeah. then you can find the edge and once you get to the edge you've got guys like Kellaway out there yeah, who will grab a try who's class. in the mood yeah, to yeah. do it exactly yeah so it'll, it'll, there'll be a few ways for them to generate those ins 
the kicking game will obviously have to be very very good in terms of navigating territory you can't allow England to just bottle you up as they did in the last time they these two met they hopefully some lessons learned in terms of prioritizing exiting and exiting cleanly with a good strong kick chase and um, similarly their offensive mall has been good this season but if they're going to go to it somebody needs to watch Itoji because Itoji is such yeah. a factor and uh, to be honest Johnny Hill is as well with the telescopic arms like the offensive mall has been good for them they will look to probe there mm. but guys like Nick White will well, have to be alive to the danger well, and also the locks yeah well um, Rory Arnold and Isaac Rodda have to come out and justify why they've been why they have ousted Swain and Phillip from yeah. the Wallaby team um, and yeah. they have to go out and justify it like if they're that good go out and show it this is a huge huge test up front yeah. they have to be relentlessly yeah. physical there's no room um, no room for any shrinking violets in the no. whole team like they like, and that can happen in Twickenham but like yeah. to Wallab- the Wallabies are as guilty of it as many other teams are that uh, you just rock up to, to Twickenham and don't play your best game even if yeah. you lose the game or even if you pl- were to play your get best game it weren't to be enough but a lot of teams don't play their best game in Twickenham and they, they have to they will have to if they're going to have success yeah, it, and, and, and the best thing about Wallaby teams and I, I would include as much as I'm disappointed that that they fi- they're finishing the season with just a shadow of what they were yeah. in the rugby championship. They still have that offensive quality to them, and we saw last week for um, uh, Leota's try that the, it was just a simple little set piece move. They actually managed to get the edge, broke the line, and then straight away it was actually just a blindside um, uh, pass from Nick White to Leota, who just cut straight through, and they got a cheap try. Yeah. And they are at their best; they do find cheap tries if they can get a gain line advantage. They read the game really well. They see where the defense is is, is limited. Nick White reads it pretty well, and he, they pick hard lines and they find tries. Um, that that is their best quality, and that is their in in this game is to find cheap tries after gaining after winning the advantage line yeah. off set piece. Yeah. Um. Obviously, easier said than done much against the tough English team. Much easier said than um, done. I think a few other ins are to mind the discipline. If they can be the right side of the ref, that can frustrate England. Um. Lock down the scrum. Get your own ball in and out. Yeah, the forward pack has such a job. It's to it's do, all yeah. on the forwards really. Um, um. But be secure, be solid, and then make England be the ones that get frustrated. Keep that that strike in your arsenal that they do like they, they were too lateral last week in general just with the back play to across the line so it starts mm-hmm. with that hard line just to straighten but from then on the instincts are good as you say if the ball bounces or if there's a yeah. simple two on one they will execute so they're they're not without ins and it's not it's certainly not a hopeless task but it is an uphill battle and England are definitely favourites in my mind speaking of oh, actually yeah. how, do you, how do you see yeah, it going well, I, 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 well can the Wallabies defend them you know can, can, that's, I, I, stop I, like, them I, I, can guys like Valentini and guys like Rodda and all yeah. it, like need to make massive hits and make I, them count. To be fair, I am assuming that England are going to just on the basis of the selection. I just have a feeling that they're going to show up playing something similar to what they were in twenty nineteen. Yeah, where they were, uh, it, they were a high tempo, physical passing offense. Yeah. It was about passing. Yeah. Um, from everybody. Mm-hmm. Um. And, and forwards being a linchpin in that but they did it with such shape just endless screens yeah. deceptive screens we have yeah. a screen here and there very Saris based uh, using the full width of the field yeah. with dangerous carriers everywhere and the smarts to pick the right options they, they were an absolute joy to watch when they were at their best the way they managed their way around the field and nigh on undefendable when they got it right. You think of that all black game, some of the seek, yeah. some of the set set plays that they went through. Well, the that's, only way was to do the Springbok route of smash them back in every collision. Yeah, and then exactly. they then they're less potent. <laughs> exactly right. Yeah. But I don't see the Wallabies doing that. But that is an assumption that I'm making based on the side. I just I feel like they're gonna rock up and be that team. Yeah. They might not. They might Listen, not. They, in like the, in, in the Six Nations, they can... kicked everything. Yeah. They, they played. They played to defend, and they were made to punish. And if you give the Wallabies enough chances, if you play the defend, grab tries, the Wallabies sure. will grab tries. Yeah, it's and very tough to put, put the Wallabies to the sword. England are better at it than most European sides, but even a stuttering Wallaby side can sometimes grab a try or two and make it a yeah, one-score game. Ask the Springboks about yeah. it. The Springboks have dominated the Wallabies before and drawn the game yes, because the Wallabies just grabbed a cheap try where the yeah. Springboks didn't, and that's definitely a factor. Um, but no, personally, I think England are going to be very good and yeah, are going to come back and I'm win. Just, you know, like I would have, I maybe um, would have hedged with the with the Wallaby punt had they not lost both of their tight heads yeah. last week. But uh, so geez, Scotland's such an attritional team to play against. Mm. But uh, yeah, no, I think 
I think on balance that England have just a little too much and I think it could be a, a two score or maybe more game uh, yeah I would one. agree I would agree I'm, I just don't think the Wallabies have all their tools unfortunately yeah, and I think you need them yeah, um, if you're going to go to Twickenham to win you probably need your to be rocking up with your strongest side for the most part that's that's true yeah uh, that's certainly what I think but let us know what you guys think are the Wallabies a better chance than we're giving them credit for they certainly have some good players out there do you think that they, they're going to pull this off do you think we're overrating England that you know they finished fifth in the Six Nations and what are we talking about but yeah. I'd just look at this squad I think, yeah, they're, I think really good. they're really really good um, but let us know down in the comments below and uh, yeah with that we're going to move on absolutely um, next up we have an interesting game a very interesting game it a game a that I'm one. delighted that is happening actually and to be <laughs> fair both coaches were reflecting those sentiments we have Portugal v Japan in the Estadio Municipale Cidade de Coimbra, Coimbra. I'm um, not sure that is exactly correct. I'm not sure that's that's correct, but it is on Saturday also, 13th of November. Um, Andrew Brace is going to be uh, the in the man with the whistle. Um, oh my goodness, it's an all Irish referee. Oh, it team. is. Yeah, Frank Murphy, Chris Busby on the on the uh, ARs, and Brian McNeese in the TMO, all Irish. No offloading allowed. Crossing, crossing calls <laughs> crossing, on every pretty try. Cr crossing um, for both teams yeah. constantly. No, no, uh, unfortunately not. <laughs> we hope not because, yeah, both of these sides play the game with aplomb and with tempo and with verve. And, uh, yeah, like, as far as the colour, I was looking through it. Although they, they did play a training match in 2007 against each other, but this will be the full the first full test cap uh, match or to full test match between these two sides so there's awesome. no no pre precedent at all uh, this is for all the marbles for the winning record between them and uh, yeah currently ranked 19th is where Portugal are um, and they're behind second place in rugby Europe behind Georgia at the minute and um, yeah they're enjoying a bit of a resurgence as we've been documenting in terms of where, where the Portugal team is up and uh, or is at and where their ebb is at they're trending in the right direction and uh, yeah, they're they're working really to working towards qualifying for the World Cup in France. So this is a big kind of test for them because they've said before that they've modeled their game on what Japan have been able to do. And yeah, Japan's but... journey to uh, to tier one from tier two has kind of blazed a trail that a lot of these sides are aspiring yeah. towards. And it's 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 just great that Japan are. are going and, and doing this game yeah, and I think it, there's no doubt it'll be pretty it's, it's going to be a fun one yeah as yeah. you said uh, Patrice um, uh, Lasque the, um, or Lajeske, the uh, the Portuguese coach who's just doing a, a great job um, has talked about how proud they are to play a game against Japan yeah. and just talking about the fact that um, uh, uh, Japan's game is, is so similar to theirs they play a fast game with little men and yeah. they, their style of rugby is so remarkably similar and so easy on the eye yeah. that this just can't help but be a banger. Yeah, um, I think it's going to be really. I think it's going to be really exciting just to just to look at it from the point of view of both teams. Starting with Os Lobos, um, good news from a Portuguese perspective is that they have reinforcements from the game on Saturday. Yes, um, Anthony Alves, Jeffrey Moisey. Samuel Marques, Marques, the key um, one, the key difference, there, tempo um, setter, along with uh, Jean de Souza, uh, Francisco Fernandez. They're basically going to be full strength. This Portuguese Going team. Go ho at it. They probably had this in their calendar for quite a while. This is a great game for they, them. They yeah. do. And yeah. listen, as 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 games against tier one sides go, I like. I, I'm not going to say that they're a favorite in this side. But the matchup of their offense against the Japanese defense should excite them. Yes, they have some really excellent players on the offensive side they of the do. ball. Yeah. Um, and Marques Portela run a very very nice ship when they get when they get quick ball to work with. They can be very irresistible to watch. Um, yeah, no like, it's it's lovely, and you can overload the Japanese defenders. You can definitely like they're they're less mean than some of their tier one compatriots in terms of like. Just making you feel, make him feel every kind of bit of contact. They're le they're more technical than that. Um, and even in terms of how they defend, if they're going to get a turnover steal, they'll do it pretty cleanly. Um, so yeah, from Portugal's point of view, be brave, go after them, T take it to them because that's what Japan will be wanting. And it's also Portugal's best route. They they've done it all season. When they succeed, they do it by playing their game and making no bones about it just going for it when the attack's on attack yeah absolutely um, and they've got some they've got some quality loose forwards they're a little slight in the type 5 they are the type not, 5 dis not dissimilar to Japan but their backline of Marques Portela 
Um, they've got Appleton, the captain, and Lima in the centre are two lovely players. Yeah. And their secret weapons, Storty and um, uh, Marta on the two wings. Awesome. Um, really lovely players. They get them involved constantly on inside shoulders, off blindside wings, off open side wings. Yeah. They try to involve them as often as possible. Which they is dead tr- right. They try yeah. to do similar things to what Ireland did last week to Japan, which is kind of overload the inside with, with runners off each other in tight spaces. Yeah. And that's definitely a challenge for the Japanese defence. They play a quick brand. And Marques runs a really lovely offense when he's on his game, yeah. and I definitely think I'd much, like on the defensive end they might struggle in this game because Japan is going to play at a pace that they haven't had to defend. And perhaps a physicality ever. they're not used to. Yeah, no um, question. Despite, like, um, Japan aren't the most physical side, but they are a tier one yeah, side that are physical. No question. Yeah. I'm not suggesting that Portugal are going to win this game, no. but I am suggesting that Portugal should be excited about about showing off their skills yeah. to a side they admire. You yes, know? exactly. <laughs> this is going to be a good when spirits, you're meeting, sometimes fun Sometimes you don't want to meet your heroes, but in this instance, I think it's a pretty cool thing that they are. I yeah, mean, like, yeah. I, I, just, I love the fact that, that Japan are heading out there. It speaks to their credit. Same as when I was complimenting Scotland for heading out to Tbilisi and taking yeah, on yeah. Georgia. It's just, it's a good thing to give these kinds of sides kind of matches against a, a team that they not only admire and emulate but this will be a good kind of litmus test of where the yeah, bar is yeah. yeah to just be able to test where they stand when it when compared to a team that's similar to them that have already made the step up from from tier two to tier one yeah. after a lot of graft and a lot of hard work and um, um, yeah i mean obviously um the nuts and bolts of the game portugal are going to struggle they're going to have to do their best to hold up the set piece they're going to have to do their best to tackle a very annoyed kazuki himeno yes who was absolutely spitting fire after that ireland game yes. he was talking all kinds of we sad need to things be better than that well yeah. he was saying he was close to tears he felt ashamed all yeah. that sort of sort of dramatic he stuff a lovely pass for that try, uh, yeah he didn't yeah. play too badly they were just a little shocked but yeah. um they they were they were mo- very displeased with what happened in which, dublin which doesn't um, fare well for portugal in terms no. of the old backlash from an offensive mind no, because they're they're just a team that's thinking about themselves really and, yeah. and getting right and um that that starts with putting together a good performance in this game and blowing out Portugal and getting a bit of momentum back because yeah. any momentum that was in Japanese rugby was kind of sucked out of it last week. Truly, so truly. they're going to be determined to get that right. As much as this is a friendly match between two friendly nations, yes, and playing fun rugby, Japan are going to be determined to put an absolute show on and yeah. dominate. They'll every, probably be aggressive from the opening yeah. whistle and the intent and the focus that they can bring when they are dialed. Like they looked a little jet lag last week. They've been in Europe now. When Japan are dialed, they bring a, st- a scary level of focus and cohesion as far yeah. as a team organised and a team ethic is concerned uh, they will work super hard and they could outwork the Portuguese on balance that could be the, yeah. the kind of difference between the sides more so than physicality which is very often when Portugal don't stack up so well it could be just they could be shocked by just how hard these Japanese guys work as well and yeah. they could smother them and, too and they could be alive to the little inside balls yeah, like no yeah. European team has been all yes, year because it's they like do. oh that's that yeah. shape that we tell, try and work yeah. you know yeah. like yeah yeah. Um, yeah exactly I would expect Japan to try and dial in the defence and maybe that, some that, good plays from the likes of Lafayette who was frozen out last I'm week I'm sure um, I'm sure I'm, when Japan have the ball they'll they'll get to the edge they'll make things happen they'll find some lovely Himeno tries will be ball, um, barnstorming yeah, when he gets I, I in think contact they're certainly good for 30 35 points in this game Japan yeah. the question is what happens on the other side yes. of it to Portugal manage to put something in on the Japanese defence how good do they look have they stalled a little bit I mean I know they're getting some men back this week but last week against Canada wasn't all that convincing nope. it wasn't as good as they have been putting up 49 and the like against True. Russia um, so the or th- they're one against the Netherlands where they got a hat trick for one winger and four for the other. Yeah, you know, exactly. like just yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or was it five for the I think it was Story, five. Yeah, I think, I think it was five and three yeah, for the wingers. Right. It was crazy stuff. But yeah, no, they need to be dialing in that that offense and I'd like to see them score a bit. It, maybe if Japan are breathing fire they, they repel them and it could be a case of lovely middle third sexy rugby that ends up breaking down for the Portuguese which probably like the most possibly. likely scenario yeah. in fact because uh, tier two sides the difference is there you don't tend to notice it when they're looking very very good out in Russia or wherever else but there is a difference and there is a gulf so I'm hopeful that Portugal do manage to like even if they're repelled the first few times just string enough things together to make some very pretty sequences result in very good tries yeah, I think they will I think it'll be a fun one to watch from, from a neutral point of view I believe this uh, game is being ca- uh, being broadcast on YouTube by World Rugby excellent World Rugby um, been doing good work for that so listen yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you like offensive footy if you like it's going to be good, effectively on demand yeah, you don't the, even have to watch it live exactly right watch the, yeah, the, yeah. the joyous Japanese team that we all know and love 
attempting to be replicated by a pretty joyous Portuguese yeah, it's, team. There's it's no bad guys. Be a it's good, a good guys it's, v. Good it's guys. It's a good guys v. Good guys yeah. game, is right, and I expect it'll be it'll be a fun one. Um, the better the guys will probably win, which are, uh, I would say the Japan. Yeah, <laughs> just I'll, unbalanced. Would, They're a little further down and, the road. And Portugal looked a little stalled last week, but I'm I definitely I have we haven't seen Portugal not score tries before. I don't no. quite know what that looks like. I don't like. think they haven't I think yeah I'm pretty sure they've they've oh, scored yeah. a try every time this at season. least one. Yeah, yeah two two one. two in every game I think. Yeah. Even against Georgia. Yeah. Um so no I think I think they're good for at least a couple of tries in this game. Maybe yeah. even three. That'll be lovely. So I'll go for yeah. you know forty five nineteen Japan. I'll say Yeah I'll say forty 28 a Oof. bonus point for the ambitious audacious uh, yeah, that, would, that, would, that would annoy the Japanese it would that's too close maybe it's a pick Japan. one pick yeah. that gives them the <laughs> gives them the fourth and then very annoying from Japan yeah, yeah. but I no, I'm hoping that it'll be a very fun game and sure if you want a bit of a laugh slap it on YouTube and slap 1.5 speed on because it'll just be crazy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah no exciting contest really good advert for the game and one of like there's been a lot of flack about tier 1 tier 2 I think even if this is a blowout this is constructive for Portugal and for Japan I think this yeah. is an example of how it can be done right um, it, it's just yeah no thing, like things like Tonga like going to Twickenham obviously a little worse a little worse yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, there's a matter of degrees to all of this but this one is just going to be yeah, a and it's Portugal flight. being at home as well yeah. that's the big difference it as well. is. they're not travelling to Japan yeah. like that would be a worse thing it, exactly. it's Japan yeah. coming to Portugal to kind of show yeah, them what fill they a stadium be. and show Japan yeah. that's exactly how yeah. you do it so yeah no excited for, for this contest I, I'm I'm just I'm just yeah. eager to watch there's it. No, there's no there's no losers here. It's just None. a fun game of rugby. None at all. Um, but um, yeah, with that, we will move on. Yeah. And there's a couple of um, there's a few games that we have to just touch on that are going ahead this week. We're not going to go into depth on them. They're just sort of asides, really. Yeah. And um, the French Barbarians uh, are hosting Tonga. Um, in the in Stade Matmut in Lyon. Yeah. Um, that's also going on on Saturday. It's going to be refed by um, Nika Amashukeli, uh, the Georgian ref who had a decent game last week between uh, in, in the Ireland Japan game. Yeah. Um, that's uh, taking place. It's the Joe Takori led French Barbarians with some pretty decent players in there as well. Yeah. Chavancy in in this in the second row. They've Bellu at ten. Um, it's, it's a bit a, cruel again yeah Felix Lambie it's, it's the same like, sensation when I read that England team yeah. that, uh, that we're facing Tonga it's like you couldn't have picked England eh yeah. I mean, why, why, not? why not just pick like the brave seconds yeah the French barbarians can be anything yes um, that's true. But no it, cruelty to Tonga is the theme of November of November it seems um, and I, I, I have my sympathy I'm rooting Tonga. for Tonga I, I'm, I'm rooting for Tonga 100% I hope they grab a try this thing I hope <laughs> there's no Courtney Laws there to stuff that try um, and yeah. I hope they grab at least one try that's what I'm hopeful for Tonga but I am again cutting them all the slack in the world because fair play to them for fulfilling these given all of the COVID scenario and all of the challenges for them yep. um, um, Belgium are taking on Canada in a game that between... is a more interesting game um, I would say yeah well it's a game between two sides who well it, it, it's like tier two and a half isn't it because yeah. it's like they're they're neither side is, is going to be in the World nope. Cup they're both already out yes. Belgium having been relegated from the Rug- second they're division not, not even in Europe. Rugby Europe yeah. right now they have to fight to get back into Rugby Europe and Canada not in the World Cup so I don't know it remains to be seen because the, the European sides tend to be very good Belgium are used to that this could be a chance for Canada to get a win back in the column. Canada, Canada, Canada yeah. will arrest their their sliding momentum with a good win over Belgium. I, I would think. I would think so. And they have they have uh, put Peter Nelson to bed this week. I noticed with their team. So, um, finally, yeah. Spencer Jones continues. We were getting a few comments um, suggesting that uh, yeah, I'm sick of seeing him as yeah, well from well, a Canadian just, point of view. Just, just, just um, journeyman Irishman who it wasn't going anywhere. Yeah, this, no, this, they pick young Canadians and hope for the best. Yeah, 20, um, 21 year old exciting Canadian guy. Yeah. slap him at ten. Um, if he throws a few picks, so be it. Hopefully, it'll be all, better. Although, granted, um, Spencer Jones is a Kiwi, but he's young. He's young, and yeah, yeah Canadian by by. Uh, affiliation, this I guess. Yeah, um, yeah. But let's, yeah, I'm kind of hoping for Canada to just arrest the downward momentum full stop. But sure. it's a long journey back for them, and this is a match with no World Cup intrigue. So it's just two sides bubbling away in the background. It is, really. it is. But it is um, a colourful old clash that one that we don't see quite as often. And the other one then is uh, Uruguay traveling. Well, not traveling. They've been rooted in Italy for their whole thing. But uh, a little kind of dry run for next week. They are facing Italy A this yep. week in Padova um, Sunday 14th of November again um, Mike Adamson of Scotland is going to be the man, in the whist- the man with the whistle your favourite ref yeah. um, Adam Jones and Adam Leal uh, are going to be on the sideline with Marius Yonker 
in the TMO. Yeah. Jeez, it's yeah. a young, That's a, a younger Adamson combo game for them to be taken. That's true. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. And Italy. A... Interestingly, Bram Stain uh, dropped from the Italian side and is going to be playing in this side. Playing in this uh, side. Interesting which is call. Like, hmm. I, I really rate Bram Stain, but he is just back and he came off the bench last week and now he's going to play for this team. Yeah, it's probably um, a slow progression. Tack. I, I think, think ultimately so. the future for Bram Stain is shifting to lock and getting one of those not so good locks out of the Italy team and getting more of those quite good back rows into the team makes a lot of sense to me yeah I think um, I would agree with that but maybe this is a good, good stepping man. stone is thing like his physicality will tell on the Uruguayans Uruguayans will have to deal with the likes of a Bram Stain yeah um, it's, a, it's a good game for Uruguay to have an advance of that Italy game just coming off that rough game against uh, Romania gives yeah. them a chance to kind of settle and uh, and hopefully you know put together a decent performance in Europe I mean they, they need to record a win on this continent they really do this they is really a good do. chance to do it Spain pushed this Italy A team all the way Uruguay yeah. should be optimistic mystic of doing the same I would, I would think so but yeah. uh Jeez, it could be it could be a humdinger that one to be honest it yeah, could go fun, any old fun way game, probably. Um, yeah um, for sure but uh, those are three other games that are going on this weekend but they aren't the main show which is why they don't get their phone their own preview <laughs> um, but we will now move on to another decent game that's going on this weekend yeah we're going to look now at the Sunday games a couple of big big games going on on Sunday as well I mean we've had yes Ireland All Blacks and England Wallabies and Scotland Springboks but I don't think there's a bigger game this weekend <laughs> than the Lelos Dar- Georgia Dara's pet team the Lelos <laughs> travelling to France <laughs> play taking on Les Bleus in the Matmut uh, the Matmut Atlantique in Bordeaux yeah um, this is going to be going on uh, one uh, two p.m. local time kickoff on Sunday afternoon. Carl Dixon from the RFU taking the game. Well, actually, Sam- is that Damon Murphy? I, I think Carl oh. Dixon's on the sideline. My mistake. Sorry, yeah. Damon Murphy of Australia taking yeah. the game. Carl Dixon and Sam Grove White on the uh, AORs and Ben Whitehouse in as TMO. Um, yeah, this is um, a fun game. It's a it, it, interestingly, it, it was a Frenchman, um, uh, Jacques Aspecan, Aspe, Aspecian, um, who's an Armenian um, uh, fr- uh, Frenchman who um, uh, it brought the game to Georgia. That's right. And there's yeah, a yeah. huge history of of, of of the two nations. I'd like the, the 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 game in Georgia came from France initially. Yeah. And yet this fixture hasn't happened too often in yeah. history. Just one w- time once, have the two sides actually met in the Tesla World Cup. Yeah, your yeah. your man actually Jacques uh, has uh, has Pekian is still alive and he lives in Marseille. He was interviewed for French radio when they were to meet in that pool uh, in 2007, the same year that the Georgians had egg on our face by very nearly beating us in the same pool. Uh, they didn't fare quite so well in their final pool game against France where they lost, uh, I think it was 64-7, uh, that result. And that is the only time these two sides have met. For, for such a storied history of, of introducing the game and then obviously the massive uh, amount of game, to, well, the amount of players from Georgia, starting with props, but you think of what uh, Gorgodza was doing for years and now this this new crop, this new generation have loads of players starting in the top tours in France. It feels like it, it's well overdue that these two uh, should meet. And to be honest, really... I would prefer that it were in Tbilisi. Um, that ideally, I think if France were to travel out to Georgia, that would be a better spectacle, like you were saying. Yeah, in terms sure, of sure, sure. But, but this isn't actually far from home for a lot of these guys. They're, no. They are based in France. So this is just a, a good game that I'm excited to see. Um, and yeah, they, as far as their winning record, they may have never beaten the French, but they have played a French Barbarians team and a French Universities team yeah. in their past and won both of those. So Georgia do have those to dismiss as yeah, nothing really yeah, because no. they're nothing at all they've worked they their played, way they played the French once and lost 64-7 so you know uh, it's a long time ago it though. is a long time ago it was I know it's a, bit, it's, a bit, it's a better Georgian team than it was then True. Um, we're going to look at the game obviously from the point of view of both teams and we're going to start with uh, France we don't yet have the squads as it's a Sunday game unfortunately um, True. so France have a lot of ways they could go with their with their squad um, from that point of view, they've like they've a, they've a big they've a big old squad that they brought to the November internationals, and You'd the lads last week didn't rotation. didn't set the world alight. True, I would expect. I mean, it's hard to know what they'll go with, but I would expect maybe Kuyu to come in. There'll be they have plenty of different options that they can choose from, and a and a, and a de- um, plenty of different decent st- uh, starting fifteens they can do with. Yeah, and I don't park expect the two tens experiment. Yeah, um, I would like, think so. Considering you have a kicking fullback who's doing a lot of your ten heavy lifting anyway, it seems maybe having a hard runner there to partner Fiku or maybe rest Fiku and do something like they as you say loads of stocks it's not less re- really about the personnel for France if you're talking from France's point of view it's just can they 
like we, we know they're the better side on paper it's tier one v tier two at the end of the day but like can they exert control can they manage to uh be be assured in their performance and not be stymied by what is a very physical Georgian side. Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't I certainly wouldn't rest the, the front rows. I would I'd stick mm. with Cyril Bai and Mohamed Ouas and yeah. Julian Marchand for this one. I think this is gonna be a tough physical battle for the French. Yeah. Um they'd say they, I wouldn't dismiss Georgia by any stretch if you're if you're if you're a French fan. Well the French are um, familiar with the Georgian power because they are the ones who see them more readily. Yeah, indeed. The they they're like, so familiar yeah. with it they, they know of this as an asset in, yeah. in the club context that they bring them in um, to be an asset to their sides um, but as you say they have serious work on this French side there yeah. are a lot of hype for not much in the way of results so far yeah. if I'm well, being they honest. have some good results won off but no trophies yeah, results, in the results of plays but yeah exactly yeah. what it, they mm. finished second in, in, in tournaments routinely they fail to finish off games they, 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 they lose a series in they, Australia against a young side despite having the win in the last play of the opening test against, and Scott, against Scotland yeah. Brice Doulan didn't kick the ball off the pitch again last week uh, it wasn't a case of kicking not kicking the ball off the pitch but the Jolly Bear um, drop, uh, drop, 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 22 drop out into 7 points converted I mean they're a very good side they have wonderful skills but they make mistakes that no other team at the top of rugby are making right now it's and true. it's costing them they're like developing some consistency and solidity in their game is crucial if this side is going to take it to the no, next they're level they're developing the wrong kind of consistency consistency of errors yeah. um, which is, is is costing them they have improved their kicking game which I would imagine they will go to here just to, to you know, in the early goings, kind of turn the big Georgian pack and get them trotting backwards. You have, yeah. you have useful guys at fullback who can hoof it long, try and make the Georgians run up and down lengths of the pitch. And then off those chaos opportunities, they will be backing themselves to execute whoever's out wide. 2v2 two, two two is a decent matchup. 3v2 should be a try um, for, for a lot of these French ball runners out in the wide channels, I think. If they can create the kind of chaos with proactive kicking and proactive kind of play, that's what's what's been lacking from them is just, you know, the know-how and the know-when to strike. Sometimes it's very naive and too quick. Sometimes it's not kicking heavily enough and going from all kinds of areas. Um, sometimes then it's it's just kicking poorly and inviting your, ki- your team in. Um, I like the yeah the, the work ons is the main kind of thing from their point of view. Like you want to see them be aggressive at things like set piece, and um, you want to see them go after the Georgian scrum because even if they don't win it outright because the Georgian scrum is good, you don't want to see them be passive. You want to see them no, be aggressive. I think, I think um, their speed, and, their speed advantage, and their skill advantage, which they do undoubtedly have, yeah. will tell if and only if they match the Georgian physicality. Yeah. That is the crucial thing that they have to do from the off. They have to be strong in the tackle. They have to be strong in set piece. Um, they have pressure, to take... the pressure the line out because yeah. that's one of the first lear- the learnings of last Autumn Nations Cup is Georgia are a little too too casual about jumping to two sometimes and you got you got guys like Wokey and Macaloo in your squad mm. who are great at exactly that skill chuck them up there chuck them yeah. up there at two all the time and just force them to go to four or to you know yeah. like just make it that much dif- more difficult for them and no you'll, you'll get a few plays off yeah no question it's mm. definitely um, it, it's, it's it's definitely about the forward pack fronting up and allowing the backs to do things then yeah. and like I think this Georgian side are, are, are pretty strong yeah. I think they're as strong as tier two gets in many ways I don't think that the solution is to just go razzle dazzle from early no. doors from everywhere no. I think you have to be patient I think you can win the territory battle against them them, then you can edge out opportunities. We saw that that kind of, that dynamic play out in the Autumn Nations Cup last year, where teams just plotted their way around the field, put Georgia in a position from which they couldn't escape, yeah. and then slowly worked it from uh, slowly it's, worked it's it from similar there. Similar equation because um, actually Georgia will be without Aprasidza. There will be a Lobs and Dadza led uh, yeah. kind of kick kick heavy approach if they're to look to exit. It'll usually be him, sometimes Tato, but yeah, put pressure on them, force them to do it from you know their own territory, and and reap the rewards is definitely one of France's ins. Um. Yeah. Just for goodness' sake, don't be throwing them scores. <laughs> you know, no, things indeed. like that. Don't just throw them. Yeah. Cheap but ones. To play a play a um, patient game, but play a physical game. Stopping them on the line on the on on the on the defensive side is going to be big. It's a good test for Sean Edwards' defense. It's one that he's like he's he'll likely get his teeth into and sure. be, be confident yeah. in. Watch just to out do- for Cavessel adds a potential danger yeah, yeah, out there. Just shut him just, down. Just die. Um, just dialing in the strong blitz and making them uh, work hard and care about defending and enjoy defending Georgia. Are one of those teams that are like they're they're tough, um, but there's there are a team that rugby players and rugby forwards particularly respect and understand instantly. It's it's a physical challenge, an honest physical challenge. Yeah. 
um, that you have to front up to. And if you do, then you are in good stead to, to, to carry on and play well. But yeah, I, 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 we all love the razzle-dazzle. We all love Dupont. I'm not sure if it's going to be Kuyu coming in or Luku coming in or Dupont. We know what France can do when they get to the edge. They're beautiful attacking options. I do expect to see some of that in this game when they run the ball. They're an yeah. absolute joy. Certainly in um, the last quarter, you yeah, exactly. a chance for those guys. Exactly, but I, I do want to, I agree with you that I want to see them exercise a bit of control yeah. in the game. Discipline, in the, in the first based, In the first yeah. quarter, try and pin the Georgians back, play play smart, for one, yeah, for once win the territory battle, um, be competitive at set piece, not give anything up easy in the contact areas. And then slowly and surely just work take on their work, weapons yeah, one by one away. Yeah, work one stolen line out, one scrum penalty that goes their way, and slowly yeah. but surely you'll ed- edge away at what what is obviously a brittle confidence that Georgia Georgia will probably not be in in full confidence of going to France and being able to win. So the more of those little needles you can stick in, the closer it'll get to to breaking the game open for those kinds of game breakers. Exactly. Later on. Late, the late, the the longer the half goes, the more likely they are to strike. They're probably, like a professional sort of all black stuff performance where you're tight in the opening exchanges but winning them and wearing down and then that period between 30 and 40 minutes is when you strike and you you and you deploy um your class offensive weapons um which you have in such in such fine fettle in uh, whichever of the smorgasbord of options they go for yeah um i that their offensive play really writes itself but it is if they if they could come unstuck if they go from early doors against a physical georgian defense that is much improving if they start running it from everywhere if they think oh it's yeah. Is the one v two two? We just throw the ball like that's when they play themselves yeah, the in danger. Into, they play themselves in pressure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And um, being silly with that, or naive, or just reckless. And yeah, yeah Georgia would like, might the, might punish them. For there's that. there's a lot of talent in this French team. There's a lot of good coaching that's gone on in terms of their um their defense is really well drilled. Yeah. Um, they have a solid but unspectacular set piece to be honest, and a mm. solid but unspectacular kind of kicking game. True. And they have offensive instincts which come to them naturally, led by the wonderful Dupont and the wonderful Gail Fiku and all of these excellent uh, attacking players that they have. But I'm yet to be totally sold that Galtier has them like playing sensible top class rugby, and that's yeah. what they're going to need to get to get to the next yeah. level. I so think this a is good, a good chance good to step in stone in yeah, terms of that exert just, some control and dominance over a game that you should exert control yeah, because and dominance even, over. Even last week, they were they were all over the Pumas in a lot of ways, but they, they like they they were the better side. They were more threatening. They ultimately found tries. But they never quite controlled the game. They no. were always a bit frantic. They were always running into trouble um, on the defensive end. And they didn't often enough, especially from 10, um, just take control of the game, yeah. nudge it in behind, pin them back. Um, get your forward, get forward moving forward. Yeah, force get, force get them yeah. to exit, play on the front foot, and then use your weapon, deploy your weapons wisely. Yeah, proactively um, on your yeah. own terms. That That's the way for France. Yeah, no, it, it's, a, it's a work on week for them. They'll obviously see the result has to be a French win for, for it to be a success, but uh, there's more to it than that. It's the manner of it that is important. For Georgia, by contrast, um, performance is important here as well. They'll be forgiven for not getting the win, but if they can show some kind of grit and defiance and, and physicality uh, enough to upset what is a very well-touted, uh, much, you know, much be- like, uh, beloved French side who are gorgeous to watch, it would be nice to see a combative frustrating Georgian show with some of those back row forwards that we know are so aggressive and so dynamic getting plays off. Yeah, and- I mean, G- Georgia, like, this this particular um, campaign for Georgia is as well prepared for a match against a tier one side as they may have ever been. Yeah, because um, the boys are all starting yeah, in the well, top they, 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 and, they, yeah. they have more players starting in the top division of the French League. Also, it's not just top tours, they have pro deux players as well. They do. They have like a lot of players playing in France but playing first team footy in the top couturers they have more than they've ever had they also got the week off last week they somehow while, while Spanish players who were actually playing a game yeah. didn't manage to get last week off the Georgian players did they are for the most part healthy they did lose Abrasidza to injury in, in the build up to this shame. game but for yeah. the most part they're actually very healthy they have some some actual real quality to them and their team is better balanced than it's ever been true they have front they have some serious weapons in the front row Melikidza who I hope gets the nod at tight head is an absolute unit a proper specimen dynamic in the loose as well deceptively so but a fearsome scrummager yeah. I re- very I like, much in that Georgian traditional yeah, they, mold they, they, yeah, they, yeah. some of those young under 20s props are really, including Mela Kids are coming into their own now yeah. and can for sure I think mix it physically with the big boys and then obviously as you as you referenced the uh, the back row stocks are pretty awesome they I are. mean, that's they, where they're it's going to be some combination of Saganadza 
uh, Giorgadza, Jalagonia, and Becca Gorgadza, yeah. whoever you deploy Four, on the bench. Uh, yeah, the other the other on the bench. All, all good. All kind of top Couture starter level players. They're yeah. really good. Um, I'm yeah. a big fan of all of them. I have no fear um, of picking any combination of them with the mind of having another one, no, one of them on the bench. In, in particular, um, Saganadza, who will start at seven, no yeah. question in this game, been awesome. has been an absolute tiger in the top Coutures so far this year. He's gone from strength to strength. I think he's a really, really fine player. And I think that they are up to the physical match of the tier of the tier one sides. I yeah. don't think they're going to make it easy for France. I think they're going to make it relentlessly physical. And then the thing that Georgia have added since the Autumn Nations Cup last year is that they do they have changed their game. They have rounded their game a little more. They play uh, from, a from little bo- wider. They play no. They play mm. from both extremities of the pitch. They yeah. play a lot wider. They defend with a lot more energy. Their yeah. mall their mall they've, has forgot they've has found in Niniash Philly. So yes, speed out yep. wide, correct, um, which um, is very useful because they were a little uh, when they met the tier one sides yeah. in in the Nations Cup, they were a little short of that. Yeah, um, and and they have the rarest thing of a tier two um team, which is a starter in a top uh, in a top division uh, in Tato Absendadza at ten. Yeah, an out half who starts. Um, yeah, uh, it used it used to be Fiji had that, but not anymore. <laughs> well, now now he's with Perpignan, isn't he? But Vol- 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 yeah, it's yeah. a rare enough thing. Yeah, tier two ten starting in, and, in top flight and European T- rugby. Tato looked when he played earlier in the year for in, in rugby Europe um, much better than he ever has he's still young he's still developing his kicking acumen was excellent yeah. and he def- they definitely they where they used to be one dimensional they used to have the physicality but they didn't have any speed and they didn't have any kicking game yeah. and now they, they, have they a bit were of, also less proactive on the defensive yeah. side which was a great frustration because they would carry aggressively and win contacts mm. but they would soak contacts on the defensive yeah. end and you're looking at the same guy going like how? Whereas they have been proactive in being yeah. a bit more aggressive than that. In in Sharakadza and Kavesaladza in, in the centres, they have some some real quality. Sharakadza is a fine defender. He's, he's their captain and he's getting smarter and get and he's very physical as well. Um, they've actually had a bit of minutes. All of the Georgian based players have been playing for Black Lion, their their new professional franchise. That's an exciting development yeah. as well. Sharakadza is captaining that team, so they're as primed and ready to go as they've ever been. They have some really fine operators. They're yeah. up. They're going to be up to the physical pitch of the game, I think. And they also have the intangible, like you. You often cite it as a criticism of them that they 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 play with a bit too much deference um, to when they when they're up against. Well, yeah, it's just the contrast because in rugby Europe they're like the all conquering All Blacks. They just dominate and yeah. bully teams and they win games sometimes even tight games that they're in because they're a little bit inaccurate they pull it out of the fire because they just have that chip on their shoulder and that grit and then it flips 180 mm. when they meet a meet us a, a tier one side and they end up playing with a little too much reverence and a too much deference and not being that aggressive kind of proactive prickly team that you kind of know they can be and you know that their best avenue into a game against a tier one side is to lean on that dog uh, in their pack and try and be yeah. physical I'd just like to see them come out well, come out all guns blazing for the, at the I, start I anticipate it I yeah. do I think I just listening to them talk they've had more time in training now than they've ever had in the build up to a game like this they're mm. also playing for, for their coach Levan yeah, Maisashvili who um, the intent, had, yeah. had, him, had such a health scare with Covid for months and they were all living in limbo hoping he'd be okay he's back now he's coaching the team did a press the other day yeah, yeah they're going to be keen yeah. to go out and perform for him yeah. um, they know um, France very well like I I it I, obviously the the outcome of this game is going to depend depend on the performance of France in a lot of ways. They yeah. are like their ceiling is is remarkably high. They can they can beat the All Blacks if they put it together. The French, but I do expect Georgia to deliver the best version of themselves in this game. I, so. I think they're going to be I think they're going to be much improved in all areas. I yeah. hope that their line out holds up. I hope that their scrum holds up and they get a platform and get to kick, show hope that their what kicking they can causes do. some problems because yeah. they have in in Tato a very good kicker of a ball and they know tactically against France that it makes sense to kick them back there and demand that they exit yeah. because sometimes they'll throw you a seven pointer instead mm-hmm. and so you know just try and dial, bring the kicking boots with you both from the place kicking as well because they will have to probably contrite to kick trees against the, the Sean Edwards D for the most part yeah it's, it's um, going to it's going to be tough to, to break them down and score tries except if they can get out, out if they can if work they a can, strong maul or just um, convince them yeah. to give them seven points <laughs> give, give, have, give France the ball and say okay we're ready now throw us the ball um, that'd be nice you know if they yeah. can get one of those I do hope they the grab a couple of dialed tries. out moment exactly yeah. to get the crowd out of it and, and annoyed at them instead yeah. of supporting them yeah um, that's, that's I, a big in for Georgia yeah I, I don't 
don't know what's going to happen in this game. Obviously, we don't even have the, the, the squads yet, although we have an idea of, of, of what Georgia are going to pick. They have some some real quality in the team, they I do. think. And uh, I'm excited I'm excited about this Georgian team. I think they're better than they, they were in the World Cup. I think they're better than they have been. And I'm just I'm I'm really hoping that they put it all together because I think if they do, they're more competitive than people think. I think and, they could uh, be the next uh, tier two side to make the Japan like run. I think they yeah. should be by yeah. by all. I mean, it's things. it's still a small well, country. Suppose, it's still a small Fiji, country. Fiji could and, be. Yeah. You could remove the the kind of tier yeah. two banner from Fiji because player for player they're basically yeah. tier one as but, well. But, but yeah. both both them and Fiji suffer for being small countries um and not rich countries either yeah. um which yes, obviously true. is is just the, the massive the, impact the, na- yeah. the, nas- the natural um inhibitor of, of of that development but they make up for it by living and breeding the sport they do. It's and the georgians sport. do live yeah. and breed the yes. sport yeah. um and, and like their passion for the game is infectious yeah. it's one of the reasons why i've gravitated towards them and i'm I th- i'm excited about this particular iteration i think levan mysashvili is a smart head. I like a lot of people were skeptical when he took yeah. over, including myself. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's done a great job so far. Tony Brown's brother and on the, yeah, on yeah. the strike moves now. Exactly. Was... I just think they're gonna. I, I. I mean, it might not happen in this game, but I think long term they're on the move. And yeah. uh, I'm, I watch out whoever has them in the World Cup. Um, yeah, to, in twenty twenty three, it's definitely yeah. a physical game that can cost you. If not the if not the result, a few men could be falling yeah, to those Georgian knows, contacts. Before, before long, it might start being the results. Maybe yeah. that's me being naive, but I look at this squad. I think. I think it has some serious weapons it to does. it. It does. Um, that being said, I do expect France to, to, to win this game, but I'm going to say that Georgia do get some plays off, and it is that frustrating France that we know so well, who who dial it in enough to win the game, but not enough to convince you that they're going to win the tournament that's going Yeah, on. yeah. Um, that's, yeah, you're probably right that's on that. what I'm seeing. Ah, yeah, but probably towards the tail end, just the... Um, the speed of play that France can bring is, is another level. They yeah. can pick Dupont. Dupont is a, an absolute nightmare for any defence, let alone a tier two defence. They have so um, many good halfbacks that they could pick any one of them and move play a very yeah. good Although game. Although Dupont in particular oh, is special yes. for what he does around class. the rock. Yeah, and um, the way he was clearing those very aggressive breakdowns last week was mighty impressive. Yeah, even. and just um, finding seams ultimately. No, so I, you know, I, 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 pre- I, I get frustrated with the French because they haven't kicked on enough, but I do appreciate the relentless offensive talent that they have yeah. and their capacity to grab tries is as good as any team in the world so. and so I do anticipate them grabbing a fair few in this game yeah um so I would I'd probably a five try to, to to two ultimately maybe but I think Georgia to, to, to make it interesting at least in the first half and, yeah. and maybe even beyond I would I would, um, I would second that yeah I think that's probably about right maybe even less than five tries if they could hold them to four tries or three that would be lovely yeah, yeah. frustrate the French that's got to be a good plan let's go but, uh, who let's you go. got in this one let us know down in the comments below um, but yes we will move on for there is other intrigue on the Sunday as well more tier one tier two in theory although when you say tier two and talk about Fiji I like I cock a skeptical eye because the same skeptical <laughs> eye that I cock when someone says tier one Italy like, I'm just yeah. like is it really though like this <laughs> Fiji team are bloody good like they really are and uh, yes they will be heading to the Prince Pali Stadium in Cardiff to take on Wales uh, this Sunday kick off 3.15 we have Nick Berry uh, of Australia with the uh, with the whistle for this one. Ben O'Keefe of New Zealand and Gianluca Gnecki, Necki, I believe, from France, uh, and Stuart Terhage or Ter- Terhage, uh, of of England. Quite a colourful multinational <laughs> um, uh, TMO and, and referee. Colourful bunch of names, yes. Uh, but uh, TV coverage again will be on Amazon Prime uh, for 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 this game. But uh, yeah, in their most recent encounter, Wales beat uh, beat Fiji twenty nine seventeen in that was in the pool match in Rugby World Cup twenty nineteen. Yeah, it was um, a great game too. It was a fantastic yeah. game. We all remember them dumping Fiji or dumping Wales unceremoniously out of the uh, 07 World yeah, Cup. Yeah, it was one of the great Rugby World Cup games of all time. This and is true. It was a brilliant game from Fiji, who were excellent that year. And um, you know it was egg on face for Wales, but actually Wales had some incredible moments in that game as well. There's some Shane Williams tries that yeah. were out of this world. It's true. Um, that yeah. was just one of the great games of all time. Attacking footy from yeah, both. Both, uh, yeah, both yeah. both of these sides come from a, from an attacking place. They do. Um, it's in they their do. soul. Offensive is. rugby is yeah. in their soul. Yeah. Um, so there's very little likelihood that this is an ugly game. Um, even in the rain, this is probably a pretty enough game yeah. as, as as rainy games go. Uh, the overall record, Wales and Fiji, they've played each other on twelve occasions with. Uh, Wales winning 10 and Fiji winning just that one match uh, there's been one draw between the two sides as well so a uh, pretty pretty decent record that yeah, they've, they've pulled off a was. couple of results but including yeah. that that famous one I'm yeah. um, just looking at it from the point of view of the hosts starting off with Wales yeah. obviously fresh from that showing against the, the Springboks last week 
they are winless since round four of the Six Nations right. now, um, and they they desperately do need to fix that. They here. do. They need to arrest some kind of momentum. Like a loss here is is very concerning for them. Although you can like, it's not beyond them as you've said before to go winless in autumn and then rock up to the Six Nations as defending champions and fourth seeds. Yeah, <laughs> somehow and, st- and yeah, win still win the thing. Yeah, yeah. Again. Um, um, they have picked their side Wales mercifully mm. um, so we do have a bit to work with there um, they've gone with Reese Carey Ryan Elias Thomas Francis Will Rowlands Adam Beard Ellis Jenkins Thomas Young and Tane Basham make up a very dynamic That's back very, row very um, mobile yes um, Wayne right out of there on this occasion I'm moving Basham to 8 um, but it is a very good back row they've gone with Kieran Hardy at 9 tempo tempo good tempo yeah. uh, Dan Bigger keeps his jersey at 10 of course Johnny Williams at 12 Josh Adams in a 13 in the midfield well I'd, um, I'd say it's crazy except they ba- he was basically playing there last week he kept coming off his wing get, for work gets um, him involved um, does. Um, Lewis Reed Samet then on one wing and interestingly Alex, Alex Cuthbert back in the side on the back, other wing back from um, outer space to, yeah. to take up his place in the wing that is harsh on Johnny McNichol yeah, he's, Liam Williams at full back as well yeah, yeah. Um, but McNichol is out of the side I believe out of the he's not even on the yeah. bench which is crazy because um, he was actually playing well in both the, of those games even in the all black game yeah, that they, they got stuffed in he played uh, well um, uh, uh, Chinzua as well the Exeter Chiefs um, uh, lock co- um, is, is set to make his debut as well and he's highly touted yeah. um, and then they've also got Thomas Williams Callum Sheedy and Nick Tompkins to bring in good impact. Um, which is definitely good impact as well yeah, um, yeah it's a, it's a, it's an exciting Welsh team they're going to have to play a good game against this Fijian team they're going to have to expect a similar kind of defensive effort to what Fiji showed against the All Blacks in yeah. July and yeah. not the and one that rocked show, up to Madrid last this week this is it yeah. um, and the one that they showed in, in Paris in, in years gone by when that game that they won as well like they've been built on defence much more than they have been for the last few years so yeah. there's no real there's no real excuse for Wales for getting that fact or overlooking that fact they've got to expect a tenacious line speed that is going to be aggressive and going to try and shut them down yeah. so if they want to access wide channels which they do looking at where Josh Adams is and looking what they've picked uh, yeah they're going to have to be accurate and they're going to yeah. have to be I, I sharp do, I do like Josh Adams at 13 I like getting him involved he's a strong carrier he's an absolute handful and, True. Um, and he has is, a decent pass yeah, it, which it, is it, necessary it should role. suck in the inside defence of, of, of the Fijians Wales need to, to redial their offence their do. offence is what makes them and they're one try in the last two games now yeah. granted they're against the two best defences in the world they should feel the love of, of being able to breathe a little bit True. Um, but like they were very kick heavy in the last few weeks they were very you know uh, they, they kicked their threes it was kind of old school Gatlin style Wales it was more so um, than Pivac's new so, school exactly yeah. right that uh, you want to see them try and find the, find the wide channels get to the edge of the Fijians catch them a little unstructured they are without their coach at the moment the yeah. Fijians they're a little hodgepodge put together not many training sessions you want to test the extra- test them on the extremities you want to get your quick men on the ball running off one another and yeah. let your offensive instincts play and you've got to strike off set piece it's what they did so well in the Six Nations yeah. Um, trying to hunt, trying to get to the 13 channel off the set piece and I think that there's a reason why they put Josh Allens in there is because it wasn't working without that speed at 13 yeah. and where well, they had north it's, it's, there's precedent because when it was going so well in the Six Nations it was north in a 13 and <laughs> that was you know yeah and he, was, he wasn't necessarily playing the same kind of game that Adams would be playing no. but Adams Adams is a handful both in the carry game and getting to getting to your outside shoulder and getting to the edge True. Wales do need to be an offensive team Their Fijian defence is good it's a particularly robust in the inside yeah. but if you work them if you move them from one side of the pitch to the other then you are going to find them fatigue. disjointed yes, yeah, yeah. For sure. you have some excellent loose forwards as well who can pick good lines and really participate yeah. in the offence and um, guys like Beard who can contribute if you're doing, yes, if you're doing yeah, yeah. setups of pods out in that wide channels though that's the kind of guy yeah, you want to operate how, how they manage to access things how, how they manage to basically set up set piece strike moves off the multi-phase was by running deceptive little screens with Beard as the distributor on the edge yeah. on, the, on that 13 on that outside shoulder and just yeah, making making, making a read off the Fijians, yeah, yeah. but yeah, they need to be like they need 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 to get Louis Rees Samet back on the board and yeah, back in the back, back smiling, ha- back happy. smiling again. Yeah, yeah I've watched him the last few weeks, including the Gloucester game when when Wales were busy getting hosed by the All Blacks yeah. and he wasn't involved. And he just hasn't had the same plucky swagger, the little yeah. smirk of a, a winger who knows even during the anthems that the ball is going to sit up for him and he's going to grab yeah. a try. That like it, it's a tough thing to put your finger on, but like he definitely had it last season. 
doesn't seem to no, have it this season. Yeah, they are exactly. playing him in as we, much. We've, we've, um, see, we've seen this happen with wingers loads of times. Yeah. One big season and then a drop off. Yeah. And Reece Samet doesn't need that, obviously. No. He needs to kick on. And as much as we joke about, you know, Wales slip a few games, come in as underdogs and win the Six Nations again, they are actually in danger of falling away here, yeah. falling away from the PVAC identity, falling away from being the clinical offence they need to be. Yeah. And as much as we say, oh, they'll rock up as underdogs and win. The other Six Nations sides are only getting better. That's true. Um, England, That's true. England are not going to be as bad as they were last year and next year. Ireland are going to be better again. France are, are likely going to be more mature. Scotland are probably going to be better again. Wales are going to have a much tougher time of it if they don't improve and if they don't refine what made them so special, which was just that capacity to take tries. And it was on everybody. Like Bigger obviously has that vision as well, but Kieran Hardy, whoever was in there, whether it was a grubber kick that was needed, whether it was an inside carry set and go to catch an English yeah, pack it was, off, they, they scored all kinds of tries. Yeah. just by everybody on the pitch Heads being up. dialed into where's the try on this play. Yeah, and as good a defense as Fiji are, they're physical on the inside. Wales should fancy getting to the outside, and they need to be a team that is not is not about building a score through three pointers, but rather about being relentlessly efficient when they get into the red zone that's what made them special that's what they got to go back to yeah I'd agree with um, all of that and this is a good game a good litmus test for that because Fiji are a very competent team as, as competent as you will ever get in a tier 2 uh, team they are the best tier 2 team to, to, uh, I, would, I would argue if, yeah Japan uh, officially is a tier 1 team Japan now, is yeah. officially a tier 1 team now and you know Italy aren't technically like if they play Italy next week I don't know you know, oh yeah they'd be favourites they're, they're ranked ahead of Italy, Italy. Yeah, yeah exactly so it's a, it's a bit the tier 1 tier 2 divide is a bit dubious when you talk about Fiji because yeah as, as we've said with Fiji from their point of view they, they, they have so much quality player for player like we were talking about Georgia and all their players in the top couture's ditto that for Fiji and not just the top couture like there, there are Fijians in the URC there are Fijians in the Premiership there are Fijians in Super Rugby there are Fijians everywhere that rugby is played MLR um, like they're always always a useful asset in a team and more often than not they're the star player talisman in the team like you look at what Villa Mata was doing for Edinburgh a few years yeah. ago and it's like they, they are box office to a man and they like have just so much yeah, they quality have ex- that, ex- that they ex- can never be written ex- off as a comp- explosive game breaking potential yeah. apart across the pick pitch in particular you got to look at um, like Wynicolo is a serious talent on the wing but it's like Josh Tuisova who oh, I would assume is going to be into the starting team absolutely yeah. sat down uh, a Welsh defender for a try that he scored at the World Cup yeah. he's a bundle of potential who they're going to want to get involved often and always yeah. it's a shame they don't have the likes of Semi Radra but they do have Vola Vola to move them around the pitch yeah. they're a smart team they're well structured these days They granted last week they, they rocked up so yeah, far, and, so far from the pitch of the game, yeah, it was, and it they was, cannot. It was cannot it was ridiculous early that. doors. Yeah. Like they were soaking tackles against the Spaniards, who they were much bigger and stronger than, yeah. and then just giving up soft tries. Yeah, like that kind crazy of crazy dialed out beach rugby. That yeah, well, it's kind of on. It, they obviously coaches and watching Vern Cotters yeah. at home, and they have this kind of hodgepodge of Northern Hemisphere coaches who have to get through to them yeah. that they need to Which work. Which is, is very often tough. Here. We've, yeah, we've yeah. seen that fall flat on the Fijians, but the work rate from this squad should still be such that. That you need to rock up to Cardiff. Cardiff, uh, at the pitch of the battle, you're yeah. gonna do your your kibi kibi, and you're gonna arrive at a at a fever pitch, and you have to be ready for that opening whistle, opening play. Let's go, because they didn't have that last week in Spain. It took them to, well into the second half before they found their groove, and it's already over if that's the case yeah. this week. They need to be aggressive. They need to. Things they realize that this is a Welsh side, you know, not with momentum at the moment. In fact, a little shy of confidence, looking to get it back. You bring that pressure blitz that they've been yep. bringing they bring the pressure blitz that they brought to that all black game yep. and like they demanded that the all blacks play what you branded cheat code rugby by just executing yep. crazy passes to get to the outside of them if they can bring that ferocity and intent this Wales side yeah. aren't that all black the, the, side. The, the, they are a bit more brittle in the confidence thing. It's a new look back line with Josh Adams in the midfield. It could come unstuck if they get in their face. Yeah, exactly. Um, the line the line speed and physical tackling that they brought in the, in those July games against the All Blacks was awesome. It yeah. was really, really impressive. And we saw them get completely unstick France with a similar kind of performance. Yeah. Um when they when they are dialed into the match and at the pitch of the match and bring energy and physicality off the line, they are very, very difficult to break For down. Any team to yeah, their their yeah. de- their defense is so understated, and then they're just wonderfully, um, wonderfully skilled and brilliant yeah. and instinctive when it comes to the chaos ball sure. opportunities. Absolutely. And on the multi phase, you know, Wales they're a very good defensive side. They're going to be attacking the pill relentlessly because the Fijians 
need to mind the ball in contact a little bit. You know, you're going to have your Ellis Jenkins. Yeah. And those Roof those, will be open in Cardiff, I believe, as a COVID measure, which we saw last week. It could be yeah, a wet weather game as well. It, that's um, where it's yeah. on Ben Volavola and Lamani to um to kick them yeah, yeah to kick good yeah areas. to just yeah exactly right to yeah. put Wales under pressure to play in the right parts of the field to not overextend really a bit like the All Blacks you don't want to be necessarily going uh, 90 on the multi-phase trying to break down a really tough defence no. from midfield you want to be winning the territory battle getting after Wales on the defensive end forcing mistakes and then off turnovers or off poor Welsh kicks striking using your yeah. using your offensive talent to strike and grab tries and we know they can do that you definitely can yeah yeah, yeah. Um, front up physically uh, try and be tidy at set piece as well because that was another thing that was a little loose last week at the beginning and yeah. then tightened up as the game went on like they have it in them they've improved as a yeah. scrum and a line out unit they've started getting mauls off in the last few seasons in terms of the aggressive I'll tell you what on, on the evidence of recent weeks there's no reason why Ravi shouldn't uh, fancy having a cut at Thomas Francis indeed um, this is what I'm saying like yeah. Wales are, are far from the most fearsome uh, scrum you will meet at tier 1 level and in fact like they're shorn of a few men and they, they actually look a little vulnerable in that area if Fiji will take parity if they can if they can manage parity at scrum time and at line out time if they can secure their own ball that's mission accomplished but you know the way to do that is by having a cut go yeah. for it you might might yield a penalty once or once in a while and an in from which to attack um, yeah, bring the game to them. Be be aggressive in everything that you do. Be be deliberate and and forceful in everything that you do. Don't be wishy washy. It's such a different. It's such a night and day difference when you see a Fiji team rock up with aggression and with a target on this game. You saw what happened in in Paris a few years ago. You can see it happening over. I'm sure it's going to happen more and more because the players are just that good. But the difference, the contrast between that game and then the game that they rock up to Spain in and in their fresh from the beach mode and it's just completely yeah, dialed indeed. out we, we know which Fiji needs to arrive to this one to have, for them to make it a game at least and then possibly get a result yeah um, um, who knows um, big game for Adam Beard as well on the Welsh end I think yeah, um, I, with the absence a, of Alan Wayne he's a lion that. now and, and I haven't I haven't been bowled over by his performances I'll put it that way in, yeah. in recent weeks he was very good on the Lions tour he was he's very good in the Six, Six Nations, Nations. Yeah. Early, now there's no Alan Wynne Jones there's no Ken Owens there's no Justin Tipperick there's no Falatau he really is the leader of this pack. He's the senior man, and yes. he has to step up. He has to get after the Fijians at the line-out. He has to be a linchpin in the offence. He has to be physical on the inside. He has to be defending um, their attempt at malls very yeah. dexterously with yeah, his Yeah, indeed. Like, yeah, it yeah. hasn't been him making plays. It's been the back rowers making plays True. in these opening weeks, and uh, you, uh, he's a playmaking kind of second row, so I would love to see him get involved yeah, and get a bit know. of confidence back too. Yeah, I'd agree with that. With all that said, how do you see it going? Um, yeah, I think I think Wales. Um, yeah, I, think I wasn't so. overly impressed by Fiji. I just don't think without Vern Cotter there, I just think they are up against it a little bit yeah. in terms of actually same, delivering same, what same, they can deliver. Yeah, same bit um, of slack that you cut Tonga all the, yeah. on a higher level is just that it is with with COVID yeah. and all this. It's tough uh, for them to even fulfill these fixtures. Yeah. Um, and and I must say, I was impressed with Wales last week. I was yeah. impressed with their response to that All Black game. They were unlucky not to get the win. It was frustrating. They they listened. They had they scheduled the game against the All Blacks without any of their English based players and then they followed it up with a match against the world champions they're not as bad as all that they really did hustle against the box last week they could have won that game they just need to add a, f- add a few tries to what they're doing mm-hmm. play with a bit more offence try and be clinical and I think they'll be back on the horse and, and, and good for a win in this one yeah I would agree with that uh, providing the Stewarts have their game face on and, and prevent any any 16 man 16th man getting in to make <laughs> yeah. a tackle 16th um, Fijian man yeah. from Wales from Wales yeah. he's the Welsh Fijian coming in to stuff all the time talk about banning pints now in, in the Millennium Stadium ah no it wasn't pints that did that it was that fella well, it, was um, that, it was pints to him they, they need to hold their liquor better yeah, that's true <laughs> certainly he does but uh, yeah no I would agree with that I think I'm going to say that Wales do get back on the horse, find their groove a little bit and probably won't run in a couple of nice tries here to make it a, a difference of about 14 points. Yeah, okay. But uh, I'd say Fiji get some stuff off as well because Wales are far from infallible at the moment no, and I I'm, hope that Fiji I'm, rock up to the pitch. Fiji usually get some stuff off yeah. no matter what the circumstance. True. They're, yeah. a great, they're a great team for um, just next play. Yeah, like they'll that's find, it. Like it, even no, if you, things are going wrong, they'll still find a class. This is try. it. Yeah, if yeah. they're fifty nil down, they'll find a class coast yeah, yeah. to coast try because they'll just be like, "Where's the try? There's the try." Yeah, yeah. No, they are like it's very impossible to dislike Fiji, and they are also a, a common denominator in great games of rugby. Every single yeah. one of their games in the World Cup in the pool match was were, yeah. was a banger. And uh, to be honest, any time they take the field, they're just box office. It was the same. It was the shame of the Autumn Nations Cup that they missed out on all that the, their games. 
uh, th- through that as well they weren't able to, to play but then when they finally did take the field they were a box office as well so yeah I'm hoping for a bit of razzle dazzle a good bit of Sunday entertainment and I think that the hosts Wales will get back in the win column uh, after this one yeah I couldn't agree more mm. um, listen we're going to move on though on that note and uh, take a look now park the Autumn Nation series and move on to matters of potentially more consequence um, there are Rugby World Cup qualifiers going ahead in the Rugby Europe Championship of 2021. I think it is finally wrapping up this, this weekend, is, is it not? Yeah, this is the um, final two fixtures that are out. Is that is that definitely right, or does Spain still have to play the Netherlands? I think they might. Maybe Spain. Um, <laughs> maybe Spain. Yeah, Spain, yeah, Spain, Spain, Spain okay. have to play the Netherlands, so it's not quite wrapping up, but we're getting close to wrapping up the Rugby Europe Championship, yeah. which has been ongoing for some, some amount of time. That's true. Um, and we have, first of all, the high-flying Oaks, the Romanians, hosting the Netherlands at the Arcol de Triomphe in Bucharest. Um, that's going to be Saturday, 13th of November, um, tomorrow, obviously. Um, kick-off of 5.30pm uh, local. That's 3.30 in uh, our time. That's right. In the UK and Ireland. And, um, yeah, obviously... Um, uh, a very exciting and um, very exciting uh, situation for Romania now they've, they've managed they've, to arrest momentum yeah. for, it's really pretty much starting with that uh, that showing against Argentina at the very start of summer um, I mean uh, like obviously during that rug this, this tournament as well they've managed to dig it out of the fire that great win against Portugal in Portugal still stands to their credit and could yeah. be invaluable when the dust settles after last season and, and whoever's on top but you're right in saying they're in a, in a great spot after a really strong showing against a high-flying Uruguay side, they will likely have way too much for this Netherlands side this weekend. That they will be looking to rack up a bonus point to take them up into... Like, yeah, a, bon- into- a bonus point. They're, they're currently on nine points. They actually currently, after Russia's win over the Netherlands last week, Romania find themselves in fourth. Yeah. However, a win here with a bonus point would put them into second ahead of, mm. ahead of Portugal. Well, they'd be level on points with Portugal going into the all-important next season. Yeah. Um, likewise, Russia obviously could um, join them there on 14 points. It could be a three-way tie going into next season. It's it's very scrappy, so it is yes, in, this, in this race for the second uh, second Europe spot. Europe 2, and that golden ticket to the World Cup is what all of these sides have in mind. Yep. And, and Andy Robinson has been doing a great job with Romania so yes. far. He's been, like, I took them in at such a low ebb, and there's still been some some drama things about like it is going to take place in the Arcle de Triumph, which is their great new stadium. But uh, yeah, they they had to fight off their own government trying to annex it <laughs> for football right. purposes earlier in the season. And um, they've had all kinds of pushback in terms of that. They've had yeah, they had to host. I think it, it, was it uh, was it that Argentina game that they couldn't play there. Yes, they hosted yeah, them yeah. in some other place where the dressing room facilities weren't great as well and all that. Like it's. Yeah, it's it seems like a, a it's, not, it's not it's not been without adversity. Hundred percent. Quietly in the background, they've good been work putting, has been they've doing. They've been doing done. some excellent work. Yeah. They started off being a very physical team with a very good mall who could be caught for speed a little bit, but were solid defensively yeah. and tough to break down. They'd kick and, their threes diligently and, and never be completely buried in a game. Correct. And, yeah, and they were always tough. They were always tough to beat, and they had an ele- an ele- a respectable eleven point defeat to Georgia. Um, and they beat. They managed to see off Portugal in Portugal. They saw off Spain at home as well. They opened the season with a rough one, losing to Russia, where they were frustrated for the whole game. They were, and they were, Russia they were an ill disciplined mess in that yeah. game, and Russia um, punished them for it. Um, but they have rebounded really well, yeah. and it all culminated last week with just a very impressive win over Romania, where um, they married over the, Uruguay. Oh, oh sorry, that. over Uruguay, I should say, is right. Yeah. Um, uh, but uh, they married their big forward pack and their uh, tenacious defense with a really sharp looking offense and their wingers their their back three stocks really really good Malinte has been an absolute game changer from yeah. 15 for them but he also have retired uh, Vlaiku who was there yeah. they're all kicking centre for, for many a yeah, year well, but he's taken the reins and he has more speed the thing and, about Vlaiku yeah. was he was all kicking he yes. was like an NFL kicker he really was, he, yeah, was, yeah, and he was didn't do well there and the just field. meant there was yeah. no speed in the back yeah. line the knock on effect was that they weren't quick yeah. um, whereas, whereas they've, they've added um, they first of all have on the wings in Dumitru and Onutu genuine pace mm-hmm. really good pace who can take tries and then Vio Vasa, who uh, last week lit it up against Uruguay, very very 13. exciting player from thirteen, yeah. can just change games. Love to um, see it. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. it's a strong looking side, and I think they're in this in the context of this game against the Dutch, 
they are going to like the, when you look oh, at it's the, bonus point yeah when you looked at the yeah. tackling that the Dutch were delivering last week um, at home against the Russians you have to think that the Romanians are going to be confident about further developing that offence getting yeah. to the edge getting Vyavasa on the ball one on one through hit, contacts yeah, just hitting lines yeah. hard will really, be sufficient yeah, here if you can get, dial it in get out like as the game progresses and you start to grow into the physicality get the hands free get the offloads going amongst the forwards would be lovely to see before striking out with that pace that you found out why but they are a nice balanced team at the minute and this is a game that bonus point is is all that they'll be have it they'll have it written on their head i don't think kicking threes makes any sense i think that shootout it's it's an all-weather pitch in amsterdam with massive in goal areas and they're this is miss no this is the oh sorry sorry this yeah. is the arc of triumph but uh no they're at home they're, by the flip side they're at home yeah. against the netherlands side that couldn't they the netherlands side do occasionally look good with ball in hand but the, the sheer mm. lack of tackling out of them particularly yeah, against the russian was, side that is yeah. slower than this romania side you've got to be confident if you're the Oaks you've got to go after it from minute one yeah. much like an all black side yeah, and, and, and go just, to, just go, go, to, go after go to the, it go to the corner um, use your mall use yeah. your physicality get this win signed sealed and delivered and ideally um, in the first quarter yeah. uh, first half yeah, that's extent, not, yeah. not make a dram half no. after, of us, after what has been a, a pretty excellent season it really has. since that defeat to, to Russia they've gone from strength to strength they pushed Argentina all the way yeah. they look competent they are my front runners as much as I love this Portugal side they are my front runners for that European Europe 2 spot they look the, they do the have most pedigree they, they have precedent side. and pedigree in the rugby yeah. game but it's going to be a, a humdinger when they face Portugal in this exact stadium next year yeah, as yeah. well and uh, yeah like their, their, their mission statement is secure second and nothing other than a bonus point win against the Netherlands which is par for all of these teams in ter- if you want to t- look at it that way like if you if you don't get a bonus point you're dropping a point on the field nope. um, nobody hasn't got one yet yeah, unfortunately indeed. for the Dutch from, from their point of view obviously they're not going to pee at the World Cup no the th- those fanciful um, dreams are now well and truly <laughs> quashed what they're fighting for is to just pit past Spain and not have to be in that playoff against Belgium at the end of the year yeah and um, which, to be honest, is still a far cry from from likely. It, it involves picking up things like bonus points. It involves being a bit more competitive and a bit more savvy yeah, well, than they are. Listen, they were playing a division below up yeah, until this year. It's true. They're a little bit shocked by the increase in standard. That happens. Nevertheless, they have some good talent coming through. They have a, a, a decent bunch of uh, back row stocks, including some pro deux players, which yeah. is exciting. Yeah. Um, they just need to, on the edge, dial in the tackling a little bit more adjust accordingly to the pace of the game and they, they should be looking to improve as these games go on last week by any standard was a disappointment on defensive yeah. end I don't care who you are you just it was it wasn't good enough on the def, on the def, on the defensive side of the ball they want to dial that in a bit more they want to bring some line speed and bring some tackling yeah. and surely if you're, if you're the coach yeah if you're if yeah. you're the coaching staff that's all you're saying bring some line speed and make your tackles and yeah. make it difficult for them if you got to get they, angry get angry yeah. but you know yeah, like, exactly. don't be so passive and so fun to play against for our opponents that's it's got to be mission one. No if you're question. a coach, you're very frustrated watching just some sometimes they're gifting them like the charge down one you were citing where it's like yeah. our own massive in goals coming back to haunt us yeah, like yeah. yeah don't be quite so accommodating to play get a little bit of dog a little bit of grit in there try yeah. and slow up the ball try and make stick tackles and yeah. then when they have the ball they can actually move it reasonably well yeah um, try and yeah. get it to the edge try yeah. and get your Geordie hops on the ball one on one maybe he's got some pace he's got a chance to, to make some things happen they're mm. probably going to be outmatched in this game I'd but they need so. to perform as, as as well as they can and yeah. just they have had look a, to improve their best quality is that they keep grabbing tries even when they're yeah. being blown out and that, that is something they should cherish and should keep keep attacking keep trying to score tries eventually that comes good that is a more proven path from tier 2 to tier 1 than uh, than anything else because it's only yeah. really Japan who have done it and they've done it with offence like I've yet the, the USA are an example of a tier 2 side that are trying to lean on physicality and power and it's like whenever they meet a tier one side it's night and day these are as you were kind of branding them kind of a tier two and a half tier tier yeah. two but between tier two and three and they're looking to make the step up to tier one if they can dial in attacking footy and try and trying to score yeah. tries that's the right way to do it but it's probably at least a week too soon if not yeah, a year or two they're, they're, they're um, all away from tier one i'll tell you that yeah, but uh, no yeah, I, in teams in terms I, of tier two I, yeah. I like the uh, i like i like the oaks in this by a bonus point um i don't think uh, the actual result matters beyond that i know it does at least four the, tries the, and the, move um, on that's exactly what we're yeah. looking at here um i'd expect it from them i think yeah romania are in a good place right now and uh yeah i expect them to win comfortably here no question um we're gonna move on though now to a huge match this, huge this one is a bit a bit match. tougher to call this one is um, definitely in the balance and both sides with 
like backs to their wall nearly like Russia less so than Spain because they're away from home and they've already recorded some points but Spain very much yeah, backs yeah. to the wall in the race oh for yeah this spot. is this is do or die um, for Spain it is Spain hosting Russia um, in the Rugby Europe Championship 2021 this is going to take place on Sunday 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 um, kick off quarter to one local time um uh, quarter to twelve, um, in uh, GMT, yeah. um, ref by Jason Besant, um, Tom Spurrier and Wayne Davis on the sideline, all Welsh refereeing team, um, this is a colossal game in the context of, of of the qualifiers, both sides will be up against it as much as Russia you might think can afford a loss with the way that Romania and Portugal are playing, I'm not sure that not they sure. can, yeah, no, they um, won't, certainly won't be won't be shooting for a loss, they want to no. want to win it. The, the no. current pool table looks Georgia ahead on 23, Portugal 14, Romania likely to join them on 14, currently on 9, but playing that game against the Netherlands, then Russia on 9 themselves, a win here obviously puts them near more or less dead level with the Portuguese yeah. and the Romanians. Um, and Spain lagging behind on two points from three games, but crucially with that game against the Netherlands to come. Yeah, um, so, so they can get as high as, with a win here, they can get as high as, as um, 11 points 11. with a bonus point win over the Dutch. Yeah. Um, and so obviously it's it's tight, it's interesting, but all these sides are still fighting. And what I will say from Spain's point of view is that they have had some positivity so far this November. They, they had that game against the... Um, against the Italy A side where they pushed them all away. They took that 13-12 uh, halftime lead against Fiji last yeah, week. That's a, massive, a step yeah. that's a step up from this standard. They did that without their main guys, Rue and Ordas, their Very halfback good. combination, only coming back into the team now, now that Pro Deux is on a break. There they're go. gonna come in and inject some energy. And the best thing about this Spanish side is that they're skilled. Yeah. They are they are genuinely skilled. They, they play at a high tempo ball. and they want to offload. And when they score tries, they're they pretty. score incredible tries, box office tries, it's worldies true. of tries. Yeah. And they have to be the quicker stronger sharper team than Russia in this game yeah. and to shock them just to not allow the Russian defence to get on top of them yeah, by not, getting yeah, to the edge to, it's going to um, be a game like similar style things like who's dictating the tempo if Spain are dictating the tempo then the crowd are with them in Madrid yeah. and, and then it can flow if Russia are suffocating the tempo and slowing it up then, then Spain are probably the ones who are likely to be the, the ill-disciplined ones in those games yeah. based on precedent because Russia actually are quite a dis for such a physical forward oriented team they're very good at being disciplined yeah. uh, collectively like that is one of their their good strengths and that is not what you could say about Spain based on this this campaign in the rugby championship you're right to say much improved in the last couple of weeks their autumn autumn showings have been night and day much better uh, even without those frontline guys but uh, their the games they played in the in the tournament so far in the rugby championship have been really poor like like discipline wise all over the place structure yeah. wise all over the place uh hasn't been yeah, they seemed, they, for they, they, on the early part of the season it seemed they traded all of their high flying offensive instincts for some game in the in the tight yeah. exchanges and, and they were like the balance more able off. to scrum against Romania in the fourth quarter but it didn't matter because they were already beaten in that yeah. game and they were down to and, 13 uh, or 10 men <laughs> um, as well as the other side um, just in terms of the overall a matchup. Russia are the ones with the winning record in yeah, this. Uh, they've won surprising. sixteen uh, and lost six so far. Um, but uh, yeah, they they'll know that a win here is what they need to kind of tie tie things up with Romania and Portugal, and they'll be eyeballing it. Uh, It'll from, bury from Spain out. as well if they can win it this will, game. Yes, if Russia if Russia do win this, that is Spain done and dusted. You can stick a fork in them as far yeah. as the World Cup is concerned. So it's it's massive massive pressure on the Spaniards, and I'm, like as as good as the discipline has been in the last couple of weeks. I'd attach the caveat that there's no pressure. This is yeah. massive pressure on them, and we will see how they yeah, cope under I'm, that. I'm excited to see them go back to what they do best, which is just move the ball. Yeah, they had a couple of they had a try, a nearly try, a nearly coast to coaster against Italy, where the last pass didn't stick. Yeah, but they do love to move the ball, get to the edge. Portugal rounded up uh, 49 points against this Russian defence. Yeah. They were the only side to do that. So Russia are a decent defensive team. They are. They're o- very only, physical. Only eight conceded against the Netherlands. They did concede 23 against Georgia, but that's relatively that's stingy good. for this yeah, competition. Yeah. Um, earlier in the year in February, they conceded um, uh, just just 16 against Georgia, a 16-7 to seven defeat. Um, they had a, a, they just conceded 13 against Romania in that opening game where they just constantly got the jackal steals, yes. jackal steals, jackal steals. When they control the tempo, they're hard to beat. 
But from Spain's point of view, they break, got opened you up. Gotta break yeah, it open by but speed, yes. speed and deceptive this line running. Ran up forty nine points against yeah. them. So so it's easy to draw up the tactical plan for Spain here. It shouldn't be about being a dog going into the trenches and trying to outwork no. them there because that is just fundamentally silly. The precedent shows that they don't give up that much even to Georgia when that's what the game is yeah. about. And what's your USP? What do you have over them? This Russian side, as good as they are in that thing, they are slow collectively. Yeah. As I've said it before, it was my my take on them in the World Cup as well. Was like they're actually very competent all over the park, apart from the fact that the back line are so slow, and um, it just means they couldn't convert anything. So if they if Spain can set the tempo and try and access the extremities, make it a a good clean attacking game as opposed to a yeah. dogfight in the trenches then they have a chance to get their crowd involved and get a score up and like if they can create that kind of game you're more likely to win with a bonus point even regardless of the uh, the caliber side like they won't be targeting a bonus point a win is is what they need here but if you can arrange a shootout or a high flying kind of game like that then yeah five tries to two win comes up more in more easily when you set the tempo that way it just becomes more likely an outcome so yeah it just it, for all kinds of reasons it makes sense for spain to try and play that way and it'll be on guys like those returning halfbacks to make sure that that's where they're looking and um, for russia it's the opposite equation they need to make it tight make it slow work them at the mall work if them at the breakdown the, defen- work them the in defensive the breakdown is so yeah. huge if, if they can get that bit of, if they can dial in the jackal steals from all over the pitch just once they make the tackles get that bit of separation between the Spanish uh, cleaner and and the and the Spanish carrier, jackal them all day yeah. and frustrate them, frustrate, frustrate them. the at the mall, at the scrum, yeah. at every set piece, and like if you can tilt, ideally, for you frustrate them with an ideally tilt them kind of thing, because you could end up playing against fourteen if the pressure comes on. If you manage to put the squeeze on them and they're a score down and you're mauling them, like it's not beyond the Spanish forwards to be frustrated and sack them all right in front of the ref and get themselves carded and you yeah. know like that's what the Rus- the Russians need to be savvy need to be physical and try and work what is a backs to the wall Spain try and put it up to them because they're, they're like Russia have recourse if they lose this game it's away from home Spain do not yeah. and that plays to the Russian edge in terms of just the gamesmanship of it the uh, the kind of the little moments that you can try and stick a needle in or try and get them to do something silly if you can do that at all that's that's a big in for them yeah I couldn't agree more it's definitely it's a tough one to call I've it been is. impressed with Spain I really have um, I was also pretty impressed with Russia the other day they have a, a new lad on the wing who's who's a little quicker this is good um, yeah, they need uh, to, need to be um, and they, they moved the ball very well it was granted against a Netherlands team that just wasn't tackling yeah. but they scored some tries that you'd scarcely ever see them score this is true um, this is all good last progress week. Yeah, um, yeah. but I I think I back Spain in this one at home I think go. they're backs to the wall I like I was so unimpressed with them earlier in the year but I, I was very impressed with them last week they have a few men to come back in they seem to be going back to what they're best at which, which is, is good. moving yeah. the ball just being a little embarrassed by how much how Portugal have overtaken them you forget that like 12 months ago Portugal were like out of the equation yeah. and it was all about Spain and our Spain the next Japan yeah. and like so badly overtaken have they been by their neighbours that maybe there's a response coming and gee a win here just makes the whole thing very interesting yeah it makes know, it a four it? horse race yeah, all yeah. of a sudden <laughs> that does make it interesting that is probably what I want to have happen but I'm probably going to lean on the Russians here because I have, have wildness wins out well like as much as you were impressed with Spain and Spain were more impressive I think they have a long way to go to get some credit in the bank as far as I'm concerned I was so unimpressed with their showings throughout this rugby championship and I'm going to base it on that more so than the friendly games that pressure wasn't off whereas pressure is very much on I would like to see them do what you're saying go wide make it make it a sexy game like that and and win it but they could end up in a dogfight by their own doing and then end up losing it and losing men and that's what I fear for them and I think Russia are a very impressive disciplined force that could just see off Spain if they turn the screw a little bit okay um, well it's, a prob- it's possibly a fair shout yeah. um, let us know what you guys think down in the comments below I'm sure to watch the game on Rugby Europe TV on Sunday that's right um, we're going to move on though and we're going to basically park all of those uh, Rugby Europe games yeah. there's a couple of other uh, test uh, games to talk about we have the Stellenbosch Quadrangular Series in South Africa Quadrangular Go, uh, Series yeah, yeah it's, it's a fun, fun, it's fun branding isn't it <laughs> it is um, so basically this is a uh, competition going on in Africa that you can watch on World Rugby it's going to be posted on their YouTube again excellent yeah all kinds of rugby for anyone who's interested um it's a four horse race hence quadrangular you yes. got Kenya you got Zimbabwe you got Brazil 
and you got Namibia. Yeah, um, what a fun amalgamation of teams this yeah. is. I'm yeah, I'm kind of delighted to see it happen. Um, so basically, you're gonna have Namibia play Ke- uh, play Kenya on the fourteenth of November on Sunday, and Zimbabwe play Brazil the same day, and then the winners um play each other in a final. The losers play each other in a in a third and fourth place playoff. Excellent. Yeah, um, yeah. good like, idea for all of these teams. Good to yeah. see Brazil traveling across, and it's just yeah, yeah I'm cu- fun curious to see. to see how how Brazil fare. I mean, I, you wouldn't pick them obviously over Zimbabwe just given their pedigree and they're, they're sort of I know they, they're out of the South American qualifiers and weren't, weren't close to those sides but they do have that sort of South American juju and Zimbabwe tend to get hammered by even the likes of Kenya and Namibia that's true. That's so true. I would think that Brazil are good to make the final here probably against Namibia and then that's kind of a fun interesting game Yeah. yeah. Um, um, and my, my normal optimism for Kenyan rugby got a pretty big dent last week when now or was it last week or yeah, yeah. Was, yeah they had the Curry Cup 15 which was slightly cruel from South Africa similar to how cruel <laughs> England were against Tonga you know yeah. but they picked a whole load of good players for that Curry Cup 15 and uh, 85-17 was that hiding yeah, yeah. Uh, that Kenya took the not a fun week. way to start the tournament no Oh, not really good momentum to be bringing in but yeah, we know that Kenya can play a bit of footy they're going to play um, the cheetahs well Kenya are going to play this game against Namibia this week then play the losers melee after they get beaten by Namibia unless and then they're going to play the cheetahs so it's going to be a fun experience yeah, and then there, there, will, there will be rugby Africa yeah. stuff coming up for these teams as well so there's next, the, year, next yeah. year so there's there's kind of good squad adjustment for that because the race for that one African uh, spot in the World Cup is very much alive yeah, it's normally it's Namibia who win it but Namibia took a loss earlier in the season that kind of threw that into it into, did, into it did but I still think they're odds on oh, favourites to favorites. make it and um, they're fi- favourites for this quadrangular series I would make them unless yeah. Brazil come up with something we'll, we'll see what um, Brazil got it's definitely it's out there anyway if you want to check it out on, on World Rugby um, that kind of parks the men's internationals for this week and uh, just before we wrap up we're also going to talk about the women's internationals right. which went on last week and um, me oh my um, did uh, England have no chill when it came to the uh, game against the Black Ferns the Red Roses yeah. stamped their authority and their claim to the number one spot in the world massive win 56-15 win over New Zealand Franklin's Gardens this week True. it was Sandy Park the week before but the story was much the same Um yeah, it's night and day difference, and we kind of suspected that. We've seen what England have been doing for the last few seasons, and how the gulf between certainly our own charts we face them every year watching yeah, the women, yeah. and it's like, like granted, we've been disimproving as well at <laughs> yeah, the same yeah. time as them improving. So that gulf has just been growing and growing, yeah. and then there was kind of questions about how good are England really, but uh, the answer was suspected to be very, very good, yeah. and has been proven thus. Um, like yeah, no, the Black Ferns are no joke. They have some really good players. Uh, Coxage is a really nice nine and uh, move, moves with good tempo but they are not dealing with the physicality and just the shape the organization and the discipline of uh, of this very professional looking outfit it was a shock to uh, to the kiwis and uh, yeah look the super rugby um the women's super rugby tournament will will help them in that regard and they'll know now where the benchmark is but uh, as far as next year's World Cup, which is the home World Cup for, for New Zealand, it's definitely alarm bells ringing now. It, it is, but they would be glad they had time. Definitely be glad they had time. Definitely. Don't you remember at the beginning of the movie Invictus, you know, <laughs> the South Africans were getting hammered by yes. the English and then, you know, Nelson Rose Mandela reverse. did his little hand rubbing and all of a sudden I don't they think the, the Black Ferns have a Nelson Mandela no they don't <laughs> but, um, they have time now to they have some time time and tape on what, what was done to them yeah. they were a little shocked um, first, first came back from so long and it was they, they were right into the hot seat against a side that was just so well drilled and yeah. primed and ready to and go likely the um, best side in the world right now yeah, oh 100% um, the best side in the world and um, we did have some other results Canada blew out uh, well didn't blow out but they beat the US 26 to 13 yeah, a slightly bigger um, margin than the week before yeah. Canada showing themselves the better side on US soil that was in Infinity Park in Colorado yeah. as well um, so good good stuff from the Canadians yeah. we had the French women who are a very good side themselves and, and are, 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 have a stake of claim at being the second best side in the world mm-hmm. they blew out South Africa um, 46 to 3 no kind of contest out in Van. Um, and then Wales beat Japan 23 to 5 and the, the mm. Welsh team that couldn't buy a win all it took was the introduction of Jazz Joyce, um, oh, seven superstar. Awesome. Inch came straight in, two tries, awesome. um, changed the game, turns well from a bad team to a, to a pretty team. good team. Just might be the, the best women's player in the world. She's um, so good yeah. in, in sevens and fifteens. Yeah, she's, she's just a relentlessly awesome force. It is true. Um, yeah, no, good stuff uh, in in terms of just get your useful players on the pitch, on the ball, and see see good stuff happen. Uh, it's it's it. a good recipe from the Welsh. Yeah, she is box office. There are more games this weekend than there were last week. Um, our own charges Ireland uh, are facing the USA on Friday in the RDS 
Um, that'll be an interesting one to go. The USA obviously dusting themselves off after after losing to Canada. Ireland having to dust themselves off after not qualifying for the World Cup and a few kind of stories during midweek of you know more egg on face from the powers that be and more silly comments from the guys who were meant to be running the game uh, in the oh, country yeah, it's yeah. getting close yeah. to breaking point the, the Irish women and the, the people in charge of us and yeah. the, the IRFU who too many gruff Aussie blokes talking dismissive stuff yeah you know, who um, might, might have to be gone before long the yeah. guys in charge of certainly the women's game in, 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 in Ireland are letting themselves down and letting the country down big time but um, nevertheless they have actually a solid team out to play the USA and it'll probably be a good game and we may well win it yeah. um, but it doesn't matter for squat because we're not in the World Cup yeah um, Namibia are playing Zambia in a in an African game going on in Windhoek in the women's game that's a fun one it is yeah. Wales hosts South Africa in the Cardiff Arms Park in Cardiff although crucially no Jazz Joyce on the side this week mm. so that is probably going to be a nil all draw yeah. um, then France hosts New Zealand and that's going to be a tough that one again for the Black Ferns that is a tough one um, for, for the Black Ferns like France have not been quite as good as England but they have given England the best game they've had in the last few years by far yeah on in a few occasions yeah, 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 it's, it's been a humdinger been every time and yeah. uh, just given that gulf that was there last week this could given be given the 46 points they ran up last week as well yeah. France would go into this game as favourites I would agree with that um, yeah yeah. it's going to be is it uh, in Poe as well Stade de Humieux which is an unusual spot for international footy but uh, definitely a game that the Black Ferns should be alive to because it's like it, it's a challenge similar to last week but it's not quite the same challenge and they they now have had two weekends of, of admittedly getting blown out which is no fun but uh, they'll be looking for a riposte and there's every chance this could deliver a, a, a cracking spectacle if the Black Ferns manage to dial in some of their offence we know the France offence can be mesmer- like mesmerising to watch uh, this could be a very good fast game of, of women's footy if, they, if the rain holds off and we get a dry track I expect some pretty tries yeah that might be the game of the weekend England yeah. hosts Canada and as good as Canada were against the US that's uh, just a tough tough yeah. job and for I'm them in the Twickenham Stoop Twickenham um, Stoop this time it's lovely the way they're spreading it around uh, like, again England just doing it all right to Ireland's wrong in terms yeah. of how to manage the women's game and they're um, filling the stadiums as well they they're, yeah. they're getting such buy in because of their team because are their so team awesome are good. Like, yeah they're great is, to watch yeah, yeah. yeah. no it's it's doing it the right way as opposed to the wrong way and we have examples of both in, in um, all of these teams and finally Scotland host Japan as well in Edinburgh um, interesting game that one yeah well we'll see, see if Japan can get more off against a team that doesn't have Jazz Joyce in it yes. yeah potentially um, that is uh, it for the women's game we're also just before we wrap up going to just check to check in on the uh, Europe uh, on rugby domestic rugby in Europe we had uh, the Toka Tours wrapping up before it's um, uh, going on ice for a couple of weeks uh, La Rochelle managed to get a much needed win against Bordeaux Begla. Uh, Montpellier won away in Stade. That was a good win for them. Lyon back on the winning horse. Toulouse winning as well. Yeah. Pooby Biritz and Breve managed to beat Rassing 12 10 at home, which is a funny that one. That is a fun one. Yeah. Uh, Clermont as well blowing out uh, the old men of Toulon uh, in that one it leaves it leaves the standings quite interesting that was round 10 that's finished and obviously they're they're finishing up they're taking a break for November Toulouse are on top with 36 Bordeaux occupy second with 33 then Lyon and Montpellier are tied on 26 in third and fourth with Rassing on 25 and La Rochelle on 24 those are currently the barrage spots there you go from, from, from Roger's past. point of view it's not as catas- catastrophic as no, all that they've managed the to, to rally and get some wins and, yeah. and, and they're still in the barrage spots and uh, yeah. yeah fair play to them Rossing or, uh, or La Rochelle once they figure it out will, the, will be a force to be reckoned the with. sad part is the other end of the table Beeritz and Perpignan who I was very excited to see come up <laughs> occupying the uh, the chopping block right now with Tol- Toulon flirting with it and I can tell you who I'm up for to get to, to, to think I would <laughs> love imagine if Toulon went down I would love to imagine it. I can <laughs> imagine Toulon going down but I may have to stick Cheslin Colby imagine. in the Proto for Cheslin Colby getting picked airlifted straight out of the Proda and into some other team I think um, he I think he'd go well in the Proda he would go well anywhere but uh, <laughs> no, that, yeah Toulon have yet to see the Cheslin Colby they they bought so much spent so much money <laughs> yeah. on and the current outfit are, are not uh, well not they changed their the coach mid season as well which yeah. is like a classic Toulon move like, yeah. it's like they're just they're not identifying the, the problem and being a little bit of a basket case this yeah. season but uh, yeah the top tour is definitely into its uh, in its adolescence for this season as well. We've had ten games now, and and some of some of what's happening is starting to take shape. And Toulouse yeah. looked the best team in it by far at the minute. Indeed, uh, in the Premiership, it's probably telling that uh, and reflective of Leicester's dominance so far. 
that uh, people were underwhelmed with their 40 to 23 win over Bath felt cheated you know yeah. it's like oh this was a tougher game than people expected yeah. still won it by 27 got their bonus point Bristol back on the horse with a win over Worcester Saracens had a hilarious um, blip on the radar after leading 34 to 12 against London Irish 34 all what the 34 hell? all I don't even I didn't see the game so I don't know what happened in it but that's a hell of a result yeah. from from the Irish yeah the London um, Irish have, are winless apart from one win in Sandy Park and now a draw against Saris <laughs> which is just a thoroughly odd they like the uh, big season. occasion yeah yeah <laughs> and the, the underdog story yeah um, Sale put up a big score against Northampton beating them 30 points to 6 and Exeter slipped up in Sandy Park again to Newcastle. No. Um, not a great start to the season for Exeter. And Harlequins got a good win away in Wasps as well. Still no. very, very competitive as expected. Quins. Um, as it stands, you have Leicester top of the heap. 10 points clear on 37. Their form guide is just all wins. Yeah. Um, awesome. Saracens in second on 27. Harlequins third but tied on 27. That's top as three. Well. Top three right there. Exeter a little bit behind on 20. Uh, Northampton also on 20 um, Gloucester then on 18 Nor- Newcastle Falcons Sale Sharks and London Irish all on 17 London Irish with two draws on their, their yeah. form guy they're a funny old team Wasps then on 15 and Bristol on 14 after their horror start Worcester 12 and Bath Three, yeah, Bath, Bath, Bath look awful. abysmal this year. No relegation um, though, so they're laughing. This is probably yeah. why they're, they're committed <laughs> to causing us problems in Europe. I don't know if they are at all. They need to right their ship because that that form guide is all L's and uh, their points not enough. Oh, but uh, no, the story this season has been Leicester. Really, the resurgence of Leicester. So and far. Saracens, Saracens back in the mix. Back in the mix has been. It's just, it's just a fun league. It's funner than it's been in years. And yeah. the fact that Exeter are still there thereabouts, but also you have this dynamic, awesome Quinns team led by Marcus Smith. Yeah. And, and you have Saracens back to looking somewhere close to what they used to be and Leicester back clo- looking close yeah. to what they somewhere used to be it's just a really fun it league is, yeah. um, Exeter occupying fourth well, Bristol are the other story I'm rooting for Pat Lamb to get, to get, get right back the on the horse yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah indeed because like he has like the form guide has two, two, three wins and two losses in the last five games it has improved versus the opening yeah. and where they couldn't buy a win for the, the start need, of the season uh, but they're still coming at it from behind it'll well, be some Ran Raj was such a linchpin for yeah, them no, they really is. need him they do um, they do but uh, yeah it's definitely interesting in the premiership but it too goes on ice now for, for the international so that'll be the last we mention of it for the next wee while for the next while it'll all be internationals from next week on but I suppose with that we will move on to the last segment which is the rugby news of the week yes and indeed and not um, too much this week um, there's no no there's not a whole lot um, it, yeah, um, just, a cu- just a couple of stories the big one really is that um, Pat Lamb has managed to poach Aj McGinty who he's been after sticking for sticking with the Bristol team um, as well yes he, he's been trying every year since he got into Bristol to sign Aj McGinty from sale and this year he finally got it done yeah um, um, let's it's, it, it's Aj McGinty is a top class player and let's be real like he's an upgrade on Callum Sheedy he's, he th- he's that good yeah. um, and that's probably what they need because yeah. the games get away from them very quickly at, in the half back area when, yeah. when they're a little bit loose no um, it's, it's, it's a, you're, you're 100% right and he can control a game he is the best tier 2 10 out there Aj McGinty um, yeah. also he's you know Dublin born Irish by uh, by birth and if we'd held on to him uh, probably he, would be, he would be Sexton's backup 100% yeah. Um, Indeed, yeah. but listen that's you can always say that like we cast if him aside and he made a career for himself in the US came back to Connacht came like he's just gr- grinded out a career for himself by being awesome yeah. and yeah if the US can ever figure out how to play some ball um, he's a useful like, unit to do he's it. The, yeah. He's the best ten in tier two rugby, and they should like it's it's a crime in and of itself that that the US aren't that good because he's so good. Yeah, he geez. should be at a World Cup. Yeah, I would um, agree with that. That's a great poach for Bristol. And then the only other bit of news we had is that Martin Phillips, um, former uh, WRU chief, um, is now the new chair of the Premiership Rugby. Um, that's right. So yeah, that's just a little bit of admin news as well. Um, but no, it's quite quiet, quiet week for news. Um, so on that note, I think we'll just wrap up the show. Um, definitely a fun one with you uh, we have to condense it a little but I don't think we condensed it too no, much can, um, no, no, no. condense <laughs> is a relative term it is um, indeed for those um, who stuck with it this long we salute you you have great stamina um, <laughs> and yeah if uh, as always if you enjoyed this particular form of 
long form rugby chatter please do like and subscribe and ring the bell and all of that stuff but drop a comment down below as well if you have any thoughts on the games this weekend on what we were saying any corrections any any counterpoints drop them all down in the comments we like to get a bit of an active thread and sure it should be good color because we're getting into the meat of the autumn of the autumn series now which is when you get to you know, you get to have these great clashes with English and Wallaby fans getting yeah. stuck in. With and don't, you know, don't don't forget as well that we're going to be back next week. Um, we're going to be previewing. There's some really fun games next week. None more so than the World Cup final repeat. England hosting South Africa in Twickenham. That is going to be such a contentious one. Yeah. Can't wait already. So be sure to join us to check out our preview of that as well as our look back at back and all of the great games Ireland's historic 60 point win over the All Blacks <laughs> we'll be sure to be back and reviewing that next week yeah. um, so look forward to that as well but uh, as it is I think we'll, we'll park it there and say goodbye see you next week bye That was so bad. You rushed it. I did, yeah. yeah um, Rushing everything. And I just got low. <laughs> low. Oh well. <laughs> <coughs>